Hello, hello everybody. We are going to be continuing and perhaps even finishing the Ace Attorney Trilogy. Barring any like super surprises, we should be able to finish up this investigation and maybe finish off the court section which should end it? Because unless this is another, like, obnoxiously long case, which there hasn't really been one in a while, from what I feel. But unless it, like, goes into yet another investigation and a third trial period, this sh should be the end. So who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I, it might be the end, it might not. And that's why there's a question mark on the finale thing, because maybe it will be. But either way, we are going to continue. Last time, we became Phoenix Wright again. Well, no. Actually, last time, it was we went into the court session as Edgeworth, who brought in a judge that he only went uh, into court facing once to try and be like, oh no, I'm not a prosecutor at all, I'm just a defender. <laughs> and he brought in Franziska von Karma, which is hilarious. And then Phoenix went investigating the Hazakura Temple again. And uh, there's a freaking Cyclock on the cave that Maya was supposed to be training in, so who knows? Also, Gravy was thrown on Misty Fay's portrait. It's just like, weird things are happening. I believe that we talked... Oh, no! We did not talk to him, so let's talk. You had some important business, and that's why you weren't in court, huh? So, what was it? I've told you once before, but perhaps you don't remember. I return from the depths of hell to do battle with you. You see, Trite, I've experienced something most have not. Death. You died? Of course. Being extradited from hell is a tedious affair. The meticulous regeneration and adjustment of all your internal organs is... Well, let's just say modern medicine allows us all to live to a ripe old age. Even someone like me. I still want to know what his deal is. Because aside from the flashback case of Mia's first case, like, we know next to nothing about this guy. Like, what happened to him? What turned his hair white? Apparently he died. But... I can only imagine that between the first case that Mia had and then her second case, which was like a little bit later, months later even, something happened to him. And I guess he he's like doing this for Mia? I don't know. I don't know. So, you mean that mask you wear is this ugly device? I promise it's not a fashion statement, my unenlightened friend. Without this, I can't see your frequently dumbfounded face. I... I didn't know. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. Still, I keep this worn-out piece of junk of a body going with regular service. I'm sorry, but... You say you experienced death? How is that possible? What happened? Why don't you ask him? Huh? Me? Yeah, that's right. You. You should know all about it. We really don't. Unless there's like... I'm just... Unless I'm completely missing something we have not met until this game. You know when my life ended. And who ended it for me. Well, Phoenix Wright, do you? I... I don't know what he's talking about. Although, to be honest... Oh. Does this have to do... I'm trying to think. 
Wait, 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 wait. Could it? Because I'm trying to think. Because this might tie in with, like, Delia. Slash Delilah. Fr Hawthorn. From the, from the introductory case with Mia. And then her first, the, fla the other flashback case. The two flashback cases. Delia slash Dahlia Hawthorne. I keep, for some reason, I was like, oh, it's Delilah. But then they said it's Dahlia, and I'm just losing my mind. But was it mentioned there in the very first case that Hawthorne did something? And that's why she was getting rid of the poison necklace? Because she used the poison, right? Could it be that she used the poison on Godot? Somehow? I'm trying to remember. It's been so long. Hello, hello! I'm currently trying to decipher what Godot is talking about, and if I'm forgetting things from the way back first introductory case of this game. And how it all ties together. I think I do know about how Godot was killed. I don't! I was doing something. What did I miss? So far, we've just been talking to Godot. He said that he died, and that modern medicine is fantastic, that he, even with his fancy goggles, he doesn't see everything, and that apparently Phoenix should know how he died and who killed him, even though he's standing right in front of us, so he might just be a dramatic, overdramatic, melodramatic bitch, but who knows? It's Godot. He's a weird little guy. And I'm just wondering... If this has to do with the introductory case with Mia, which would be her second case, because if I remember correctly, Dahlia slash Delilah Hawthorne, as Phoenix's fake girlfriend who wanted her poison necklace back, gave him the poison necklace because she was under investigation for something. So I'm wondering if she was under investigation by Godot, and maybe she poisoned him or something, but I don't understand why that would then lead to him to be like, I've returned from hell to do battle with you, trite. I just, I don't get it. I'm losing my mind. It will all become clear in due time. Isn't that right, trite? Earlier, you said I've done something I can never undo. What did you mean by that exactly? The inner temple here on this side of Dusky Bridge is an isolated island. That's what Sister Bikini said, too. And I wonder, Trite, do you know what the police are doing here today? What do you mean? They're searching. Searching for any trace of an acolyte who went missing. M missing As leader of the search party, I can tell you this with absolute certainty. My affair is not on this side of... Am I... Are... Is Maya going to be accused of murder again? Somehow? Is... Three games in a row? That would be hilarious. We're okay. My affair is not on this side of Dusky Bridge. Then why the hell is... ba 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 Bah. It's that's because right now my thought process is does that mean that but it can't be Sister Bikini said that Iris came down to the inner temple and relieved her of duty so that she could go back to the temple and take a hot bath and I'm still kind of hooked on the idea that somebody was channeling the evil Hawthorne girlfriend who killed the Miss Dunham for some reason. But that doesn't make sense. Nothing here makes sense. But there's a psych clock in the physical world on the cave! What does it mean? I don't know. Huh? But, but, but that's impossible! She came here that night and... I won't say it again. The chances of her being here are nil. My throat just gave out there. <laughs> oh, darn it, I forgot my water. Of course, I forget my water on the talk-heavy game. 
You know, I had an idea on Destiny Tower for a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon comic, since it reverts you back to level 1. No IQ skills, no star items, no partner in other Pokemon. Now, that, that could potentially have, like, interesting comic ideas to explore and ponder. <laughs> it could even possibly be, like, an interesting, like, visual experience of, like, you enter this dungeon not knowing what it's going to do when it, it takes away all your stuff. So I would make a comic on Destiny Tower like and show it forgotten memories as it goes deeper. That would be cool. It's a, that's a cool idea. Definitely. Definitely cool. But yeah. It's like, earlier I was filling up my water because I always fill up my water to bring it in here so I have a, a good amount of water to drink while I do these streams because talking a lot wears out your throat. Then the moment I had, like, a tickle in my throat and I stumbled the line, I was like, oh, I'll just do my typical remember to stay hydrated bit, then boom, there's nothing on my table tray. <laughs> like the player learning about themselves as a human. That'd be, that's a cool idea of, like, a memory lane kind of thing. It's a very cool idea. <laughs> Excluding, of course, one very unique place. One? Where's that? Is it the keep out sign place garden that nobody went into yet? The sacred cavern, the entrance of which we are standing at right now. Yeah, with the cyclock. This is the only place that the search party has yet to explore. So they haven't searched that cavern yet, huh? Be aware, though, that the temperature inside frequently falls below freezing. Even if she were in there, the chances of her being found alive are slim at best. D no! Which means, Trite, that you sent Maya Faye to her death. How do you even come to that conclusion? She bought the package here. It was Bikini's job to make sure that things went well. She handed it off to Iris. Then things went to hell. I think he's lying to me, but I can't draw, so this idea is gone before it started. I say you give it a shot. As I said last time, I believe, it's one of those things where your brain goes, oh, I can't do it because I'm not good enough yet. But then you have to actually do it to actually get good at it. It's one of those the paradox. But I say you jot it down, keep the ideas rolling, and try to build up to it at the very least, because that's a very cool idea. I still don't understand what Godot means here, though. You sent my fate to her death, how? I really didn't. You fool! If that's the situation, why aren't you in there with a search party right now? You must have blinders on, my equestrian angel. Don't you see the big lock and chains? It's a trick lock. I'm making preparations to open it as we speak. You, you get big chain cutters. I say, you don't need to open the lock, you need to just break the chains. Well, Trite, once again, a woman dies because of you. Once again? What are you talking about? Don't tell me you've forgotten. It was only two years ago, after all, when the last unfortunate woman died because of you. That one wasn't even because of me, either. <laughs> they're, ah, these two, these two incidents are connected, because they're not. Unless he's talking about somebody else and not Mia, but he has to be talking about Mia. But like, yeah, the circumstances of Mia's death have nothing to do with Phoenix. Because all it was, was the timeline basically goes, Mia serves as Phoenix's defend, de defense attorney. He becomes a defense attorney under her and does a job for Larry. And then Mia is building a case against Mr. Red, White, and Blue. And he kills Mia. That had nothing to do with Phoenix. This guy is insane. I really got ideas, Shane. They don't see the light of day. That is one big fear of mine. Because I get lots of story ideas and art ideas. And then, like, actually putting them out there is difficult. I, I want to learn how to write faster. Because I have so many story ideas. So many, so many, and I need to sit down and write more. Nyeh. But I keep getting distracted by life. But yeah, I highly recommend, encourage you to try, so that your ideas can see the light of day. Because of me? 
And do you know who that was? It was Maya Faye's sister. And that's right, Mia Faye. M Mia? You killed her! No, that's not how it was! What is wrong with you, my dude? It was two years ago. Mia Fey was pursuing someone, a man, but she bit off more than she could chew. She made a very dangerous enemy. Yeah, that's one case I'll never forget. But I got that guy, personally! Sure, Miss Fey's murderer was caught, but that won't bring her back. Well, no, but... You were with her at the time, you and no one else. It was your responsibility. You should have protected her! I... You say Mia Faye was your teacher. Well, then I'd say you've learned nothing, Trite. You robbed her of her life, and now... You've let her sister suffer the same fate. Not exactly, because... That was murder. This is accident caused by murder. You were a weird guy, Gado. I... I haven't sentenced Maya to death. No! Well, what about the trick lock? What is this peculiar looking lock? Why don't we just break it open? It would be a simple matter of... I'm afraid we can't do that. This area has always been prone to earthquakes. The repeated tremors have weakened the foundations of the training hall. Any excessive force used to break the lock open. Well, let's just say the inner temple and the sacred cavern would be a thing of the past. Very well, then I dare I suggest the obvious solution of opening it with the key? Ha! Sure, just show me where the keyhole is on this trick lock. Th there's no keyhole? That's right. An interesting puzzle, huh? The person who set this lock is the only one who can open it. Then who was it? Simple. The accused. What? Iris? When an acolyte undergoes training inside the secret cavern, the attending sister is responsible for locking the entrance. Obviously, the night of the murder was no exception. Maya Faye was to train in there. Sister Bikini did mention it a number of times now that I think about it. She said that Iris was left in charge of supervising the early stages of the training. So Iris, the accused, is the only one who can open this lock. I've arranged for her to be brought here now. Iris is the only one who can open this lock? I hope she gets here soon. Hang on in there, May Maya. We'll get you out! So, I should be getting back to work. Wait, Godot! How sure about Maya are you? There's no doubt in my mind. She's in the sacred cavern somewhere. It's the only place she could be. You better start praying. You better pray that friend of yours brings the accused back here soon. Edgeworth? Listen up, Trite. There's only one thing I want to say to you before I go. I'll never accept you. Never. You are a weird man, Godot. You should choose your friends more carefully, Phoenix Wright. That's what everyone says. Looks like I don't have much of a choice. Because I'll just have to do what I can for now. Just weird. I don't know, should I or shouldn't I? Sounds like someone's talking to himself, but where's that coming from? Ah, it's you. Yeah, I guess I'd better wash that off. That's what I'll do. No, but I can't do that. I'm a detective. Ah, my brain. This is driving me nuts. Ah! Is something troubling you, Scruffy? Please don't whip me like that all of a sudden, sir! It was merely a simple greeting. A friendly tap on the shoulder with my whip. So what's up, Gumchu? There's something on your mind? How did you know, pal? Perhaps you were trying to decide if you wanted to wash that off or not? How did you know, sir? Oh, yeah, I nearly forgot. You can't go through that little gate there, okay? Um, you mean that one that says no entry on it? I, um, uh, kinda already snuck in there. Is he trying to be clever or something? So what's behind this, Scrappy? Huh? A, a kind of garden-like garden. A garden? Yeah, anyway, it's under investigation right now, so keep out! I'm gonna tell, I'm not telling you, I'm asking you, pal. You got me? 
Well, that's weird. <laughs> I'm not telling you, I'm asking you. <laughs> yeah, what I said exactly, Phoenix. Isn't it normally the other way around? Well, see you later! What's wrong with him? So, shall we adjourn to this garden, Phoenix Wright? Of course! What else would we do? I really want to know what Gumshoe was thinking of washing off. <laughs> and now we get to go to the garden. What the fuck? Um, a birdhouse with a bamboo slide? Um, I guess... Yeah, that's literally a birdhouse. That, like... And then there's a bamboo shoot that seems to be that fill with water, tilt, and pour into a pond. There seems to be blood written on that diddly D. Why would Gumshoot be like, Oh, uh, should I wash it off or not? He's a weird guy. There's a strange feeling in the air. I wonder what it is. Strange feeling? Forget about that! What's that strange writing on the stone lantern? Ah! What are you doing here, sir? I thought I said you can't come in here! Don't you know, Scrappy? A Von Karma will always show up wherever there's a clue. And there are plenty of clues to be found around here. But... No but. So how's the Inner Temple investigation going? We have the best forensic team in the world working on the place. Forensic team? And what is the outcome of the scientific study? Nothing! Scientifically speaking, the place is as clean as a whistle. That's simply not good enough, Scrappy. Do you think I'll let you get away with that? Uh-oh. Well, there were a couple of things that bothered me when I first got here, sir. That stone lantern in the surrounding area is not covered in snow. Oh, that completely wrong voice for that. The stone lantern in the surrounding area, that's not covered in snow, correct? They look kind of fishy to me, you know, scientifically speaking. So I got the lab boys to look them over. The results were... it's kind of hard to say, actually. I guess I'd better look into it myself. Um, about Maya. Oh, um, did Mr. Godot tell you yet? Yes, we heard. He's got a search party out looking for her. Well, there's no else she could have disappeared to on the side of Dusky Bridge. All we can do is wait for Mr. Edgeworth to get here, pal. Edgeworth? He's escorting Iris to the Finland over here. We'll have to wait since she is the only one who can open the door to the sacred cavern. Oh, I think Mr. Edgeworth wants to talk to you about something too, pal. Huh? I wonder what it is. Just don't be expecting any good news when you talk to him. When I spoke to him, Mr. Edgeworth sounded so down I felt like I was drowning. Sounds pleasant. Well, let's examine. Obviously, there's the bloody writing. So my younger sister started playing Explorers of Sky, and she's already attached to the partner. Huzzah! It's always nice when people can, like, play a game, because, like, it is meant to be your partner. So when you play the game, you jump in. The quicker you can connect to them, the better, really. Always nice. What the heck is that? Oh, you spotted it, huh, pal? Are you kidding me? It couldn't be more obvious. It says... Maya. Yeah, and before you ask, it's written in blood. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You will answer all our questions now, Scruffy, without exception. But, this is ba isn't this basically a, what the hell? Why is like oh Maya written in blood? Why? What the hell? Yes, sir. It's just weird. There are a couple of torches here. I guess you need all the light you can get up here in the mountains. Yeah, I was looking at those things too, pal. It looks like they've been lit pretty recently. Recently? How recent are we talking about? As recent as the night of the murder. I was training here on the night of the murder. It's not unreasonable to think these things were lit up at that time, I guess. Well, this is odd. There's no snow on the ground here. And it's almost perfect rectangle. Couldn't have happened naturally. Yes, it appears as though someone has carefully cleared away the snow. No doubt it was you, wasn't it, Scruffy? Huh? No, it wasn't me, sir. It was already like that when my men and I got here to stop the investigation. If it wasn't the police, then who did it? Oh, yeah, there's something I need to tell you. Uh, just between the three of us, okay? What is it? It's top secret. You can't tell anyone, got it? 
Understood. Well, when I was a kid, I got knocked out at the local wrestling contest, you see. I was so disappointed, I just picked up my month card and cried all the way home. Man, I got so much trouble when I left and left it on the couch. Whip him now. Is that it? That's it. Ah! Whoever cleared the snowway must have uh, had a reason. Although I can't even begin to imagine what that reason could be. Hmm. It is very weird. I'm not gonna tell the ending. I'm gonna let her go through it. That's the best way to do it. It's just nice to experience stories. Because there are some stories out there, like, I know some people are like, oh, if, if spoilers ruin a story for you, is it really a good story? But, like, stories are meant to be experienced with as minimal spoilers as possible, really. It's part of the unfoldingness of it all. Very good stories can have just as much impact upon rereading, where unrevealed aspects, after you read them, become, like, tension builders, but good stories can still exist with uh, still exist so long as they're not spoiled, because they rely on the impact of things that unfolding in real time. A little lantern, a little statue. It is certainly a quaint little garden. Oh! What is this huge bowl here for? Oh, I know this one. It's, um, it's a water bowl, isn't it? Everything else is completely frozen over. But the ice in this bowl has been broken. That's true. I wonder if this has any impact on the case. Um, well, I, uh, I doused my face earlier with the water in this. I was getting kind of sleepy. <laughs> Next time you're sleepy, you need only come to me, got it? But what's this in this bush? It seems kind of like... The... Trick lock, to a degree. Or, like, make more sense. That's also true. There's a charm or something poking out of the snow here. It looks pretty old. There's a leather cord tied to it, too. Apparently, it belonged to the victim. To Miss Elise Dunham? Yeah, there was a broken leather cord around the lady's neck. The ends of the cords are found on both the victim and on this charm match exactly. Sounds to me like... This little trinket is going to be my ticket to getting some very big answers. Because that proves that Miss Dunham was here at some point. I think that's it for this place. Is there anything else to talk about? The bloody writing. Maya. So those letters are written in blood? Yeah. What's worse is it's the victim's blood. Which doubly make means that she had to have been here somehow. <laughs> During my uh, my late uh, my late side of the playthrough. Yeah. Huh? This is Miss Dunham's blood? We haven't done a detailed analysis yet, but it's looking that way, pal. Hmm, most interesting. That just seems weird because. How are they going to argue that Maya has been locked in there this entire time, but also might be connected to the murder? It, it, who knows? This is getting weird and freaky deaky. Phoenix Wright, I presume you know, don't you? Why Maya's name is written upside down? Is it a curse? You know what? That was really bothering me too. But I just came up with the answer. The result of my own special gumshoe investigation. Really? Do tell. Well, on the night of the murder, that stone lantern was upside down! I feel like they just keep making poor gumshoe dumber and dumber. But 99 floors in the zero aisle is crazy. The 99 floor dungeons are just mad. They're, they're, they are tests of endurance, where you either need to grind a lot for them or prepare a lot for them. And even then, it depends. Especially if they're one of the dungeons like, we're gonna reset you down to level one. Then like, uh. <clears throat> Anyway, there's really only one logical explanation to this mystery. Miss Elise Dunham wrote these letters herself in her own blood. But how can that be? Because the only place that she was like stabbed was the wound that killed her. And then... 
Because this seems to be going that Elise Dunham was here, got stabbed, wrote Maya's name upside down on the pillar, flew away, and I guess fell ten, ten feet. It's weird. I was losing my mind after the 60th floor. They just go on and on and on. You must be joking! That's impossible! From the writing on the victim's blood and the other clues up behind, it seems pretty likely this garden was the scene of Miss Elise Dunham's murder. At least that's our current theory on how the events took place, pal. But why would the name Maya be written and upside down at that? Especially because... The series of events should be Sister Bikini leads Maya here. Then Iris comes in and takes over for Bikini and seemingly locks Maya into her training. Then apparently Elise Dunham was also on the island, gets stabbed, writes the uh, Maya's name upside down in her blood, flies across the burning bridge, and then just dies. Who knows? What? So Miss Dunham was killed here? However you want to look at it, that's what people are saying now. Maybe the reason the snow is brushed away was because blood got on the snow? Who knows? Then what Sister Bikini saw in the courtyard at the main temple was... Well, what was it? If that wasn't the scene of the crime, what did she see? What do you think, Miss Bugcobble? Surely a special Gamsu investigation revealed the answer, no? Wait a sec, the bloody writing and all the other clues here. Someone could have easily set all this up after the murder, right? Sorry, but that's not an option, pal, because she got killed, and then the bridge burnt down through lightning. Which is seeming oddly convenient now. <laughs> I fainted like on the 62nd floor and really wanted to scream. I can only imagine. The deeper you get into a dungeon, the more devastating being forced out is. The post-game of Rescue Team tried my patience sometimes. Why not? How quickly you forget, Phoenix, right? Ever since the incident occurred, this place has been completely inaccessible. Because Dusky Bridge was completely burnt down. I was overseeing repairs to the bridge the whole moment, or the whole time. No one came over here before me and my men. Which means no one could have planted all this stuff here, pal. Ugh. I can't think of a counter-argument to that. I knew it. I should have washed the blood off the lantern as soon as I got here. This really was the scene of the crime. But I need to figure out what exactly it was that Bikini actually saw. Again, I really like the music in this game. The music in this game is so good. If only we went into that garden earlier, then maybe we would have found things. So I went outside and screamed to calm down. That's always a good idea. Gets the pressure out of your soul. A bit of venting can go a long way. It seems you have a visitor. Mr. Wright! Iris, I'm really glad to see you. Godot managed to mobilize the police by claiming a state of emergency. Not him again. Never mind him! We've got to hurry and unlock the secret cavern! I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. It's my fault someone so important to you is locked in there. But how? You said that you were in your womb on the night of the murder. What is going on, Iris? What is the truth? Mr. Edgeworth, can we finish our conversation later? All right. Let's hurry to the inner temple, then. I'll see you later, right? Hold it! <laughs> Hold it. Wait, Edgeworth, I'm coming with you guys! Sorry, right? I can't allow you to come with us. What? I hate to be the one to break to you, but... Maya Faye is in a rather delicate position. What do you mean by a delicate position? This isn't simply a rescue operation, right? It's also an investigation. That being the case, we can't allow members of the public to interfere. C c come on, Edgeworth! If anything happens, you'll be the first to know. 
please understand, right? But it's Maya! Mr. Wright, all that matters is that Mystic Maya is rescued, correct? I... Listen to the voice of reason for a change, Phoenix Wright. From now on, consider anything beyond Dusky Bridge to be off-limits. We'll be going now. Excuse us. He just can't get a break. <laughs> ah! This is no time to be standing around, Phoenix Wright. I do kind of like for this section that... Francisca von Karma is kind of our helper here. I like that we bounce around like we had Maya as our helper in the first section. Then we had Edgeworth with Gumshoe as our investigative buddy. And now it's Phoenix with von Karma. I really like it. Aren't there other things that demand your attention? She's right. Thanks for reminding me. Inside we go. Sister Bikini looks like she's shrunk since last time I saw her. Don't be so rude, Phoenix Wright. What's wrong, Sister Bikini? My, my, my. Hello, you two. How are you doing? <laughs> um, uh... From the sound of that sigh, I guess she's still pretty down. Iris was just here, you know. She was accompanied by that handsome, crimson-clad prince. What are you talking about, Edgeworth? It was just a courtesy call. I wasn't allowed to talk with her at all. Oh dear, it's all my fault that this has happened. Poor Iris. She was worried about my back, would you believe? What have I done to her? Only what you had to do, sister. You have bravely and truthfully testified about what you saw. There's no shame in that. And we'll see to it that your testimony wasn't made in vain. Well, I don't hear anyone else saying that. Mr. Blue Suits doesn't seem to share your opinion, I see. Huh? Me? Gah! Yeah. Uh, oh, yes! You did great, Sister Bikini! Absolutely spectacular! You two are the only ones who said that to me! I can't shake the feeling that I just became a shill to a shrew. Do you have a problem, Phoenix Wright? Sure, she was brave to testify so truthfully like that. I know she's still hiding something. Because it's time to break those psych locks of hers. Oh yeah, she did have psych locks, didn't she? I just completely lost it. Because it's about Elise Denim. Well, let's, I guess, because... Well, first things first, I want to see. Let's go to the courtyard, just in case. Because I still, because I still want to, like, investigate that. That feels like a thing that should be investigated. But, because it's different from everything else. But, well, yeah. Alright, Magatama. I bash you over the head with a Magatama. Sister Bikini, the truth is becoming increasingly clear to me. I'm convinced that Miss Elise Dunham had a special significance to this temple. As to why she had a special significance, I believe it has to do with her true identity. What on earth are you talking about? She she was... Mystic Elise was an author. Just an author of picture books. To be honest, I had my suspicions almost immediately after I met her because she did wear like, similar mystic garb to everyone else, and just seemed mystical. So, I don't know. So, biggity bear. Because, like, that is a thing. What was your deal? Your face kind of looks significant. So, I don't know. Hmm. But, yeah, but... Let's continue, just like, I don't know, I don't know. I want to know who her true identity is. S suspicions Yes, but I didn't have any evidence to support my theory, though. But now I do. This piece of evidence proves Miss Dunham's true identity. Is it the... It has to be, because this belonged to Elise, but it's called the Curing Master's Talisman. Which... And it would make sense that this has to be the thing that kicks this off because we only just got it. So, um, black. <laughs> Miss Dunham had this charm with her at all times. Da! Ah, where did you? This isn't some cheap good luck charm either. But then, what do you think it is, Mr. Wright? But what can a talisman like that possibly mean? It's a talisman, isn't? 
Interesting. Oops! This, this thing speaks volumes about who Miss Dunham really was. This talisman and only one other, uh, and one other item unequivocally prove Miss Dunham's true identity. But what would that be? Her staff? Or would it be... I wish that it... We could... Oh, we can. We can swap between them. Hmm. Because it has to be the scroll, right? Because... Yeah, because the Master's Talisman is basically the same as that, so it has to be this talisman and one other item unequivocally prove, so... But it wouldn't make sense, would it? Why would Misty Fay like, completely not acknowledge her daughter while she was here, alive, and then why would she die? Um, shebang? The painting is obscured by this gravy stain at the moment. But this scroll shows the master of the curing channeling technique. The crest at the top is a sign of that honorable title. The very same crest that adorns the talisman the victim carried with her. Ah! This crest is reserved for the master of curing. Who on earth told you that nonsense? I've got no idea what you're talking about. The new master Maya Fey told me. Well, what? Y you mean that acolyte is Misty Fey's daughter? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. In fact, since her eldest daughter passed away, Maya's Misty Fey's sole successor. M Mystic Misty! Oh! Oh! This is one of those ones! Okay! Mystic Elise graced us with her presence about a week ago. When she showed me the talisman with that mark on it, well, I nearly fainted. No one had seen her since she disappeared 17 years ago, after all. What is the significance of this talisman, sister? A curing talisman? It's the symbol of the master of curing. The bearer must carry it with them always until their death. Until their death. So Elise... So Elise Dunham was really Maya's mother, huh? Like, I I kind of thought that a little bit at points, but it's just like, why would she not talk to Maya at all? It's just like, it was so weird. Yeah. I'm probably good after that, even if my sister was wondering why the hell I screamed like I was going Super Saiyan. When in doubt, make your family question you. It means you're living. The truth comes out at last. It looks like we're making some headway here. Tell me, sister. After 17 years, why did she choose to show herself now? Because something happened that called her out of hiding. W what happened? Well... Earthquake? B what's happening? It can't be. Earthquake! Ah! Oh my goodness! The inner temple! This kind of tremor might... The inner temple? The secret cavern in the training hall! It might very well cave in! What? Maya! Well, boy oh boy, nothing goes right in this world. Be the unexplainable anomaly you want to see in the world. Be the family cryptid. It... it seems to have passed. Well, we can't just stand here and do nothing. Let's go! What? Where? To the inner temple, of course. Where else? Sister Bikini, we'll finish this later, all right? Of course. You run along now. People may have been hurt. I must get some first aid kits ready. Come on in, Phoenix Wright. They won't bar you from entering as long as I'm with you. Thank you. Right at that moment, I had the worst feeling in my gut. We just had an earthquake. I wonder if he's all right. Yeah, because there would be like at least three people in there. You look worried. Are you thinking about the Miles Edgeworth? Come on. Let's go! We've got to hurry to the Inner Temple and... Right! Ah! What are you doing here? How could I have... 
How do you expect us to understand if you don't speak up? Oh, hey, what am I the one getting whipped for? She, she's gone. N no, the defendant, Iris, she's gone. Gone where? She fled. She escaped. What? What even? So, it was just now during the... It's easy to see Edgeworth's one and only weakness. His fear of earthquakes. I should have known better than to escort the defendant alone. As soon as the ground started shaking, everything went dark before my eyes. I stupidly passed out. That incident haunts you to this day, doesn't it? And that's no excuse for letting the suspect get away. I can't believe I let it happen. Right, the inner temple area is a dead end, so she could have only escaped to this side. We haven't seen her. Then we need to get a manhunt underway now and search Eagle Mountain from top to bottom. Wait, Edgeworth. Have you thoroughly checked the inner temple yet? Don't be ridiculous. Why would I? The inner temple is like an island. There's no way to escape but to cross. No, that's not it. Iris isn't the type of person to run away, Edgeworth. What are you talking about? Sister Bikini mentioned something when we were in with her. She said that the sacred cavern might have caved in because of the quake. Then you think Iris might have gone to the inner temple to check on the situation? Listen, Edgeworth, I'm sure she's at the inner temple. A manhunt is not necessary. Right. Let's not waste any more time. We need to get to the training hall sacred cavern now! All right, let's go! February 9th, inner temple training hall. Fortunately, the sacred cavern hadn't caved in. But what we found was something none of us could have ever expected. What? Cyclox? <laughs> There's more of them! All of them! But th so I was right, they literally are Cyclox manifesting in the real world. What? I remember drinking water after that because the amount of scream probably hurt someone's throat. Yet drinking water is like, it's the same reason why I have water with me. It's, it's very important when you do a lot of vocal anything. Water's important. Whenever you go to scream your feelings out, remember, stay hydrated. How can there be even more locks? What is the meaning of this? Iris! Iris, please tell me! What the hell is going on? And we get to the to be continued because of course. That explained like nothing! <laughs> what the hell? I wonder if they'll still be like, ah, you ran away, but I ran to the sacred temple, an island. I wasn't trying to escape, but you still ran away. Yeah. Well, to just, uh, just quickly distract myself from the craziness, I guess I'll just quickly throw out a minor trivia of my writing recently. I recently binged through a one million word fanfic, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon fanfic, and now that's all that's running through my head. And now my brain is going, hey, 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 let's go and completely overhaul our own big old mystery dungeon fanfic to incorporate some of the inspiration from this big one. Because the brain doesn't know how to do simple things. Meh. If it was the 98th floor, I would have been screaming even harder. Oh, yes, most definitely. <laughs> if you got all... <laughs> I can only imagine doing a marathon run of anything, and at the very last moment, one step away from victory, you get sent back to stage one. Oh, excuse me. Blah. I think I got inflicted by, oh my god, I hope that doesn't happen to me. <sighs> but yeah, I, I need to do more writing. But as for this, I have no idea what the hell's going on. I have no idea what the hell's going on. I have no I fucking idea. Mm. Okay, so Misty Faye was here. Okay, because pearls. But nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. Nothing makes nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, from our experience as Phoenix, we met Miss Elise first. And Miss Elise was like, hey, have you seen pearls? She didn't come to me. And then apparently went over to the garden. 
past Dusky Bridge. Then we talk to Iris, and Iris is like, here, have this demon warding hood. That still has to be important. That's the main reason why I think an evil spirit had to have possessed somebody, because they specifically mentioned demon warding hood. I don't know. And now there's Cyclops appearing in the real world. Nothing makes sense. Pearl ran off again. Everything's going to hell. Oh, is this part two investigation? Oh, part two investigation. We're not even at the court yet. Right? Is this what Godot is talking about? Yeah, the trick locks. Now then, Iris, please remove these at once. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm afraid I can't. It... It's not possible for me. What? During the earthquake, when the cavern was in danger of car caving in, Iris escaped. And I know that there was only one lock when I last came here. So you're saying that you can't undo the new locks? Yes. If only I was stronger. Edgeworth, how are you... F uh, Edgeworth, how are you feeling? You look a little pale in the face. Like you're one to talk with your face all green. Miles Edgeworth, go and get some air. I'll watch over this suspect. You go and get a grip on yourself. Don't be ridiculous. I'm perfectly fucking... There's no telling what sort of mistakes you could make in your current state. Go and get some rest. That's your only concern now, Miles Edgeworth. They really do love each other as adopted siblings. <laughs> Understood. I'll handle the investigation in the garden. You take care of things here. Edgeworth. He's got so much pride that he's probably off crying in a corner of the garden. Pride is simply another trap that hinders us in our lives. That said, one must have pride to be effective on the job. At any rate, it seems that this is where we part ways, Phoenix Wright. I'm going to stay here and see if I can't help solve these bothersome puzzles. I see. Well, thanks for your help. <laughs> so now am I going to watch over Iris? I don't have a short fuse when it comes to rage, but since the dungeon can be randomized, I could have got worse RNG. <laughs> True. It might take longer than the 60 uh, second floor run. I can only imagine. Because the long dungeons, they just go on long. And me, with my rage, my rage usually is a build-up thing where I only get annoyed if I feel like something's unfair. Or I have, like, a spike, and then I come down and it's just like, actually, no, thinking about it, it's kind of fair, but I'm still angry at you, kind of thing. My fuses are weird. Now then, do you mind if I ask you a few things, Iris? No, not at all. Well, I guess we'll talk and then investigate. Why did you make a run for it, Iris? I, I'm sorry. I heard the Inner Temple had been severely shaken by the strong earthquake we had. I, I was so worried, I just had to come and see. In other words, you didn't run away to escape the law. At least we're clear on that. I can't tell you how relieved I was when I saw the sacred cavern was alright, but... But what? Then I saw these chains here. I saw all these extra locks that someone had put on the sacred cavern's door, and... Hmm... Who in the world would do something like this? Like, who could have? The only people that could have done it, I think, are Pearl or Maya herself. Or, like, maybe Pearl's mother, somehow? I don't know. Yeah, I was staving for mul starving for multiple floors due to the sheer length of the dungeon. Yep. When it comes to super long ones, you gotta bring Reviver Seeds, Max Elixirs, and a bunch of apples. Just so many apples. These trick locks are sacred treasure of the curing tradition. There are hundreds of ways to set them. That's why only the person who set the lock can open it. And you aren't the one who set these locks. I don't think it's that simple, Francisca von Karma. When we were here the first time, there was only one lock. But now, somehow, there's five of them. What does that mean? It means that someone wanted to secure the place even more. And they wanted to secure it before you got here, Iris. Presumably because they wanted to make sure Maya couldn't get out. This means that Iris can only open one of the locks, the first one. Yes, that's correct. But you said that you were only in your room! How? How did you get here and set the first one? 
What? Iris, try to think, please. Isn't there any way around this? Well, like I said, there are hundreds of different ways to set these locks. I suppose if I went through every combination with each one, I could remove them. But it will take time, won't it? Yes, about a day if I had a guess. To be fair, going through hundreds of combinations for at least four locks in a day is damn impressive. A whole day? Well, that's better than leaving the locks in place. Will you do this for us? Sure, I'll do whatever I can. I've got to wait another day? Hang in there, Maya. You're going to have to call on your inner strength now. You know what, Iris? There's still one thing I don't quite get. And what might that be, Phoenix, right? I think it's obvious. Iris, on the night of the murder, where were you? Please, Iris, don't give me that look. You told us that you were in your room at Hazakura Temple at the time of the incident. But you were seen that time the same evening at the Inner Temple. And then, you were spotted at the scene of the crime in Hazakura Temple, too. Being spotted at both Hazakura Temple and the Inner Temple? It's as if you were... Well, Iris, I think it's about time you told us the truth. More locks! Ah! It's only three, but still. I knew it. There's something going on here we don't know about. Uh, this door. When I was here earlier, there was only one lock, but now there's five of them. Those chains, it's almost as if they're guarding something inside the cavern. I've never seen locks quite like these before. I have. I've seen locks and chains just like these before. They look just like the ones that guard a person's secrets during a psych lock. I wonder if these locks are guarding something too. Dark secrets in a dark cavern. The scroll shows a picture of Misty Fay, master of the curing channeling technique. But why would anyone cover it in gravy? I can't make out what's drawn in this scroll at all. I'll never understand. Artists? Um, yeah. <laughs> Just going through them again and again. Look at those wafer-thin mattresses. Sorry, uh, wafer-thin. Yeah, you know, if that's how eh, I guess, meh. Go through everything, because we can. Don't you dare open it. What a pity, it's full. <laughs> I'm from the prosecutor's office. I can do it that I want. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could, like... I guess I'll wander around a bit and just see if anything happens. Because we need more... Just We need to cover all our bases to maybe bash those Cyclops. <laughs> Someone get a locksmith. I don't think those will help because they're puzzle locks. They're not traditional locks, so you'd need, so you'd need a locksmith that is trained in a specific kind of lock. And since they're curing specialized locks, I doubt there's anyone like that. On top of the fact that they can't really risk busting them without risking causing damage to the cave. I'm finally getting to the bottom of this case. I can count on Iris to break those locks, so I should try to gather more clues. From Sister Bikini, Edgeworth, Gumshoe, and Pearls. What is with pearls, I wonder? The cops are still combing this place. They look pretty nervous. I'd be nervous too. It gotta be a tough job. Especially if someone giving you the evil eye the whole time. <laughs> How could I have done that? Wow, I can't believe it's still bothering him. Edgeworth? Ah! Did he run away? Hey! Don't you dare run away! <laughs> I can only imagine <laughs> Edgeworth beginning to run away from Phoenix. What do you want, right? What do I want? If you came here to laugh at me, then get on with it. Go on, laugh away! I was ready to hug it out with him, but he's just the same prideful Edgeworth. You went back to the criminal affairs department, right? You said you wanted to look into something concerning Iris. Y yes. And thanks to what I found, I was reminded of something terrible. You guys are putting a lot of effort into the investigation of the garden here, huh? And there's a high chance this is the actual scene of the crime, that's why. You mean because of the writing and blood, and the talisman in the snow? Exactly. As you know, those things couldn't have been planted here after the murder. But surely you don't suspect Maya, do you? 
We have to treat everyone as a suspect. Maya as well as Iris. It's our job, right? Fair enough. So, I guess you still haven't gotten over your fear of earthquakes. No. Though thankfully, my nightmares have stopped. But still, if the ground gives even the slightest tremor, I find myself short of breath. Seventeen years ago, when we were little school kids at the same elementary school, Edward found himself in the middle of a murder. It all started with that big quake that hit the courthouse. I kind of like that we're getting an explanation of this again. They're even showing the, the art again. Yes. I was stuck in the elevator with my father, who was a defense attorney. We were deprived of oxygen, and we passed out. And that's when it happened. That single gunshot shattered my whole life. I lost everything that day. All because of that earthquake. Well, technically it was because of Von Karma. But he took advantage of the earthquake. My dreams, my family, and myself. It's been more than 17 years now. And that case was finally resolved two years ago, right? Why are you saying right? We solved it. You think I don't know that? I was there, but... It was such a shock. I never imagined I could be so wrong about myself and my life. I'm sorry, right? There's nothing else I can say. Not after you chose to become a lawyer for my sake. And not after you saved me. Edgeworth, you're stronger than you think. So no more of this self-pity, okay? There was something that bothered me about her from the moment we met. I felt like I'd seen her somewhere before. No, wait. Not somewhere. I felt like I'd seen her in court before. So you went back to, to the criminal affairs department to look for her file. Yes, I checked over every case file I've ever worked on, and I was right. I'd seen her face before, six years ago. Six years ago? It was my first appearance in court. And as cases go, it was my worst nightmare. So, who is she? I'm sorry, right? I can't give you that information away to the member of the general public. What? Why not? It might be the crucial piece of the puzzle that solves this case. The woman I knew was the daughter of a jewelry store owner. She had nothing to do with Iris and Hazakura Temple, and neither did their case. No, that woman is completely unrelated to this murder. So that cinches it. She can't be Dahlia. Delilah. But she's... How does she look exactly alike still? It can't just be a one giant big red herring. There has to be something that connects them in some degree. Unrelated? Yes, I can say that with complete confidence. You're wrong, Edgeworth. She's totally related to this case. I need to fill Edgeworth in. I need to explain the connection between Iris and the woman Edgeworth knew. And how do we do that? What do you think about this, Edgeworth? Sorry, right? You're a defense attorney and I'm a prosecutor. It wouldn't be right for us to discuss things so intimately. But you were acting for the defense of the trial today! Or maybe that's him just saying it overall? That he can't comment on anything? I suppose you've noticed that Maya's name is written on this lantern. Pretty hard to miss, you know. It's written in Miss Denham's blood. She was probably forced up against the lantern by the killer. Then with her back against the lantern, she wrote that name with her finger. That's why it's written upside down. So she was up against it, look down, da da. I guess that kind of makes sense. Do you think the victim wrote this herself? Isn't that the obvious conclusion? But why would she write Maya's name? I don't think that's something I want to discuss with you. Besides, we've already been over that before. Last time this happened, it was a complete fake. There are torches of the naked flame variety. I guess you need all the light you can get up here in the mountains. Accordingly to Detective Gamshu, they were lit on the night of the murder. Well, Maya was training up here, so there's nothing strange about that. Except, apparently they don't light these torches for training sessions. Huh? I heard that too much light isn't conducive to spiritual training. Oh. I didn't know that. 
A little lantern, a little statue. It's small, but the whole place is incredibly well kept. There's just one thing that's troubling me. Everything else is covered in snow or frozen over, but the ice in this bowl has been broken by someone. Maybe one of the detectives washed their face in it or something? Don't be ridiculous, right? No detective would be that careless at a crime scene. He's really angry. I better not say it was gum sure his salary's gonna pay. There's a charm or something poking out from the snow. It looks pretty old. There's a leather cord tied to it, too. It belonged to the victim. We're sure of that now. It's going to go in an evidence room once the investigation is over, so hands off, right? You don't need to tell me that. Well, our dear friend Larry just tried to steal it when no one was looking. He probably just wanted something to remember his esteemed teacher by. Apparently, Iris was taken in by the sisters here at the temple when she was a child. However, we still don't know much about her past, so we're looking into it. That reminds me. I should have went back to the criminal affairs department to look some stuff about her. I should ask him what he's found, and we did, and bah -bah, bah Another victim we know nothing about, same as always. I hope you'll tell me if you know something about our mystery woman, right? I know that Elise Dunham was no ordinary visitor to the temple, but her true identity could be a useful weapon for the defense. I can't give that away just just like that. He's something of a legend, I hear. Don't say it like you don't know anything about him. Tell me what you know. It's a bit strange, actually. If he really was anything special, I should have heard about him by now. I've always I'm always well informed about the rookies coming into the prosecutor's office, you know. Then you mean he isn't anything special? <laughs> you should already know the answer to that. Although. There's one other possibility. What's that? He could have come into the profession from a different channel. What different channel? There's more than one way to become a prosecutor, right? Perhaps he started off as a defense attorney, but decided it wasn't for him. A defense attorney? I didn't even know you could switch sides like that. It seems Pearl was trapped on this side of the river on the night of the murder. Did she tell you anything? Listen, right? She's just a kid. I can't force things out of her. You'll have to be the one to find out what she says. One of the biggest names in the world of laws, I'm sure you'll agree. For better or for worse, we were only destined to meet once in the courtroom. I know, I read all about it. It was the first time for the both of us. Two novices, head to head. I can still remember how downhearted I felt after the trial ended the way it did. I wonder if Mia felt the same way, too. I don't know Maya Faye very well, but it seems to me that the girl is always landing herself in trouble. It seems to me that you know her better than you think. I do sincerely hope she's going to be all right. How sweet. It's been more than a year since I last saw Franziska myself, but it seems that she's been dying to see you again. She really said that? I believe she wants to eat you for breakfast, or to put it another way, whip you silly. Literally and metaphorically. Oh. Go on, let her have her way. It would make for a great anecdote about my trip. Forget it, Edgeworth! Great. Now my brain is going ship Franziska with Phoenix. She's slightly obsessed enough for it. Oh, I went the wrong way! I am a fool! And again, I really like the music in this game. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat has been tickly today. It's weird that no one's around all of a sudden. It sure gets quiet up here in the mountains when you're all on your own. Speaking of alone, I guess I should check out the shack just up this road. Maybe I'll find Larry down there sulking again. What you got is- Oh, pearls! Oh, Mr. Nick! Pearls! What are you doing here? Nothing. What about Mr. Maya? Is she alright? Um, well... We don't know yet. Oh, I see. Hey! What do you think you're doing here, Nick? Larry. This is the loser Shack, where losers get together to lose themselves! This is the what? Hey! We find comfort in each other's failures, okay? You got a problem with that? Look, Mr. Nick, 
Mr. Loris did a picture of me. That's, um, great pearls. We're going to gather firewood now. We'll be cooking some half-rotten potatoes over a miserable little campfire. So stay out of our way! I don't believe this. Why can't he try getting fired up over becoming a better man? No one believes a word I say anymore. Listen to me, Pearl. You don't want to trust this kind of guy, okay? He'll only let you down. Oh, Mystic Maya. Larry is just going insane, it feels like. Larry, is there something you want to tell me about this picture? <laughs> I've got nothing to say to you, Nick. My life's here now, with Pearl, two losers cooking potatoes together forevermore. What am I going to do with him? All right, then. What do you think about this picture, Pearls? I... I think it's really well drawn. I can't draw at all, so I think it's really amazing. See? Someone appreciates it. It's tough getting the flames to look like that, you know? It's supposed to be Sister Iris flying through the air, isn't it? I love it. It's like a dream. A wonderful fantasy. No, no, no. It wasn't a dream. She really flew, I'm telling you. Iris really flew that night. But, Mr. Loris... <sighs> Not you, too. Please don't look at me like that, Pearl. <laughs> don't look at me like I'm some kind of nutcase. I beg of you. I guess this picture really is a representation of what Larry thinks he saw. Okay, so I was half asleep when I was there that night. But I was wide awake after the lightning struck. And I saw what I saw. It was exactly like I drew in the picture. And it looks like I don't have any choice but to take this sketch at face value. Hey, what's that look of doubt on your face? Um, Pearls. Yes, Mr. Nick? I've been meaning to ask you about the night of the murder. Where were you, and what exactly were you doing when it all happened? I, um, I... I was just, well, I'm just a kid, you know. I'm sure it doesn't really matter what I was doing, does it, Mr. Nick? Sorry, Pearls, but yes, it does. On the night of the murder, you were supposed to be in Miss Dunham's room reading a book together. But Miss Dunham was murdered and you, Pearls, were at the Inner Temple. Mm -hmm. Just what exactly happened that night, Pearls? I'm really sorry, Mr. Nick. Why is everyone keeping things from me? Everyone! See, she, she is so short, they had to rearrange the locks. That's hilarious. I've been a bad girl. That's why I'm being punished. What are you talking about, Pearls? My spiritual power, it's disappeared. What? Her powers have disappeared? What do you mean your power has disappeared, Pearls? It's... it's all over for me. A spirit medium who can't channel spirits is like a painter who can't paint. Hey, what are you looking at me for? Pearls, did you try to channel someone's spirit right here at Hazakura Temple? Tried but failed, perhaps. Uh... <laughs> Way to go, Nick! You made her cry! That's... That was really cruel of you! <laughs> Just as I thought. I'm gonna have to break her Cyclops to get the truth out of her. Everyone is insane in this place. Everyone! I wonder if Sister Bikini is back at the main hall yet. I haven't seen Gumshoe around in a while, either. Maybe they're having a cup of tea together somewhere. I bet Gumshoe is Sister Bikini's type. I doubt it. What's the matter? Well, what's the damage? How is the Sacred Cavern? It looks like it survived, but we have a bigger problem now. And then I inform her. I told Sister Bikini all about it about the five locks that were stopping us from getting inside the sacred cavern. But who... who could have done that? The only people who know how to set those trick locks are those of the curing tradition. We have Iris at the sacred cavern trying her best to open them for us right now. Actually, there's something I've been meaning to talk with you about, Sister Bikini. Oh yes, we were in the middle of a chat, weren't we? Yes, you were telling me how the Master of Curing disappeared 17 years ago. 
I want to know why Misty Face suddenly disappeared at this temple. It was about a week ago when Mystic Elise... No, I mean Mystic Misty arrived. After she showed up, uh, showed me the talisman that proved she was the master, she said... Someone is trying to destroy the Curing Tradition's main family line. I am here to put a stop to them. Who would that be? Someone was trying to destroy the main family line? There's only one heir to the title of Master at any time, and it's usually the eldest. That child becomes the new Master of Curing, and her daughters, the main family. All other mediums become branch family members with no hope of controlling the clan. That's why nothing has changed about the history of the clan. Branch families always have and always will plot to erase those of the main family line. So basically, Naruto. To some degree. Well, maybe not, but like, that's some kind of ninja-esque backstabbing drama thing. Is the power of the master worth that much bloodshed? You believe in the technique, don't you, Mr. Wright? You know its power is real. Yes, I do. It's been two years since I first met Maya. In that time, I've seen her channel the spirits of the dead plenty of times. During the Mask to Mask case, and during Maggie Beard's trial, too. Thanks to Maya, Mia's always on hand to help me out when I need her the most. Which I... Which is interesting, because it feels like we haven't had her for a while. The curing technique has made a huge difference in the world, you know. I mean, the ability to commune with the dead. That's true psychic power, you know. Members of the tradition have always been there behind every important leader. Who wouldn't respect such a tremendous skill? I suppose so, but with all that power and influence, I kind of expected you'd be really rich by now. Are you saying we're poor, Mr. Wright? <laughs> You're very direct, aren't you? People don't believe in it anymore, you see. All because of one little mistake. A mistake? What mistake? It was 17 years ago. That's when everything came crashing down. All because of that incident. Which, it was Misty channeling Edgeworth's father, and Edgeworth's father said that the bailiff shot him. And I think people kind of go back and forth on wondering if he was lying to protect Edgeworth, or if he was telling the truth and thought that the only person that could have shot him was. Hmm. That incident? Is she talking about what I think she is? I'm sure the records still exist if you're interested. Locked up, of course. It was called the DL6 Incident. That's the name of the file. The DL6 Incident. I knew it! The DL6 Incident. I know it well. I handled a related case just two years ago. Ah, that's right. So it was you who was the defense attorney on that case. A murder that took place 17 years ago. Oh, that's cool art. That's cool. It was the first time in the... It was the first time in the country's history the police ever used a spirit medium. The idea was to channel the victim's spirit to learn the identity of the murderer. And the medium who performed the channeling was Misty Fay, Maya's mother. Through the Mystic Ma... Mia... No, Mystic Mia's. Through Mystic Misty's channeling, the name of a certain man surfaced. Armed with that as evidence, the investigators were spurred into action. But that man, he was found not... He was found not guilty, wasn't he? And that's right, he was. And the case remained a mystery. In other words, we failed. It was the first case the world had ever seen the curing tradition openly involved with. It was all over the media, the public, the judiciary, the people of curing village. Everyone judged her. Everyone said Mystic Misty's powers were a sham. And then she just disappeared, vanished while everyone still thought of her as a fraud. But I know the truth! Misty Faye's spirit channeling wasn't a sham at all! Of course it wasn't. And since you managed to reveal the truth, we're finally making a comeback. The curing tradition is starting to recover at last. With a new master wielding the power of the clan. Does she mean Maya? Not gonna lie, being a necromancer that's also a court that's also in a courtroom would be hilarious. That that's actually kind of funny. Technic 
Technically, Maya is a necromancer. Because the technical definition of a necromancer is channeling and conversing with dead spirits. So that's kind of funny. The spiritual power of the curing channeling technique is in the blood. Mine's told me the exact same thing before. We, the women of the Fey Clan, have always been spirit mediums. It's because the power of the communicate with spirits flows strongly through us. According to Maya, only the women in the family can inherit that power. The main family's bloodline stems directly from Mystic Ami. But with each new generation, only one daughter becomes the new master. And the ones who don't become branch families, right? That's right. And it's always the cause of tragedy. You know, Maya had a sister too. And an older sister named Mia. Oh yes, I've heard of her. What? You know about Mia? Of course. She became a lawyer in the hopes of discovering what happened to her mother. And lost her life as a result. Do you know what Mystic Mia is rumored to have said? She said it wasn't only because of her mother that she became a lawyer. She also didn't want to fight with her sister over the leadership of the tradition. Really? Well, she saw what happened to her own mother, Mystic Misty, as she grew up. I guess Mystic Mia got tired of seeing all the rivalry between her mom and her aunt. That's right. Mystic F Misty Fay had an elder sister, too. And Misty, having superior powers, managed to usurp the master's seat from her. Mystic Misty's sister is Mystic Morgana, as you probably know. Now she's in jail! Morgan? Oh, I, I said Morgana for some reason. <laughs> Your Honor, I raised the murder victim! Well, that's what they tried to do, but then it didn't work. <laughs> that's hilarious. Morgan? That's a name I know well. It was a year ago now at Maya's home, Curane Village. Excuse me, why do I have hiccups? What she did was terrible. It was also she could make her own daughter the next master. I suppose if you know about Mystic Morgan's daughter, then you must have already realized that Iris... Huh? Iris? What's Iris got to do with any of this? That Iris is... Mystic Mor... What the fuck do you mean? How though? How though? What? What? I, I, I figured that maybe Morgan was involved on some level? A little bit somewhere, but what? B -b 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 so, Iris would be the elder sister. But why would she say that f she knows Phoenix, but Phoenix doesn't know her? What? And why does she look like Hawthorne? Why does she look like the sociopath lady? What is going on? But Iris is what? Is she kidding me? Iris is Morgan Fay's daughter? Did you just say that Iris is Morgan Fay's daughter? Oops, I thought you already knew. It sounded like you've met one of the Mystic Morgan's daughters already. I, I have. I know her very well. Oh? Yes, Pearls. Pearl Fay. But I always thought she was an only child. You jest! That child? She's Mystic Morgan's? I had no idea. Then why was Misty being so chummy with Pearl? No. No! Misty, you didn't! Misty, you didn't! Misty, you didn't! Did Misty lure pearls to the inner temple? And did Misty do a ritual to take Pearl's mag mystic power and channel it into Maya with that upside down blood ritual or something? Because she didn't want Pearl to I something? I don't know. Was that an attempt? Because Misty, under the guise of 
uh, of Dunham wanted nothing to do with Ma Maya as she was here, but was constantly with Pearl. And Pearl was on the, the island mountain past Dusky Bridge, where the murder took place. And that would potentially explain why Maya's name is written in blood. Is it possible that Misty Faye stabbed herself to try and channel Pearl's mystic power to Maya so that what Morgan tried to do wouldn't happen again? And could this also be Misty framing Iris so that Iris being the eldest Morgan daughter wouldn't also usurp Maya or something? But then who the hell put the, the, the locks? What a, What is going on? Mystic Morgan. But she's in prison now, isn't she? Yes, ever since she was found to be a co-conspirator in a murder case last year. It was all done to set Pearls up as the next master. You mean a blood sacrifice or something? It's like, because the things that are lining up here is Pearls was on the mountain island. And Misty apparently was initially a part of the murder happened there. So, uh, and also... Pearls is claiming that her power to channel spirits is gone. Something happened to do that. And I'm wondering if it's connected. Because that would potentially explain why there was Maya's name written there. But upside down, why? Because she was... Because Edgeworth says if she was stabbed... She would be able to write her name in her blood upside down like that. Maybe it's possible that Morgan was doing something? It could be that... Who knows? Because in my initial playthrough of the second Ace Attorney game, when we first met Pearls, I was wondering if Pearls was a scapegoat somehow. If Morgan or somebody used Pearls' power to take part in the murder to a degree. So could it be that Morgan hijacked Pearls' mystic power? But no, you have to be alive. Who knows? Maybe we'll hear that Morgan died in prison on the same day somehow. Because again, M Bikini said that Misty came to Hazakura Temple a week ago because she found out there was something afoot. Something bad happening, and she wanted to put a stop to it. So th this has to be connected somehow, and I don't know what. I see. So I've been wrong all this time. Mystic Morgan had... The fuck do you mean? What do you mean, Bikini? Why are you sludgehammering me with these revelations of doom? What do you mean, three? Who else could it be? Who? Who, Bikini? Who? Wait, what? Th three? Yes. Iris, her twin sister. Oh my god. Don't fucking tell me that. Delilah actually is connected to this. <sighs> but that doesn't make sense. But that doesn't make sense. Okay. Iris claims that she has been raised at Hazakura Temple since she was a child. And... Is it possible that Delia slash Delilah Hawthorne was more a, a, a daughter of Morgan? but she broke away for some reason and got adopted or 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 could it be i don't know 
am I right? Is Iris actually Delia? And she jumped off, but that was when they were like 12 years old or something. And she jumped off a bridge. What the fuck? M more information, please. What? T twin sister. Oh, you didn't know? It all happened 20 years ago. After the clan leadership was taken from her by her sister, Mystic Morgan's life crumbled. It wasn't many years later that Curane's reputation hit an all-time low. When Mystic Morgan's husband realized his wife would never become the master, did he divorce her and take the twin sister? He left her in the village, taking their twin... And then he went on to become a jeweler! But why the fuck? <sighs> this case has more twists than Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gang's evil ending on the game. <sighs> so I was right, in a way. How awful. He was a jeweler, you know. In the end, he remarried, and that's when it happened. He decided to give one of his girls up to be looked at... What? 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 What the fuck? What? What the fuck? That was, uh, that was Iris, you see. Why would he give her up to a temple? Why? I guess because he's like, oh, well, she's related to you guys. Uh, you have her. It's unbelievable if Iris has a twin sister. Could it be? Um, could you tell me one more thing, Sister Bikini? What was the name of Iris' sister? I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I just can't remember. All I recall is that her father was a jeweler. Well, that's a clue, I guess. I'm a jeweler. Thank you very much. You've been very... You've helped clear up a lot of details. Pearls had two older sisters, huh? Yes, that's right. No doubt it was all because of Mystic Morgan's anger towards the main family. Anger? What do you mean? Her twin daughters were taken from her by her jeweler husband. But even that couldn't destroy her dream that a child of hers would one day lead the clan. That's why she had pearls. It seems that the incident here was a result of Mystic Morgan's anger. It was able to break free of the bars that confine her. So Iris has a twin sister. The plot thickens. But this information will be useless unless I can flesh it out a bit. I need to ask more questions and get some more info. What the fuck? Everything is going mad. Sounds like someone's happy. What tune is it that they're humming? <laughs> no motive, no crime, no motive, no crime. Sing it with me. No motive, no crime. I remember when we used to search in the channeling room and curing. Oop! Well, I love my job. Who cares if the clues I find are no good? That's not what investigating's all about. The investigator investigates for the love of investigating. It's a passion. Good cases we have. Good cases we've lost all along the way. I would have never guessed that Gumshoe was into re reggae. Every case is gonna be airtight. Every case is gonna be airtight. Hey, pal. Huh? Who, me? How long have you been there? I just got here. Oh, okay. So what are you up to, detective? I'm investigating, pal. I made a promise to Mr. Edgeworth. I promised I would find the real murder weapon. The real murder weapon? That Bob sword thing turned out to be a false lead, right? I'm giving it my best shot here. But I still haven't turned up any clues. I just found these weird scraps of paper. It looks like a letter or something. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with the case, though. A letter? Yo, motherfucker, tell me about that letter. The Chichichito is there in Mr. Kami's right hand, but it was proven in court today that it wasn't a murder weapon. Given the design, get nothing else was just repeating everything. So let's talk. So how's the investigation going, Detective Gumshoe? I don't know if I should be telling you, pal, but I guess I can't hurt. Looks like the murder took place in the Inner Temple Garden. And they're taking that bloody writing on the lantern pretty seriously back at HQ. What? You mean... I don't have the details, pal. All I know is if you don't find Maya down in that sacred cavern, 
We're gonna be faced with one ugly situation. What kind of ugly situation are we looking at here? You got me. I don't know. They're not my words, pal. Then who said it? Mr. Godot. Godot? What did he mean by that? About that letter you found. Don't remind me, pal. I'm busting the gut here trying to find the murder weapon. I'm all I find is some burnt up old paper. Be careful. Once night should be the... As soon as you... Well, we'll probably get it and I'll be able to look at it. <coughs> burnt up old letter? Yeah, it was in that incinerator outside the inner temple. The incinerator? I knew it. I knew I wasn't imagining it. There was snow on the incinerator when I first saw it. But after the incident, the snow had melted away. Which means someone used the incinerator on the night of the murder. What's going on with you, pal? I've got a right idea if you want to take a look. Can I? Do you mind? Sure, go nuts. I don't want it, pal. You can have it. It's all spirit mediums and masters and stuff. My bet's got no relation to the case. Spirit mediums? It's gotta be important if it mentions spirit mediums and masters. I better give it a good look over and some serious thought. Make sure you chuck it in the trash when you're done. Littering's a crime, pal. So what do you know about the real murder weapon so far? Well, it wasn't the Shichishito that was found impaled on the victim's body. Mr. Edgeworth proved that in court today. Yeah, that's true. In which case, it must have been another blade. And that's what you're running around like a headless chicken looking for now, huh? Yeah. And man, is it tiring work. But let me tell you something, pal. I'm no chicken. We've got the... We got the feather of forensics in our cap these days. We're using the department's secret weapon on this. Secret weapon? What's a secret weapon of yours? You wanna know? You gotta think scientifically, okay? Alright. The murder weapon was a sword. Swords are, scientifically speaking, made of metal, right? Any questions so far? No. I know what he's gonna say, but I'll let him look smart. So what's the perfect tool for the job? Ta-da! A metal detector! Raise your hand if you didn't see this coming from a mile away. Well, you wanna give it the scientific investigation a go? Huh? M me I've been using this thing for hours. It gets pretty boring after a while, so why don't you give it a try? I don't know. Should I help Detective Gumshoe out or not? Play forensics. Come on, pal. It's good fun. I'm telling you. All right, then. I guess I'll give it a go. Like I said, this is the department's most advanced gadget. The absolute best. It's so sensitive, you could make it cry. It's so high-tech, you could skydive off it. Oh, bother. So, now I'm gonna tell you how to use it. It's possible the real murder weapon is around here somewhere, right? Sure, that's what we're trying to find out. Right, so first, let's turn the detector on. That's the sound of the metal detector signal bouncing off something metallic. Next, move the detector around and give the courtyard a good looky-see. Pal, don't worry, this baby will let you know when you've hit something metal. And when it happens, press space to give the area a good hard stare. This thing picks up metallic objects that are hidden from sight, too. Take a good look at anything and everything that seems suspicious, okay, pal? This looks like... a wallet? Aha! That's where it's been! Is it yours, detective? I'm always dropping it, so I put a bell on it. But you still dropped it anyway. Yeah, but now I found it again, pal! Your wallet is completely empty. Well, I drop it all the time, so I don't put money in it anymore. Then how come the metal detector picked it up? Must be because of the bell, I guess. Oh, we already did it. Oh. So you're telling me that I've been had? All this time? Looks like there's something round burying in the ground here. Don't touch that, pal! Huh? What is it? It's a trap! People set them out to catch us detectives! They're real nasty! A trap. For detectives. You mean like those fierce traps of sharp teeth that you're supposed to snag your leg? Yeah, those! I got my finger caught in one of those once. Y your finger? There was this bit of cheese and it looked so tasty, I reached out and then BAM! I'm not sure I know how to respond to a story that's stupidly pitiful.
Look, a ladder! That's a step ladder. What's the difference? Looks like a normal ladder to me, pal. Surely everyone knows the difference. I mean, they're pretty ordinary objects. I met plenty of guys like you, always picking on the smallest detail. The vegetable spore guy near me, my place, does it all the time. He even corrects me when I ask for a head of lettuce. That's a cabbage, he says. I'm telling you, they're the exact same thing. No, they're not. They're completely different. You have to plant both of them firmly in the ground before they can grow, don't you? Listen, you gotta take a step back and look at the bigger picture sometimes. Otherwise, you could miss a really important clue. That's advice from a pro, pal. The last person I need advice from is this guy in front of me. Oh, yeah, I got an achievement. Letter ladders versus step ladders. That's odd. There's This sled is made of plastic. It says bikini number one on the side. Maybe there's something under it? Hey, what's this? A, a badge? Aha! I've been hunted high and low for that! It's yours, detective. Nothing's priceless to a guy like me, pal. A cab can't have a cop without his can't be a cop without his badge. I'm so glad I put that diamond there now. How did you manage to drop your badge in here? Of all places! I know, I bet it happened this morning. I was playing around with the sled and Stop right there, I don't need to hear anymore. It's just a pair of skis, nothing useful to our case. I'm actually pretty good at skis, you know, pal. I just love to fly down the slopes with my coat fluttering in the wind. Really? I had no idea. How good are you? Well, I'm better on skis than I am on skates, but not as good as when I'm on a snowboard. That's a pretty detailed answer. Oh, but you know what I'm best at? Making mashed potatoes and gravy. The guy's losing it. Must be the altitude. We better get back to the investigation. I do feel like his brain is deteriorating slowly but surely. That Shishi Tito next to the golden statue wasn't the real murder weapon, pal. Yeah, I know. I just thought I'd check it out again anyhow. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Do you know about that sword? It's supposed to represent the multiple branches that life can take, all ending as one. Yes, I heard something about that. You know what I think about sometimes? What kind of life I'd be leading had I not joined the Homicide Division? You think about that kind of stuff, Detective? Of course I do! I think about it a lot. Me as a traffic cop, me as a detention officer, me as the Blue Badger! There's something to be said about the humor value of Gumshoe as the Blue Badger. <laughs> Ooh, the Chakra's mythology. Could be missing something myself. Uh, is there a sword in the... Is there a sword in the goddamn wooden... This is Miss Dunham's staff, isn't it? Scientifically speaking, they're usually made of wood. But the detector's reacting to it. Yeah, but however, you look at it, the thing's made of wood, all right? I don't bother investigating anything unless it looks like it might be metallic. Isn't the whole point of a metal detector to find metal where you can't see it? It's weird that this thing is causing a racket. Here, let me take a look at it. Hey, hands off! Examining evidence is a job for the... Ah! The top is coming off! Which would explain why the orb fell off. Look what you've done! You've damaged a really important piece of evidence! Huh, <laughs> spoiler. I don't... I don't even know any spoilers. I am but a fool. Ah! Did you cut yourself? What the f... So, Misty had the murder weapon with her all along, huh? What did the fuck? Th that's a... a sword inside the staff. Is this... could it be? The murder weapon? I'd never have guessed there'd be a sword concealed in the victim's staff. They call this kind of thing a sword cake, pal. This one's a real gem. The workmanship is really something else! Thank goodness it wasn't a cane sword. Or else the victim would have stabbed her own foot! Yep, yep, there's a reason! And I'm completely unaware of it, for I am a fool. Some Assassin's Creed shit. I wish Assassin's Creed did stuff like this. This is more Bloodborne. I officially give up on trying to figure out how Gumtoo's mind works. If the real scene of the crime was the Inner Temple Garden, then why was the sword used to kill the victim found in the main hall courtyard? Hey, Gumshoe, who knows about the hidden sword? No one! Even the police didn't know about this until I discovered it just now! Well, as they say, there's no team in Gumshoe. 
It doesn't look like there are any traces of blood on it. Then I guess this isn't the murder weapon, huh? No, no, no! I'm sure someone just wiped off the blood, wiped it off after the murder. Yeah, of course! This thing's definitely the murder weapon. Great job, pal! It's about the same length as the Shishichito, too. This must be the murder weapon. Okay, I'm gonna run over to forensics. There's gotta be some traces of blood left, even if most of it has been wiped off. See you later, pal! Every case is gonna be airtight. Every case is gonna be airtight. <laughs> Wait up, detective! Huh? What is it, pal? I'm a pretty busy guy right now, you know. If you're gonna get that staff analyzed, right? Would you mind holding off for just a while? Huh? What are you talking about, pal? Please! Just until we find Maya. Maya? What's this gotta do with her? I don't know, but I'm starting to get a really bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. Oh, how so? Look, Maya's trapped inside the sacred cavern right now, and... Well, we don't even know if she's okay or not. The more evidence and testimony I hear, the more uneasy I feel. You don't think... Maya's been mur- Please, detective! Let's just wait until we can get inside the sacred cavern. You're looking kind of Viridian there. Okay, okay. Just stop with that face, pal. One thing, though. This staff's secret trick. Let's keep it between you and me, all right? If it gets out that we knew about it and didn't say anything, we're finished. I understand. This is just a regular run-of-the-mill staff, you got it? Okay. Now you take good care of it, pal. Thank you, detective. Don't worry. She'll be fine. Gumshoe. You know, there's a place at the base of this mountain that has some really good pasta. How about I take you there when, I fi when you find Maya? Hey, pal? Sure. Thanks. Victim staff received from Detective Gumshoe for safekeeping. <laughs> the evil stare at Assassin's Creed. Yeah, because, like... <laughs> I, again, I can't wait to jump into some more Assassin's Creed, but man, 3 has skewered some of my enthusiasm. I hope they revert some of the changes. I can't help but wonder, though. What was Elise Dunham doing with a staff like this in the first place? We're supposed to keep it to ourselves, but what if I tell everybody? Sword? Let me see. Yes. Oh yeah, I, di I didn't look at this all that closely. Be careful, something, something, something. Once night falls, something, something, something should be there. As soon as you hear the lights out, Bell, you must channel her spirit. Leave everything up to her. Her name is blank. She I is our ally? The whole blank. Here's a picture of her. Use it when you channel her. I know you can do it. Once this is blank, burn the blank. Also make blank. Tell anyone about this letter. Gravely roast the master in the fires of Hades and bring our vengeance to fruition? What? I'm confused. So what's the working theory? I have no idea. I have no idea. There's so many different ways it could go. With this note, like... With this note, it can't be the my initial crackpot theory of Mystic Misty wanting to dull Pearl's power and transfer it to Maya to stop interclan like fighting. So obviously somebody conspired here. Obviously somebody conspired right here. It could be Morgan. Because, I st I don't know. This letter is talking to somebody, and it's either Iris or Pearl. Although, maybe it can't be Pearl, because Pearl can't really read. I don't know. Huh, Morgan Fay. Huh, there's only two people who want revenge. Morgan Fay, and then, like, what's her name? Delilah Hawthorne. Which, I guess that would on some level make sense if somebody did channel. But at the same time, ish, I don't know. Because again, I thought they set up that Pearl wasn't good at reading. So I don't know. I just don't know. It's just like the master must burn in the fires of Hades. So I doubt that it would be like Maya. I just don't know. 
Isn't it possible Mar Morgan could be manipulating the family? That is entirely possible, but I just, I don't know the specifics. Like, I think Morgan could have sent the letter, but, like, again, to who? To, to Iris? Could it be that Iris is in on it? And Morgan said, channel this spirit. Hmm. What if someone found the note meant for Pearl? But again, that's the thing. I don't think it would be meant for Pearl because I think that Pearl would kind of hate her mother for what she tried to do to Maya. She really likes Maya. And it's been like a year since the trial. So I think that Pearl would have sided with Maya over Morgan. Then again, she did say that she's been a bad girl and that she lost her powers. So who knows? We need more information. Do you know anything about this? Nope. You have nothing to say. Anything else? Nope. So, it could be that Iris... Cause, like, I don't know. It's possible that Iris is in on it on some to some degree, but I just don't know. It said that Pearl is extremely loyal to family like Maya and Morgan. <laughs> and don't forget the badge. Oh, yeah, I need to throw the badge at people. Oh, I was expecting Larry and Pearls to be here. I guess they must have gone to collect firewood. I suppose I'll have to check back later. But yeah, I just, I don't know. Hmm. Because I feel like it has to involve pearls somehow because her powers are diminished. No, but she doesn't care about my badge. Just figured I'd give it a shot. So yeah, it's just like... Because it has to be... There's just so many weird things, though. Like, why was Misty on the island of the Inner Sanctum? Why did somebody somehow fly over the bridge? I don't know. I don't know. Everything is going... Just everything is not so wacko. Surely we can trust him with sword. Nope, I think he's still on the... We shouldn't be commiserating with evidence. It is very bad. Evidence is no bad right. We do not talk about things. And then I guess training hall. Maybe we have all the info we need to break her Cyclox? The Lux are far more important this moment, wouldn't you agree? She's right. I'm gonna have to hold off on asking her more things for now. But there's also the ba ba ba, the night of the crime. And it seems like you're the only one I can I have left to talk to, so maybe we need to Magatama. Oh wait, I could have talked to her about maybe her sister, maybe. Then again, the game was kind of up front with that smiggity schmack, but who knows? I think it's time you told me the truth of what you were doing on that night. You said you were in your room at Hazakura Temple the entire time. Do you still claim that to be true? Yes, that's where I was. Iris, I believe you're innocent. That's why I want to believe what you're telling me too, but I can't. Because this person saw you somewhere else that night of the murder. Of which we now bring up Mystic uh, Babadon. I did try to show the, the cane blade to Edgeworth, and he just said the same, Oh, we shouldn't be doing this. Where? I'm talking about Sister Bikini, of course. Sister Bikini. Her testimony in court today was very clear. That night, I was helping an acolyte with her training in the Inner Temple, but... Well, as you can see, my back likes to act up violently. So I left Iris to help the acolyte and returned to the Hasakura Temple. Sister Bikini didn't just see you, she spoke with you. You two talked about Maya's training that night. So you see, Iris, you were there at the Inner Temple on the night of the murder! That's very impressive, Mr. Wright. The Acolyte's actually start training was... Uh, actual training was due to start after 10 o'clock that night. I left the main hall early so I wouldn't be late, but... I could have sworn that this didn't pop up with, like, Edgeworth's thing. Like, she said she, she was in the temple the entire time. Blah. And the Cyclox didn't show up. What time was that? Let me see. It takes about 20 minutes to walk between the main temple and the inner temple, so I would have left at about 9.40, I think. 
I'm sorry, Iris, but lying just doesn't suit you. Huh? Now you say you left the main hall at 940, but what you say doesn't add up with this. Uh, add up with what? Received before the lights out bell the night of the... Cr uh, but yeah, before the... So maybe it's the Iris Hood? Hmm. I wonder what we're talking about here. Um... <laughs> Do we use the testimony? <laughs> Snow. I don't think so. Hmm. It's either our... Now you... Hmm, because it can't be. Oh, I think this might work because Rang lights out bell at 10. You yourself testified to the contrary, don't you remember? You said you rang the lights out bell at 10 o'clock that night. Ah... Plus, only moments before you rang that bell, you were seen at the main hall by the most reliable witness I have. Who's that? Me. Mr. Wright. We even spoke a little that evening. That's when you gave me this. I was wondering if that would be useful. Surely you haven't forgotten. N no, that's right. I remember. And that brings us to another puzzling fact, Iris. At 10 o'clock on the night of the murder, you were seen in two different places at the same time. It's time you told me exactly what's been going on, Iris. So far, I've managed to prove two things. First, on the night of the incident, you were at the inner temple. And second, at the exact time, same time, you were ringing the bell at Hazakura Temple. There's only one possible explanation for this apparent impossibility. And I have no... Let's see. You were at Hazakura. You were at the... There were two of you. That has to be the only thing that could be said, because then we could be like your twin sister or somebody channeling her. Because it's entirely possible that Ba 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 got like executed for her crimes. So I don't know. I diddly diddly don't know. So so yeah, there has to be two of you. I desperately hope... Like, the only thing that might keep us out is this. If we don't know her exact thing. We know that there's a that she's the twin sister, so it should still work. But hopefully I didn't need to find out more specifics about her. There were two of you! On the night of the incident, you were seen in two different places at the same time. Which means there must have been two of you. I can't think of any other explanation, Iris. But, but that's crazy! How could that be? There's only one of me! It's impossible! It's impossible? I wonder. The way you're trembling certainly seems to suggest otherwise. Uh, you're seriously trying to suggest there's more than one of me? Then show me the evidence! Show me something that proves there's more than one of me! Uh, Mr. Wright, when you say there was another me, I was kind of expecting someone who looked like me, you know. But it says twin sister. So I guess I do have to get more information, maybe. <laughs> so the reason why Edgeworth didn't catch this and Phoenix did catch it is because her closeness to him. Because the more you're around someone, the more you learn someone's tell. Yeah. Hmm. Irrefutable evidence. So I need to go and find... Mo like, obviously, I think I need to find out about that part. At least I know all the way down to the final thing. I'm gonna see if I can ask you about this. Nope, can't. Maybe I can ask about your mother? Nope, can't. So I need to... Oh, maybe I need to talk to Edgeworth about it. Because he talks about people rather than evidence. Nope, never mind. Won't do that one, but maybe this one. Oh, dang it. Uh, there we go. It didn't pop up immediately, so I thought I was being had. I was like, did you know that Iris had a twin sister? What? A, a twin? You can't be serious. Sister Bikini told me, but the problem is she didn't know the name of this twin. There was nothing about Iris having a sister in the files I checked. Well, Iris was taken in by the temple when she was really young. Apparently, her sister was raised by her father, 
A jeweler, I think. A jeweler! Right, I... I just might know who this twin sister of hers is. I had a feeling you'd say that. Let me guess. The bitch! Her name is Dahlia Hawthorne, right? And this is how we probably get Dahlia's picture. Yes, exactly. Please tell me... Please tell me what you know about her, Edgeworth. Please. It was my first court case six years ago. I was a greenhorn, and due to my inexperience, the defendant died. You're talking about Terry Falls, right? You, you know about that case! You're not the only one who noticed something about Iris and Dahlia Hawthorne. I checked one of Mia's old files from six years ago. Yes, Dahlia was a key witness in that case. Dahlia and Terry Falls conspired together to stage a fake kidnapping 11 years ago. Into the river with you, Satan. They stole a jewel worth $2 million from Dahlia's father, a jeweler. Why would they even need to do that? She was super young, and her family was apparently rich. And five years after that, she murdered her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne, to keep her from talking. Her sister? Well, her stepsister, actually. They weren't blood-related. Valerie was the only daughter of Dahlia's second, uh, father's second wife. Oh. And this is when she entered my life. The woman who tried to kill me. So after Terry Falls died, what happened to Dahlia? Did you check that out? Does it really matter? Like I said, Dahlia isn't connected with this case. Why are you so sure about that? It's simple. Dahlia Hawthorne is dead, so, yep, I was right, to degree. So it's possible that Morgan sent this letter here for somebody to channel Dahlia. But who and why? Did Morgan kill her sister? Or his sister daughter, is what I meant to say. What? Well, her metabolic processes are a matter of interest only to historians, so to speak. Plain English, please. What does that mean? What do you mean by Dahlia Hawthorne is dead, Edgeworth? Right, I must confess that in reading her file, I came to know of the murder case you were involved in during your college years. Dahlia Hawthorne was found guilty, thanks to the persistence of Mia Fey. Give Mia Fey! Mia Fey! At that time, Dahlia... It's like she was possessed by a demon or something. It's been almost five years since the guilty verdict was handed down, and her sentence was finally carried out. She was executed last month. Convenient! E executed? I'm sure that's a bit of a shock for you, right? And for more reasons than one. But do you understand now? She can't possibly be connected with this case. She's dead. And once someone is dead, there's no way to revive them. There's no way to revive the dead? Hmm, I wonder. It seems you're not aware of one other connection yet, Edgeworth. And what is that? It's about Iris and Dahlia Hawthorne's mother. And what's their mother got to do with any of this? She's Morgan Fay, a spirit medium from a branch family of the curing channeling technique. Did you just say curing channeling technique? Did do you know something about it? Oh yes, I know it's connected with that fraudulent spirit medium. Fraudulent? I was involved in another nightmare 17 years ago. I was caught up in the middle of a murder investigation. Police didn't have any leads. They were stumped, and that's when they called her in. She was a very famous spirit medium and the master of a channeling school. But you know what happened? As a result of her efforts, an innocent man was accused of murder. She and her powers, they were all fraudulent. Edgeworth, 
Go to the police records room, it's all there. All you have to do is check the DL6 incident case file and you'll know. Of course. How could I forget? Edgeworth was the victim in that case. Technically, it was his father. Edgeworth, you'll understand someday. And then you'll see that the curing channeling technique is real. And now we can move back into the training temple and go through the whole thing again. I forgot to show my badge to him. I keep forgetting. Mostly because it's never useful. Alright. Because Bikini saw you. Just speedrun all the way through. Because we just needed that extra bit. I probably should have double checked. Yep, she's there now. Now that's weather data, your testimony. Skippy, 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 skippy. There were two of you. And now we show you your sister. What do you have to say to this? I have a firm grasp on the situation now, Iris. You have a sister, don't you? A twin sister, perhaps. <sighs> That's right. Dahlia Hawthorne, a woman I know only too well. I had no idea you knew of her. Very impressive, Mr. Wright. But she's no longer... Yes, I know. Her sentence was carried out recently, wasn't it? I'm sorry. Thank you. There's no need to explain now, is there, Iris? This second you, who was here at the temple on the night of the murder, it was your twin sister, Dahlia Hawthorne! That's hilarious. That we go like, like, I'm sorry that she's dead, but she was here! <laughs> Does a speedrun look like an, a uh, an Ace Attorney? I have no idea. Like, it can't be that hard to do a speedrun. It would probably just mostly be very efficient, like, cursor movement. And, so, like, question selection. So there's probably not... It's probably not that interesting of a speedrun because it's just careful clickety-clicky. But, but you just said it yourself a second ago. My sister's dead. Have you forgotten that? Have you forgotten this, Iris? This is a channeling dojo. A training ground of the curing channeling technique. That night, someone channeled Dahlia's spirit and you knew about it! And that's the secret you've been trying to hide from me. Ah! So does that mean that she's actually guilty? It's actually a lot of optimization. Yeah, just, unless there's like some weird glitch though. I think, yeah, it would just mostly be timing like your presses to select the correct things and a lot of essentially be perfect with all your button presses and your timings. I... I was in my room in the main hall that night. As soon as I heard that I'd been spotted at the inner temple, I knew. I knew it was my sister. Dahlia, the other half of me who passed away last month. Just as I suspected. The iris that Sister Bikini saw at the inner temple on the night of the murder. It was Dahlia Hawthorne. Why didn't you tell me this before? Because... Because my sister always does the right thing. No, she doesn't. Excuse me? because I mustn't get in the way of what she's trying to do. I already betrayed her once before. I can't do it again. You betrayed her? What do you mean? That's why I... I have to accept I may be found guilty. It's the only way. What is she talking about? You know about it, don't you, Mr. Wright? About the fake kidnapping that took place here on the Eagle Mountain 11 years ago? That was the start of it all. It's what started her down that twisted path. And how did you betray her, though? She started to commit crime after crime, and in the end, she... she lost her life. It's all because I betrayed her. How did you betray her, Iris? It was no coincidence that Eagle Mountain is where the exchange was to take place. After all, I... I helped plan the whole thing. What?! But I got scared, so I ran away. 
What are you talking about? Why would you help her? Stealing two million dollars from your own father, that's awful. But I promised, I promised that I'd help. And she didn't do it for the money. Huh? It was revenge on your father because he left Morgan for not becoming the head leader of the Curain clan. R revenge? <laughs> Lore! And the plot thickens and spoiler. What do you mean by revenge? He was a hideous man. He threw our mother away and then sent her to hell. Her mother? She must be talking about Morgan Fay. Our mother was the eldest daughter of the main branch of the Fay family. The main family had a lot of influence in many business and political circles at the time. As the eldest daughter, our mother was set to inherit all of that as the next master. So that's the reason our father married our mother in the first place. For power. But his plan backfired, because our mother's sister took it all from her. She took over as the master of curing. That would be Misty Fay, Maya's mother. But before long, the credibility of the curing tradition hit rock bottom. The new master, Mystic Misty Fay, made a terrible mistake. It was during the investigation of the DL6 incident. After that happened, our father took me and my twin sister away, leaving our mother and our home behind. He hated the place. He said it was a hick dive and that he had no reason to stay there. And that's when you came here to Hazakura Temple. Yes. The woman my mo father took as his next wife already had a daughter, Valerie. I, I had no place in his new family, you see. Oh. And I haven't seen my mother once since then. Having the master seat stolen from her and being rejected by her own family, I've heard she's been very but bittered spiritually and emotionally. I think I'm finally beginning to see how pieces fit together. I have asked her everything I can in my capacity as a prosecutor. This incident, everything related to it goes back to the history of the fake clan. That's what it looks like. Iris, there's just one more thing I want you to tell me. What is it? During the incident in which your sister Dahlia Hawthorne poisoned a lawyer, she began a relationship with a certain college student in order to hide the evidence. That college student. Have you heard anything about him? Well, I did hear one thing. She said she hated his guts. I see. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Hurry up, Phoenix Wright! There's still much to investigate! Leave these locks to me. I'll open them for you, I promise. Thank you. I suppose I'd better continue my investigation. There's still one giant secret left to unlock. Pearl's Psych Lock. Hmm. I wonder, can I present to you... Well, first things first, do you care about my... Nope, you don't care about my... Badge? Do you care about Pearl? You do not care about Pearl. Granted, it's more like she's being stopped by Franziska. Look like a check on the garden. Nothing changed. But it's interesting, because she's kind of involved, but she's kind of not. Look at that! They really did make a fire right in front of the shack. Oh, Mr. Nick! Ha! <laughs> You're too late, Nick! If you came here for one of our potatoes, we've already polished them all off! I think I pretty much got all the evidence I need. Now I just need to find out what Pearls is hiding. Because the thing is, she was... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Well, there's a question. Have you noticed Maya ever experiencing fatigue? No, I don't think so? I don't know. Huh. Maybe? It's one of those odd things that I never have really, like, taken notice of. Well, night of the crime. You will release your secrets to me. Understand that you must tell me the truth. 
After dinner on the night of the murder, you were supposed to be in Elise Dunham's room reading a book together, correct? Yes, I was so happy when she invited me, but I didn't go in the end. You didn't go? No, there was somewhere else I had to go instead. I was so worried I... I had to go! I didn't know what to do with myself, so I was so nervous. So Pearls never went to Miss Dunham's room, because she was too worried about something or someone else. Pearls. She became incredibly hungry after channeling her sister. It also usually needed a catalyst for her to activate it often. I completely missed. Uh, I'm going to quickly reset so I can read what was said. I was reading chat and I'm but a fool. Do you care about my badge? Because she did disappear for a while. Like Pearls did. I didn't know, so I was so nervous. So Pearls never went to Miss Dunham's room because she was too worried about something or someone else. Pearls. On the night of the murder, you went to this place, didn't you? Where was Pearl on the night of the murder? I do believe that she was... Hmm. Over here? You went here, didn't you, Pearls? Looks like she's still not going to open up to me. This is where you went because you were so worried, right? Then the next question is, who or what were you so worried about? Now I'm going to take a guess and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, okay? You mean you know? If I'm right, will you tell me the whole truth? Well, okay. You went to this place for one simple reason, and that is... I'm trying to think. Because it has to be the burnt letter, right? Or, hmm. Oh, hmm. Could it be? Huh. Because it's either the burnt letter or maybe she was worried about Maya? Hmm. You went to this place for one very simple reason, and that is... I think she would care, uh, worry about Maya, I think. Yeah, I think she'd be worried about Maya because... <sighs> this is the problem of doing this in spurts. Because I kind of forget the things of the first day. But I think she would be worried about Maya. Because Maya was at the Inner Temple. And... I think they mentioned something about, like, ooh, it's very strenuous and hard, and she would have worried. The letter, if we assume it's for Pearl. Yeah, but at the same time, like, be careful. Because I feel like, because here's the thing. I don't think that Pearl, like, obviously this has to be useful to some degree somewhere. Maybe, maybe to break a cyclock or something, but when it comes to this... I don't think... Because here's the thing. The very important thing. She went to the inner temple, the inner sanctum, for a reason. Granted, I think it does say burn in the incinerator when done. One's gonna burn... No, it just says burn the. Not even mentioning the incinerator. I do believe she was very worried about Maya. Because it was meant to be a strenuous and hard training thing. And I think, I think that's it. Because again... Pearl can't read, uh, if I'm aware, or has trouble reading, and that, like, that note is way too big and wiggly-woggly. Granted, that still doesn't... But at the same time, maybe? Maybe? I'm gonna shoot my shot with this. Well, Pearls, this is what you were worrying about, right? There's something I'm worrying about right now, actually. What's that? You, Mr. Nick. Your face has turned a really strange color. Darn it. So maybe it is the note. You shouldn't work so hard, you know? You need to take a break once in a while. But the thing is, why would she go there specifically? Because if she wanted to channel... Cause she... I don't know. Oh, I'm skipping over dialogue. I'm a fool. <laughs> I'm, my brain is... Dear. Let's also note the banner has, like, gravy on it. Yeah, where did the gravy come from? Was it from, like, the the meal that night? No, no, it's okay. I'll die of pneumonia if I nap in a drafty little shack like this. 
So I'm going to have to think this through one more time from the very beginning. So Pearls never went, yep, because she was too worried about something or someone else. Hmm. Yeah, because I believe she went to the inner temple. That is what I'm definitively assuming. She had to have gone to the inner temple. But what? Maybe it's Misty? Because she wouldn't know about Misty. I don't know. Because she knew about, like, she wouldn't be worried about Miss Dunham, and I don't think that we have a Misty Fay thing. Hmm. Or was it Iris? I don't think she would have been worried about Iris. But I don't know what. Like, I guess... It... I guess it has to be the burnt letter. Right? Nope, I'm just dying. What the hell? I'm dumb? Am I dumb? Did I present the wrong thing? Like, because I don't... Nothing else feels right, because I'm selecting the inner temple. Because that's the only place she could be, because she was there after the bridge burnt down. And everything points to her being there, but what did it? Because the only things I could think of would be the burnt letter or Maya. Those are the only things that I could think of doing it. Hmm. I'm just trying to think. Because I tried Misty. Like, did I accidentally move over to Mia Fey? Because, like, I don't know. That's the only thing that makes sense to my brain. You went to this place for one very simple reason. Hmm. There's, like, nothing here that I think of. I'm just trying to think. Because I don't know. I don't know. I'm losing my mind. by gravy like the gravy thing like you went there for one simple reason and I just I don't know There is the thing of, like, who and where. Like, who or what. I just, I don't know. Because well, surely we have everything that we require for VLs. I'm gonna reset just so I can see see the entire inve like the dialogue again. I'm gonna quickly save over this because I feel like things are gonna go bad because this one's funky. Who knows? Maybe game broke. Because I feel like the only two things that are relevant, Simi, to her being there would be the burnt letter or Maya. And I could have sworn that I select Maya. All right. After dinner that night of the murder, you were supposed to be at Dunham's room reading a book together. Yes. But didn't go in the end. Didn't go because there was some place I needed to be. I was so worried I had to go. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was so nervous. Never went to Dunn's room because she was too worried about something or someone else. On the night of the murder, you went to the inner temple. 
and then it looks like she's still not going to open up. This is where you went because you were so worried, right? Then the next question is, who or what were you so worried about? Now I'm going to take a guess, and you can tell me if I'm wrong or right. If I'm right, will you tell me the whole truth? You went to this place for one simple reason. Hmm. I could have sworn that I selected Maya. Well, let's clearly select it. Maya selected. Pressing present. So I guess I fat-thumbed it and selected a different profile, maybe? Because I could have sworn that I selected that before. Huh. Guess it was my input problem. Meh. It's obvious what you were so worried about, Pearls. It was Maya, wasn't it? Ugh. You knew the training Maya was undertaking was dangerous. After all, it was the special course. <laughs> it's a bug! It was an actual... <laughs> I swear, if it was an actual bug that made me do that, that th this this version of the game has been out for a while, and that if it's an actual bug, oh, uh, it's it feels much more likely that I just fat thumbed it and selected a different profile by accident because oh, it is a bug. Jesus Christ, how is it not fixed? Oh, that would murder so many runs. It's unpatched. Ah, uh, that's weird. It's the only bug I've ran into so far, I think. That's weird. That's very weird. It's actually super rare? What? I have been had. I have been tortured by game. I signed up for this, your special course. Well, my, my, my. Quite brave of you, considering how cold it is. Young people can be so reckless with their health. Don't blame me if you become one of those... With, become one with those you channel. <laughs> the poor flawless runs. It's rather unfair. That is hilarious. Sister Bikini scared you of what she said, didn't she? And because it was you who introduced Hazakura Temple to Maya in the first place... You felt responsible, didn't you? Thinking about what would happen to Mystic Maya made me more and more worried. I couldn't sit still at all. That's why I decided to go and find out how she was doing at the Inner Temple. And we're clear now that you went to the Inner Temple that night, Pearls. What's not clear is what happened after that. <sighs> about what time was it when you headed over to the Inner Temple? Um, it was probably around 9.30 when I left the main hall. I heard the real training was supposed to start at 10. I wanted to get there before it started. But there was so much snow, so I didn't get there until after 10 o'clock. Until after 10? How did you know what time it was? Because I heard the bell ringing for lights out. You heard the lights out bell? The Hazakura Temple's bell is pretty small though, isn't it? You must have really good hearing. I... I was really trying to pick up the sound of that bell, that's all. I didn't want to miss it. That would be terrible. I was trying to hear the bell. Tell me, Pearls, why were you so worried about hearing that bell? Huh? Oh, I... I think I know why. The reason you were so worried about that bell was because, if I remember correctly, didn't the burn note mention the bell? Once night falls, it should be there. As soon as you hear the lights out bell. So this has to be it. So it was for you. I thought you couldn't read, though, Pearls. Huh. You were given some instructions to follow for that night, weren't you? I presume you recognize these pieces of paper. Ah! Where did you... In the incinerator at the Inner Temple. Don't tell me that Pearl... Then again, maybe Pearl is kind of on the same... But the frickin' thing says... Gravely roast the master in the files of hell, of Hades, and bring our vengeance to fruition. Maybe, like, the first two letters were for Pearl and this one was for Delilah? But I don't, it doesn't make sense. Well, I guess we'll get sense. In the incinerator at the inner temple. Pearls, you were following the instructions in this letter that night, weren't you? That's why you couldn't afford to miss the sound of the lights out bell. I... 
I'm speechless, Mr. Nick. You're amazing. Why would you? Then again, Pearls wouldn't know the master, would she? She wouldn't know that Elise was Misty Fay or Misty Fay at all. These instructions that were found in the incinerator. I believe they were written for you, Pearls. For me? I... No! As you can see, a large portion has been burnt. But the last section is still fairly legible. As soon as you hear the lights out, Belle, you must channel her spirit. Who was it, Pearls? Whose spirit were you supposed to be channeling? <laughs> Taking into account the author of the note and their purpose for writing it, whose spirit would Pearls have been trying to channel? Don't overthink it, Phoenix. It's pretty obvious who Pearls was supposed to channel. The person you were trying to channel that night, Pearls, was the bitch. It was Dahlia Hawthorne, wasn't it? That was the name that was in the letter. Ah. It's just as I suspected. It wasn't Iris's sister who's uh, it wasn't Iris whose sister Bikini met at the Inner Temple that night. It was Dahlia Hawthorne. Do you know anything about her, Pearls? Do you know what kind of a woman Dahlia Hawthorne was? Um, no. I've never heard of anyone by that name before reading those instructions. I thought so. Pearls doesn't have a clue. She doesn't know that Dahlia is her sister. Then again, I really should have expected that from the beginning, considering that this entire series is built upon sisters uh, channeling their dead older sister. About the instructions in the letter I found, Pearls. Who wrote them? Um... Whoever it was asked you to channel the spirit of someone you'd never heard of. You must have quite a lot of respect for them, but why would she respect Morgan? She tried to frame everything on Maya, and you like Maya. After all, you followed their instructions without question. So here's my next question. Who wrote this set of instructions for you to follow? It has to be Morgan, right? Because nobody else could possibly have frickin' done it. It's the only one that makes sense, the only one who would know about Dahlia. So it has to be Morgan. Pearls, I have to wonder about something. You didn't have any idea what these instructions meant, did you? But don't. But you followed them to the letter regardless. Why? Because it was your own mother who asked you, that's why. How did you... I figured it out. The person who wrote you this letter was your own mother, Morgan Fay. Uh... <laughs> All right, Pearls. It's time for you started telling me the truth. Mr. Nick, I... I... Why is she holding back from me? I don't like this. Don't underestimate me. Just because I'm a child. Huh? If you're trying to say I followed these instructions, I'd like to see some proof. What? Because I... I don't think you have any. Uh, she'd say anything rather than admit to carrying out these instructions. I guess I'll have to produce some more evidence then. One more thing should do it. All right, Pearls. We both know someone carried out these instructions on the night of the murder. But you're right. There's no evidence that proves it was you. I... I, I knew it. However, I do know that whoever did it was a child. Huh? How do you know that? It couldn't have been an adult. No adult would have made a simple mistake like that. A uh, simple mistake? Do you, what do you mean by that? I'm sure you meant... I'm sure you thought you were carefully following the instructions you've been given. But you misunderstood some of the words. And this is the evidence that proves it. Be careful. Once night falls, should be there. As soon as you hear the lights out fall, you must channel her spirit. Leave it up to her. Her name is Mike. She is all... Our ally, the whole blank. Here's a picture. We use it when channeling her. Once this is burned, also make sure or tell anyone gravely. <laughs> Gravy roast. <laughs> It was you who splattered gravy on this hanging scroll, wasn't it? Huh? What? Why would I do something like that? Do you remember what was written in that letter? Gravely roast the master in the fires of Hades and bring our vengeance to fruition. 
<laughs> Morgan was known to be very manipulative. But I still would have thought that Pearls would have lost all faith in her mother after what she almost did to Maya. Weird. <laughs> Gravely roast. Roast is a food. The food they were having that night. <laughs> but you didn't know how to read the words gravely and roast, among others, right? H how... Those are the words that she was talking with frickin' Elise about on, that, on the first day. How did you know that? Remember the conversation you had with Miss Dunham on the night of the murder? Perhaps we can read some books together. <laughs> really? I'd love to. I am I'm not very good at reading. <laughs> well then, would you like to practice reading with me? Um, Miss Elise, so, for example, how do you read this? It says gravely. That's kind of a tough word. Sure, Miss Dunham taught you how to read gravely and roast. But what she didn't teach you is what they meant. Gravely sounded like gravy to me, and the only roast I could think of was the food. And that's why you did it. That's why you covered the picture of the master in gravy from that night's pot roast. To be honest, I did think it was a bit strange. I guess I really did get the wrong idea. Just a tiny bit. I, I really am useless. I couldn't even burn the letter properly as my mother asked it of me. Such a simple thing, and I couldn't even do it right. Like, I thought you were involved, but I didn't think it would actually be like this. I can't believe- I still can't believe that I got had by a friggity glitch. I- after dinner that night, I did go to the inner temple with a pot full of the leftover gravy. Hmm. Note that when I say manipulate. Still, she has been in jail for a year now, so it still feels weird. It's more borderline psychological abuse, that's true. The gravy? I saw the picture on the hanging scroll near the sacred cavern. I was sure it was the Master of Curing, like it said in the letter. I see, and then? Well, it was already way past ten when I got there because of all the snow, so I went to the Inner Temple guest area. The guest area? Yes, I thought I could wait there until the training was over. Why didn't you just go to the training hall? Because Mystic Maya's main training had already started and I couldn't interrupt it. So I just stayed where I was and prayed for her to get through it. But then I... Pearls, did you fall asleep? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I just couldn't help it. Hey, don't worry about it, Pearl. Who cares if you fell asleep? I fall asleep all the time waiting for Iris, too. It happens. Anyway, then you found yourself trapped in the inner temple. Yes, when I woke up, it was morning. I tried not to cry, but... Disky... Disky... Dusky Bridge wasn't there anymore, and there was no one in the training hall. I thought everyone had left me because I overslept. I threw the letter in the incinerator, then I heated up the leftover gravy and... And left up, let off some steam by chucking the gravy at the scroll while you cried? It must have been pretty scary for you, Pearl. I know what it's like. Nick used to leave me behind when I fell asleep at school, too. Don't equate something as trivial with her, so trivial with her experience, Larry. It was written right in my mother's letter. It said as soon as you hear the lights out bell, you must channel her spirit. I was on my way over to the inner temple when I heard the bell ring. So you channeled Dahlia Hawthorne's spirit? No. I tried, but I couldn't do it. What? You couldn't do it? I've never failed at channeling. It's because her spirit was already being channeled. Somehow her spirit was already being channeled. Oh god. <laughs> That's my theory. This is the first time it's happened. I tried and I tried and I tried. Yesterday this morning, the whole time. But I just couldn't do it. Don't let it get you down, Pearl. It'll all work out. If you want, I'll come flying through the sky for you. Whoosh! Just like that. So she never managed to channel the spirit. Is that why you think your spiritual powers are gone? Yes, I... I don't know what to do. Yeah, I just read them. The 
note that I say manipulate. It's more borderline psychological abuse, which would explain it. And also, Pearls is a child. It's just I figured that after what Morgan did, that Pearls would be a little bit harder to manipulate. But at the same time, is child, is her mother. So who knows? But... When it comes to the her not being able to channel Dahlia, what does that mean? What does it mean? The only thing I can think of is... Because, again, the Demon Warding Hood has to be important. Because protects from evil spirits. Somebody had to do it. You can't channel someone who's not there. Yeah, exactly. So, like, either Dahlia isn't actually dead, or Dahlia possessed Maya against her will? Wasn't that the main issue with Case 2? No, uh, was it? You mean Case 2 of the second game, or Case 2 of this game? Because, I'm trying to think. My brain is fried with numbering. But in this case, the only thing I can think... Uh, second game. Because if I remember correct... Yeah, wait. <sighs> Technically. Because... The thing that was going on with the second game was... The sister they thought had died lived, and it was the other sister that died. And the first sister took over the life of the second sister. And then... Maya could... Like, got knocked out, and... bibbidi ba. So I... So I forget. It could have been a thing where... Yeah, because if they were trying to channel that specific person, yeah, and they weren't dead. So yeah, the only answers could be is Dahlia's not dead, or Dahlia's spirit was already being channeled, which is my go-to theory right now. Yes, I, I don't know what to do. Is there any other explanation for you why you couldn't expo uh, channel a spirit? I suppose there's one other possibility. It's not very likely, though. Could you please tell me what it is anyway? It could happen if someone else was already channeling the same spirit. Keep in mind, Pearls is a child and did show the note to Misty. That's true. Uh, she did show the note to Misty to read the Gravely and Roast, which meant that she also would have seen the part about it referring to the Curane Master. Huh. What the... Uh, mm, huh, hmm. So could it have been that Misty channeled Dahlia instead? And then Dahlia stabbed herself while being channeled and wrote Maya's name? But how the fuck did she fly over the burning bridge, is my question. Oh, it's all, it could be highly likely that Maya could have seen it, too. Hmm, that is true. But the question remains, the, the one thing that does make me wonder, though, is Maya has to be in the cavern with all the locks. But then who put the locks there? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Think about the way Larry was positioned when the bridge was drawn. Huh. From Larry's position. I mean, but she's too far up above the blaze. Wait a minute. Ba ba ba. Could it. Could it be that the. No. But, uh, it's upside down. It's upside down. I was... The suspension bridge thing, like, oh, yeah, that looks normal. So... It's possible that somebody was walking across the bridge. When lightning struck it and the flame started, they jumped into the river. But that means they would have had to walk by... By him. Hmm. But, yeah. Because he did wake up upside down looking at the bridge. I thought... That's true. Yeah. So that explains the flying. Someone else? 
What do you mean? Well, there's only one of each spirit, right? Yep, it's like dating a girl, Nick. You can't see a hot chick if she's already taken. And that would mean on the night of the murder, someone else channeled her spirit before Pearls could. And on the night of the murder, the only people that are part of the Curane family were Pearls, who wasn't channeling them, Maya, who I think should be locked in the place, Misty, who could have channeled Dahlia to fuck with the plan. It couldn't have been Sister uh, Sister Bikini, and it couldn't have been Iris. Or that the person never left, right? Like, if you're talking about, like, the... This, again, this is the problem of me jumping, 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 jumping. But yeah, that's another thing. They couldn't have stopped channeling them. But the, the, the hmm. But there's all actually that comes to think of it. The tracks photo. It was used to get to Dusky Bridge. Hmm. I'm just trying to think. Because, like, I don't know. Uh, if more things would come out, this is... <laughs> Someone else channeled the spirit of Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a failure. I couldn't even grant my mother's final wish. Her final wish? Yes, this letter. This is my last wish, she said. So make sure you follow the instructions carefully so that would also partially go through it as well because and kind of leads credence to why Pearl would go along with it. It was like, oh, my mother was a bad person, but well, well it is her last wish. Snowmobiles can hold up to three or four people or a lame person. Hmm. Huh. Okay, I'm trying to think. So, if Morgan Fay is dead, like, again, I'm still hooked on the idea that the Demon Warding Hood has to play a part in this. So, it's possible, maybe? Huh. Uh, someone is still lying, that's true. I'm just trying to pit things together. Meh. So make sure you follow the instructions carefully. And this letter. I definitely need to find out more about it. My mother has gone to a place called a penitentiary. Yeah, I know, Pearls. I visit her every month. Oh, so you, you actually go and visit your mother. And last month she told me. The time we've been waiting for has come, Pearl. There's something I need you to do for me. I hid a letter for you at our home before they brought me here. Well, that's awfully convenient. I want you to read it and do exactly what it says. It's for the good of the fake clan, my angel. So that would also help move along the idea that Pearl got manipulated into it because she's been exposed to Morgan all this time. <laughs> it's my angel. You'll be doing a great thing. Now listen carefully, and I'll tell you where the letter's hidden. Meanwhile, that officer is just not doing anything. My mother's always nice to me. I love her very much. Yeah, moms will do anything for their kids, right? She said it was for the good of the Fae Clan, so I knew I had to help her. I mean, Mystic Maya's part of the Fae Clan, so I had to be good for her, too. That's right, isn't it, Mr. Nick? I... I guess so, yeah. There's a picture with her letter, too. A picture? Of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Usually a picture is enough to channel someone's spirit, but this time... Pretty weird, huh? Like Larry knows anything about this stuff. There's something else that was strange about my mother's letter. The seal on it was broken, as if someone had already opened it once before. As if somebody had already opened it. 
So could it have been possible that Maya read the letter? But then... Ba, 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 ba. The seal was broken. Somebody else read the letter before Pearl. The only person that I can think of because the letter was hidden at their home before Morgan was taken. Which is grand planning. So if Maya saw it and then went... But that's another thing. Misty also kind of knew that something was afoot because she went to Hazakura Temple at the same time. Of which... But at the same time, Pearl told Maya to come here. And Misty Fay was here. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Very likely indeed. That sure is a pretty strange. Someone had opened it already? Orders from Morgan Fay opened once before. Thanks, Pearls. You really helped me out. You're very welcome. My mother's watching over us. So I'm sure Mystic Maya will be alright. Looks like an innocent smile on look at that innocent smile on her face. What am I supposed to say to her? Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Finally figured it out, have you trite? There's no way that he could be on. No, there's no way that he could be on it, right? Maya could be cooperating with a certain coffee-loving freak, but why? Why would Maya work with... I'm very confused. You finally realized how terrible of a crime being painfully oblivious is. Gado! The entrance to the sacred cavern looks like a freaking puzzle workshop. I guess he's talking about Iris and the lock-breaking effort. But it's all a waste of time. W why do you say that? Because Maya Faye isn't coming back. What? You don't know what you're talking about! How can you say something like that? It was your job to protect her, Trite. Just like it was your job to protect Mia Faye. Two sisters caught up in the worst circumstances. I... I realize that, but... And you are the only one who was by their sides. You are the only one who could have saved them. But I didn't know anything about what was going on! Ha! What did I just say, Trite? Being oblivious is a heinous crime in itself. Tomorrow? We'll settle everything in court tomorrow. Once and for all. But why would Maya go to him? Why would Maya go to Godot? Who poisoned Diego Armando. It was Del like, yeah, because if I remember correctly, yeah, they said that he Delia, Delilah, poisoned an attorney. So... But then would... Would Maya have known about that? Like... Nah, 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 nah. Everything's crazy. M Mr. Nick, is is what that man just said true? It'll be all right, Pearls. I'm sure Maya's alive. You'll see for yourself tomorrow. Uh, yeah, that's right. I know I can trust you, Mr. Nick. They wouldn't kill Maya, would they? Who was close to him? Mia. Oh. Could it be that Mia forced control over Maya and informed Godot? That's the only thing I can think of. Which would be a very strong connection. Is it possible for... Is it possible that Maya channeled Mia, who channeled Dahlia, to stop Pearl from channeling Dahlia and thus being incriminated? 
or having a guilty conscience over channeling a murderer? That's a thing I'm thinking. Ah! My dear Pearl, you've done so well, my child. My Pearl. <laughs> it's better that you don't know what you've done. I knew this day would come for you. The blood of the main family is no more. Now, finally, after all this time, the master's seat is yours. My last great wish. It seems I was just in time. There's also the possibility that maybe Morgan killed herself to be channeled or be an evil spirit to possess somebody. I have no idea. Close, but no cigar. Everything is nuts. We've been going for three hours. I don't know how long the trial is. I'm going to press on. I'm going to press on. Granted, that was mostly three hours because I was wandering around and being hooked on things. Good morning. Oh, are you by yourself? Ah, morning, Pearls. But Mr. Nick, please tell me. What's going to happen to Mystic Maya? I'm sorry. We don't know yet. Investigation is still going on, so I wasn't allowed into the inner temple. Close, but uh, excuse me. I get. I have no. I, I don't know why I keep having hiccups. Here's a fun fact. At least it's worked for me for the most part. If you have hiccups, just tell yourself that you're not a fish. I don't know why it works, but it does for me. Yeah, but close to no cigar to my thinking. So. Blah, 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 blah. It could also be. Na, 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 na. Cause yeah, my thinking is the demon warding hood is important. It's possible that when Pearls fell asleep, if Gado is Diego Armando, I mean, if he's not, I will call shenanigans. Like what? Is he gonna turn out to be Diego Armando's? twin brother, and he's like, my brother's dead, but I'm gonna, like, channel his spirit like Mia did for so- well, Mia never did, I don't think, but like Mia's family can. Who knows? Mia would be familiar with him and Maya by extension. I mean, he died. He claims to have died and come back, which I guess this could be an elder Elden Ring thing where it's just like, ah, I'm gonna be like my brother. <laughs> oh, I see. So is Sister Iris still trying to remove those trick locks in the training hall? No. She's the defendant in this case, so she can't be at the Inner Temple. She's required to be here in court. Um, then how come she's not here in the defendant's lobby? I have to admit, it's kind of strange. If you're looking for Iris, she's in the prosecutor's lobby. Who is it? Oh, wrong voice entirely. Amnesia. But it can't be. B, <laughs> like actual amnesia, like for Armando, because he claims to be Armando, and if like, I don't know, my brain is melting. <laughs> uh, Edgeworth, what's Iris doing over there? She's going over today's testimony with the prosecutor as we speak. Today's testimony? You heard me. Iris is going to be testifying as a witness for the prosecution. Wait, what? The prosecutor is squeezing her for a confession. Or so I heard. Francisca von Karma. Nope, it's Godot. He probably took over because he's evil. What are you up to? I know what you're thinking, but Francisca isn't going to be the prosecutor today. What? Then who is? Who else could it be but Godot? G Godot. Francisca is engaged in some important work at the Sacred Cavern. Now I'm just imagining Francisca cursing up a storm as she's trying to remove the, the things. What happened to the person Dahlia poisoned? I, I honestly forget. I know that she poisoned a prosecutor who was on her tail. So it's possible that this could be a revenge plot from... Godot as well. This could just be a gambit pileup for all I know. Everyone's involved. The sacred cavern? You don't mean that she's... Exactly. She's been out there all night trying to remove those trick locks. With the head nun's assistance, naturally. We estimate that the last of the locks should be taken care of in about three hours. I hope everything continues to go smoothly and receive some good news. Yeah, thanks, Edgeworth. 
Prosecutor Godot intends to nail this case shut today. Be prepared to fight like there's no tomorrow. You don't have to tell me that. Touché. I can already see it in your eyes. You're not the same fever-ridden frantic maniac you were yesterday. It's strange. On the way here, I decided that today would be the end of all this. Almost immediately after I made that decision, I felt myself getting stronger. Interesting. Maybe you've passed your cold onto someone else, literally. Then again, I guess it would kind of make sense to some degree of, like, Godot being the twin brother of Armando. And then, because this entire case is about twins, Mia and Maya, Morgan and Misty, Iris and Delilah, why not Godot and Armando? <laughs> Throw another twist sibling in there, why don't you? And with that, I leave the rest in your capable hands, partner. Thanks. I still don't have answers for most of the riddles plaguing this case. The circumstances around the murder of Miss Elise Dunham. No, I mean Misty, Miss Misty Fay. The impossible flight Larry claims to have seen. And what that woman is really after. I will solve them all and bring this whole tragedy to an end. Court is now in session for the trial of Iris of Hazakura Temple. Uh, um, your honor? B what are you... Who? Me? Well, my little brother came to visit me in my chambers earlier this morning. All of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, he developed a scorching fever and fainted. <laughs> he literally did give... <laughs> the fever... That's your brother? I guess you have... Why aren't you Canadian, then? Therefore, I'll be standing it for him. I see, Your Honor. So they're brothers. That explains a lot. My poor brother. He looked a bit pale. Not to mention sad that he couldn't be here. So literally, nobody here who was here yesterday is here for today. It is impossible to predict what the future has in store for any of us. This is precisely why people feel the need to judge the past. And we of the court have been charged with the solemn duty of passing such judgment. Well said, Mr. Godot. I understand exactly what you said, at least up until the end anyway. Now then, Mr. Godot, please proceed with your opening statement. Humans are fragile, fickle beings. Our hearts change with our shifting of the tides. There's only one thing that remains a constant in this crazy world. The bitter darkness that lies at the bottom of this mug. So then you mean, um, forget it. What do you mean? During yesterday's trial, the accused refused to admit her role in the crime. But today she has had a change of heart. Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple has a confession to make. C confession the, the defendant? Iris, why didn't she discuss this with me first? Very well. This court will now hear the defendant's confession. Upon meeting a beautiful lady, always ask for her name and profession. And that's one of my rules. Um, my name is Iris. I am but a simple nun undergoing training to Hazakura Temple. Witness, is there something that you want to confess to? Yes. But first, I want to apologize to Mr. Wright. I... I can't continue lying to everyone anymore. It's all right. What is it? Mr. Wright, I have to admit that I... I did play a part in this terrible incident. Uh, are you actually confessing? I like that the judge kind of didn't expect her to actually confess. Are you saying that you are the one who murdered Miss Elise Dunham? No, I'm not, Your Honor. But I dealt with the cover-up after the murder took place. After her spirit left, I took the lifeless shell of Mystic Elise and carried it to the Hasakura Temple Courtyard where I desecrated it. But what? 
Uh, order in the court! Order! Witness, are you... Are you saying you were an accomplice to murder? Yes, that's correct. What?! Three minutes in court and I'm already covered in a cold sweat. Ha! Huh. Everyone on the planet is an accomplice to something. It just happens to be that in this case, it's to murder. Isn't that right, Mr. Trite? Uh, that could do. So this is the confession they were conferring about. It pains me to say this, but it looks like Iris' testimony was all a lie. That crumpled up and shoved into pocket. Now then, little lady, if you don't mind, I've got a question for you. Whose crime were you trying to cover up by your actions? Iris was covering for someone? Uh, I'm definitely up the creek without a paddle. Or a life jacket. I've been at Hasakura Temple ever since I was a little girl. Hasakura Temple is run by one of the branch families of the Kurain tradition. One of our missions is to protect the main family. I'm sorry, but main family? And this is where you're going to accuse Maya of... Well, you couldn't. Or would you? Yeah, I don't know. My brain is melting. Yes, and that's why I would d dirty myself, if need be, to protect her. The daughter of the master of the Curane channeling technique. Mystic Maya Fay. Huh? So let me guess. Godot is going to say that Maya left... Godot is going to say that the inner cavern wasn't chained up at the time of the murder. Maya came out, murdered Misty Fay, and then Iris was the accomplice that covered it up while... Then going in while well, Maya then went back into the cavern to give her an alibi is probably what's gonna happen. Wake up and smell the coffee, right? She's naming Maya again, three times in a row. Order, order in the court. So not only did you witness the murder, you know the name of the murderer. I'm terribly sorry, but it's true. I saw her commit the crime with my very own eyes, and I cleaned up the area to protect her. That's ridiculous! Maya could never have... The defense will refrain from commenting until the appropriate time. Now, witness, let's hear your testimony. What exactly happened on the night of the crime? Yes, Your Honor. I thought I was prepared for the unexpected, but I never imagined the case would wind up going in this direction. I kind of called this. I think I called at one point that Maya was going to get named. I went to the inner temple that night and saw it all happen in the garden. I saw Mystic Elise strike Mystic Maya with her staff. While Mystic Maya was still stumbling, Mystic Elise moved in to deliver a fatal strike. Mystic Maya tried desperately to defend herself and stole the weapon. It was only in self-defense. You can't blame her for it. Huh. So it was in self-defense. Yes, Mystic Elise is the one who attacked first. Hmm... That's why I tried my best to protect Mystic Maya. You moved the victim's body to the temple so that Maya wouldn't be suspected. Isn't that right? Not bad. You've got the instincts of a true criminal. Something's not quite right. I'm sure it was established yesterday that Iris never went to the inner temple that night. And that person who did go was that woman. <coughs> Iris even admitted it. Now then, Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross-examination. Ha. <sighs> this just keeps getting twisty, 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 twisty. I guess we'll press on everything. Sister Iris, your testimony has changed quite a bit since yesterday. You stated yesterday that on the night of the murder, you didn't go to the inner temple. Did she now? Too bad for you. What she said yesterday doesn't mean much today. By the way, where were you when she claimed that she didn't go? Um, I... I was... It was in the Inner Temple's training air hall. A private conversation between the two of you does not constitute testimony. Now it'd be properly described as hearsay. 
Hmm, what else do you have to say, witness? I just couldn't tell him the truth at the time. Mystic Maya, she's your girlfriend, isn't she? I I didn't want you to be the one to break be the one to break it to you that I saw her commit murder. There, there, we all understand how difficult this is for you. Now then, let's continue with the testimony. What did you witness next? Well, in your well, your honor. I saw Mystic Elise strike Mystic Maya with her staff. You're saying that the victim attacked Maya. I mean Miss Fay. Yes, it was a truly frightening scene. Mystic Maya was struck hard on the head and looked like she was going to collapse. What were you doing at that time? Um... Why didn't you stop them from fighting? I I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Wright. I was... I was frightened. I couldn't move. I couldn't even speak. I was, such in I was in such a shock. That's a perfectly understandable, my dear. This doesn't sound right. I don't believe this testimony for a minute. What happened after that? We know this is hard to do. Now testify harder! <laughs> but yeah, here's the thing. Moved in to deliver a fatal strike. We have the mur true murder weapon. She moved in to deliver a fatal strike. Yes, I'm sure of it. She threw down her staff and reached into her robe for a weapon. Wait a minute! What was this weapon? It... it was... some kind of dagger. A dagger, huh? And Elise Dunham tried to stab her with this weapon. To kill Miss Fay. Yes, exactly. Huh. You look like I did after I mistakenly took a swig of Worcestershire sauce. Do you have a problem with the testimony we're hearing from your client, lawyer boy? Do I have a problem with Iris' testimony? There is one thing. Your Honor, I have a small problem with the witness's testimony. You do? But this witness is your own client. Yes, well, nevertheless. That's fine. Witness, let's add your last statement to the testimony. B yes, sir. Hey, just a moment. It's my job to say that. Listen, Gramps. I won't say it again. Final judgment will be rendered by me! Ding! Okay now, let's continue. She threw her staff away and pulled out a diggity diggity dee, my dear. You are wrong, for it was the dagger! Sister Iris, there's something strange about your version of events. Huh? Miss Dunham throwing her staff away makes no sense at all to me. But, but all you can do with a staff is hit someone. Naturally, you wouldn't know this, Sister Iris, but the victim's staff had a special feature about it. As you can see, it's a sword. Ah! If Elise Dunham really had wanted to kill Maya Fey, she wouldn't have needed to use a separate dagger. Now when she already had a beautiful blade in her hands already! Well, Sister Iris, what do you have to say? Uh, uh, I... That was an impressive bit of investigating, Trite. I never would have thought there was a sword hidden in that staff. But even so, how should I put this... A long sword is unwieldy and thus quite inefficient in close quarters combat. Maybe that's why she chose a dagger over her blade. Uh, well, that's completely wrong. Like, a long sword would be perfect for close quarters combat. Especially against an unarmed opponent. Like, there's like nothing all that different between a longsword and a dagger in terms of close quarters combat. What are you gonna do? Grab the length of the sword? And that's why it's worse than a dagger? There's less of it to grab? Anyway, the type of weapon she chose to use isn't what's important. The important thing is that she tried to kill Maya Fey. As long as there's nothing strange about that, there's no problem with her testimony. But there is something strange about this whole testimony. Unless, unless someone's got in the way of the dagger, that's true. Huh. Well, Mr. Wright, the prosecution has a point. He kind of doesn't, though. Very well, Your Honor. The defense will now present evidence to back its argument. M Mr. Wright, 
I have here another piece of evidence that shows that this testimony can't be trusted. Because Miss Elise Dunham would never attempt to take Maya's phase life. Because... I assume we present her portrait, because real name Misty Fay. Elise Dunham would never have attacked Maya Fay. How can you be so sure? Because the victim's real name was not Elise Dunham. Her real name was Misty Fay. Fay? Ah! No! N not Mystic Misty Fay! Who is this Misty Fay? Is she related to. Misty Fay is the master of the curing channeling technique. She is also. the mother of Maya Fay. Uh, are you serious? Is it really true, Mr. Wright? Was Elise Dunham actually the great Misty, Mystic Misty? There's no doubt about it. It looks like Iris had no idea. I can hardly believe it. The idea that she would try to kill her only daughter, one she hadn't seen in 17 years? Perhaps the prosecution can offer some explanation for why she would do such a thing! Gah! And Mio's mother, but she's not... Well, actually, that might hit Godot. If he's involved in it at all. That might actually hit him quite hard, like, ah, oh, shit, I hurt Mia's family. With this trying to say that Maya killed Misty. Order! Order in the court! Upon first hearing the witness's testimony, it seemed natural enough. However, in light of some facts that have just been presented, one, that victim supposedly threw away a sword during a fight. And two, that the two people battling to the death were mother and daughter, despite the facts being believable when taken on their own. When taken together, the entire story seems difficult to believe. Listen, there's nothing in this world that's impossible, except for one little thing. Yes? What is this one little impossible thing? Ah, you still don't get it. You think maybe my beans are under-roasted, but you have no idea, Gramps. Um, could you get to your point? I heard this witness's confession this morning, just as I had taken the first sip of my eighth cup of morning coffee. You're going to ruin your health, my friend. Anyway, after hearing this woman's confession, I had a detective who loves to investigate sent to the scene of the crime. And he discovered this little beauty. Is that the dagger the witness testified to seeing? Obviously, Your Honor. But do you not notice something else? Now that you mention it, if you look closely, there appears to be blood on it. But where did you find that? I didn't see that when I investigated the crime scene. Did you investigate the pine tree at the crime scene? Huh? The pine tree? This dagger was stuck in the back side of the pine tree. When the last blow was struck, ending the violent battle between the two women, this little baby was thrown in the direction of the back of the pine tree. Which means the blood on this dagger belongs to the victim, correct? Ha! Ah, were you even listening, old man? I first heard this confession this morning, just as I had taken the first sip of my 13th cup of morning coffee. Didn't you just say it was your eighth just a few minutes ago? Maybe his brain's melting. <laughs> Lies, shout it's YouTube chat. I didn't have enough time to get the blood analyzed on such short notice. In any case, the court will accept the dagger as evidence. Furthermore, I order that a blood test be performed on it immediately. And this is my sweetheart. Make sure you treat her right. Bailiff, get this piece of evidence to the crime lab for testing immediately. Found behind the pine tree in her temple garden. The blood is now being analyzed. Now then, the testimony we've just heard had numerous unbelievable aspects to it. However, after having found the very dagger the witness spoke of, I believe we can consider her testimony to be credible. But what about the sword? Unless... Unless they didn't know that it was a sword. Could it have been? He's probably going to try and end the trial. Maybe. But I'm thinking. Could it have been that 
Misty Fay got possessed by Morgan? If Morgan killed herself to become an evil spirit, maybe. We don't know if Morgan is alive. She said that it was her last wish. So it could be possible that the connection of the two sisters, as well as Morgan's intense hatred, she could have become an evil spirit and possessed Misty. And then maybe Dahlia could have been uh, possessing somebody else and they could have mocked the fight, but no, who knows? Meh, meh, meh. I don't know! Cute girls never lie. Ever. You are poisoned by one! <laughs> Fun fact, as cool as it is... Oh, wait. Oh, yep. Yeah. I, I just, my brain constantly count, uh, like second guesses, like, wait a minute, did I read the, the chat properly? Did I read all the messages? And then I still miss it sometimes. In any case, witness, if you could please testify again to this court. Um, about what, Your Honor? About the incident you saw. The battle between the two women. Yes, Your Honor. In fact, as cool as it is, there is no cases of forceful possession. Then what the hell is the point of the demon warding hood? Mystic Maya stumbled briefly after being hit over the head with the staff, but then she dodged Mystic Elisa's next attack and stole her weapon. Suddenly, Mystic Elise was the one who, on, the def on the defensive, with her back to the stone lantern. That's when Mystic Maya stabbed Mystic Elise. Mystic Elise managed to fling the knife away, but then, then she collapsed. That was a very heartbreaking story. I don't know if there were any bad feelings between them, but it had been 17 years since Mystic Misty's disappearance. Perhaps they simply didn't recognize each other anymore. Hmm, that seems reasonable. I don't know. Hmm. So I don't know. Hmm. All right, let's read everything. Miss Mouse stumbled briefly. I don't think we need to press on that. But then she dodged next and stole her weapon, which is the dagger. Suddenly, Mystic Elise was the one on the defensive with her back to the stone lantern. Understandable. I don't think we need to press. That's when Mystic Maya stabbed Elise. Mystic Elise managed to fling the knife away, but then she collapsed. Hmm. hmm. Let's look over things. Things that might be pertinent. No, no, no. Again, why is it called a demon warding hood if it doesn't actually ward off evil spirits? Stabbing back. This implies that she was stabbed in the front, so that wouldn't work. How did the writing get on the pillar? I believe Edgeworth, uh, like, supposed that she was stabbed up against it and then, like, looked down and wrote it up, and that's why it's upside down. But I don't know. But I think the autopsy report is the thing we need to present because cause of, cause of death, loss of blood from stab in the back. This implies that Elise was stabbed in the front. Bam. Something about you just isn't right today, Iris. Huh? Until now, I didn't think you were the type to make such a careless mistake. However, the testimony you just gave contains quite a few contradictions. What do you mean? What's so wrong about my testimony? According to you... Maya Fey stabbed the victim while she had her back to the stone lantern, correct? Yes, that's right. But in that case, the victim would have been stabbed in the stomach, right? Yes, I think so. But, according to the autopsy report, the cause of death was due to blood loss from a stab wound in her back. Ah. This proves that the victim was stabbed from behind, not from the front. Sister Iris, it appears another seed of your doubt has sprouted from your testimony. Ha! Ah! How is Godot going to get out of this one? What? What is the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? Ha! Huh. It's simple. 
People are like books. We've all got a front and a back, you get my drift? Um, is that all you have to say? I can also say that darkness loves to play with the human mind. Could you please knock it off? Off of the cheesy proverbs and illogical metaphors? Will we be able to say that the lanterns weren't used normally for Baba da Boss? So they would have. Because they, the lanterns, like open air lanterns, were lit that night, but weren't used for the ceremony, so they should have been light. The point is, too much of this testimony just doesn't make sense. Throwing away a useful staff, the people fighting being mother and daughter, and now she falsely claims the victim was stabbed in the stomach. Hmm. There certainly are some inconsistencies. Well, Iris, how about it? W well, it's just... If you ask me, you're just being too naive about the whole thing. What do you mean? There are 253 distinct types of bitterness in coffee. But to pick out each one requires total concentration and the use of all senses. Were you really concentrating on what was the witness was actually said? Prosecutor Gado, explain yourself! The witness was quite unambiguous about her own ambiguities when she said that the garden was dark and she couldn't clearly see. A human needs one thing to see clearly, and that is light. Light! By the way, did you know? Hazakura has a rule that on nights when an acolyte is at the inner temple training, the stone lantern in the garden must be kept lit. Hmm, I did wonder what that stone lantern was for. Well, if that's true, shouldn't the witness have been able to see the crime more clearly? Normally, yes, Your Honor. But according to the herd nun, Sister Bikini, on the night of the crime, it was impossible to light that stone lantern. Impossible? It hadn't been used in a long time, and the wick was no good. No, in other words, it had to have been nearly pitch black in the garden that night. There could have been a faint light coming from the training hall, but that's it. And I skipped on that because I'm a fool. Yes, the illuminating fact has chased all the contradictions away. If the staff was dropped, it would be difficult to see. It also explains why they didn't recognize each other. We can't see the demons that lurk in the night. That's why humans are weak. Isn't that right, Trite? N no! Order! 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 Here, Your Honor. Let me present the stone lantern into evidence. Maybe it will rekindle the flame of truth in your mind. Why is the judge just sitting there with that look on his face? What's wrong, Your Honor? Was that f Because Godot can't see red. He can't see the name written on there. What's, what's wrong, Your Honor? Was that flame too hot? The, this lantern! There's something written on it! Why, it's written in blood! Oh boy! So the judge didn't know about that yet. Written in blood? It, it says, it says Maya upside down! What the? Oh yes, that's right. After being cornered and then stabbed by Mystic Maya, Mystic Elise didn't fall down right away. She must have been riding that on the stone lantern behind her with the blood that was draining out of her body. But isn't it like, well, didn't we note last time that there was the lack of blood was because of, like, plugging the wound? But then I guess they'll say, well, actually, it was because the body was moved, I suppose. Critical. This is critical. Hmm, it certainly looks that way. Oh! Oh, I think you just gave me the hint. I think you just gave me the hint. Is... Is the reason Godot is doing this? Is because he thinks Iris is... Delia? Because he can't see red! He can't see that she's not a fucking redhead! Oh! Gado, you idiot! You fool! 
that's my new headcanon until it is proven wrong or right. <laughs> hang on, hang on just a minute. What are you all talking about? What do you mean, what are we all talking about? We're talking about the message written in blood. <laughs> Nonsense. This lantern is as clean as a whistle. C could it be? He can't see the bloody writing at all? Now that I think of it, he did say something to me yesterday. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. I can't believe it. I can't believe that the hair color is actually an important goddamn thing. Godot, you moron. So that's what he meant by that. In any case, this is obviously an important clue. We now know that in the crime scene was dark, and that the victim scrawled this message on the stone lantern. Well, Mr. Godot, anything further? M mr Godot? Uh, um... Okay, then. Let's move on. Godot is literally shaking, and somehow I don't think it's from caffeine overdose. <laughs> Critical fact. Like, and it makes sense because he didn't see, like, the red stains in previous, in a previous case. And now he didn't see that. It's just like, and it just hit me that Godot or Armando were poisoned by Dahlia. And so he only recognizes them as, by their face. He probably doesn't even know that there was twins. I believe it has now been established that Miss Dunham was killed by Maya Faye. But that's just wrong. Now it's time to turn our attention to you. Yes, sir. After the victim died, you did something, didn't you? The slip-up is critical in this case. Interesting. Let's hear it. We're all ears. After Mystic Elise died, I called out to Mystic Maya. I thought it was my duty to protect the future master of the curing tradition, so I removed the body from the inner temple by myself. I dragged it behind me all the way across Dusky Bridge. Then I used the snowmobile to carry it back to the Huzakur Temple. THROW IT OFF THE BRIDGE! Why didn't you just throw it off the bridge? Boom, body gone. I used a shi chi shi to alter the way the wound looked. So you moved the body? Yes. I was raised at Hasakura Temple. I owe a great deal of thanks to the Fae Clan. But even so, I never imagined that Elise Dunham was actually Misty Fae. I've, I've committed a terrible sin. Hmm, a terrible trick of fate. I believe you're looking for Twist of Fate, Your Honor. I intended to return to the Inner Temple after taking care of the body, but... You were spotted by the head nun, correct? Yes, that's why I couldn't go back. Your story makes sense, I suppose. Mr. Wright, go ahead with your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Because Dahlia didn't die from the river. No, no, I mean, why don't, why didn't, like, ba ba ba, why didn't Iris throw Misty Faye's body into the river? Because we presume that, because we know that she died from blood loss. So, why wouldn't you throw the body into the river? Oh yeah, but that's another thing, like, yeah. But wait a minute, actually. There is still the thing of somebody crossing the bridge and then jumping into the river. I do not know. I do not know. After Mr. Galise died, I called out to... Oh, yeah, I forgot. We already went through this. Hmm, now I just need to find the actual thing. Hmm. So I moved the body. I dragged it behind me all the way. Then I used the snowmobile to carry it back. I think that'll be important. Misty was meant to be found, and you throw it down from the inner temple, it'll land on the rocks below. That's true, but at the same time, she could have easily crossed the bridge with the body and threw it off from the other side. So, but who knows? But at the same time, Misty was meant to be found. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, because I guess so, because they needed Misty Fay to be confirmed dead so that whatever Morgan's plan was could go into a fruition because finally we know that Diddly D is dead. But then again, there was isn't there also the thing of like, oh, Misty Fay has been gone for so long, we presume her dead. I don't know. There's an issue net thinking. Think about the incident that led to the uh, led to the bridge drawing, the lightning. Hmm. It also depends on like when the murder was, because the lightning happened at 10:45. Hmm. Maybe. Oh yeah, and the snow stopped falling. Wait a minute. Snow seven to to approximately 10.50. Lightning struck Dusky Bridge at 10.45. Although I suppose she could have gotten across by 10.45, but who knows, we'll get to that. So blood tracks, too. Blood tracks. They needed to cover up blood tracks. The snowmobile? I'll definitely keep that in mind. And Misty died between 10 and 11. I believe it's said. Yeah, 10 and 11, cause of blood, blood loss. Body fell 10 feet. Hmm. I don't know. I'm sure we'll get more information to Probat. The snowmobile? I knew that would show up sooner or later. Yes, I had the key. I used the snowmobile to travel from Hazakura Temple to Dusky Bridge. This is the part that was in question the other day. Should I ask for more details? Hmm. Should we ask about... I think the tracks. I think the tracks will be important. If you really did move her body by snowmobile, then there should be tracks left in the snow, right? Well, yes. Naturally, you would expect tracks. This picture was presented at yesterday's trial. And these tracks... Are these the tracks from that ride? Yes. I think they are. But... I can only see one set of tracks here. I don't see what's so strange about that. Snow is still falling when I left Hazakura Temple. I see. Snow is still falling, huh? And then when I found the murder, when the murder took place, it already stopped. That's why there are still such fresh-looking tracks. Hmm. How about it, Mr. Wright? What do you think of this testimony? Like, it has to be important, right? I say it's very important. When the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. That doesn't make sense if you stack up the evidence against other evidence. Because the 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 ba 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 the sphere. Oh my god. So that blood. So but how did it And how did the staff get there? And how did the sphere get on the opposite side of Dusky Bridge? That doesn't make sense if you stack it up against other evidence. Your Honor, I'd like the statement Iris just made to be added to the testimony. But, but does it have something to do with the case? All will be made clear if you allow her statement to be added to the record. Ha! Huh. This should be fun. Larry knows. Larry knows all. Phew, let's get the snow business cleared up, shall we? Yes, sir. By the time the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. Hmm. My instincts want me to use the crystal sphere because the blood could only have gotten onto it if uh, after the murder took place, and it was half covered. But the weather report. Let's double check it. 7 to approximately 10. But, oh, there we go. Yeah, th yeah, yeah. Snow stopped at 10.50. The lightning struck the bridge at 10.45. So for the... Although you get... Da, 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 da. Hmm. That has to be important. I feel this is more conclusive. By the time the murder took place... The... Do I? Do I? Uh, da, 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 da. Hmm. I... Hmm. Oh, oh I, I thought there was more. Meh. 
I don't want to believe it, but I don't think my logic is failing me. Iris is trying to pin the murder on Maya. But why would she want to do that? There's only one reason I can think of. Okay. After Mel... Da -da -da -da. Hmm. Let's see. Da-da, called out, not that, so I moved. I dragged the body all the way. Hmm. I'm trying to think through. By the time the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. Then I used to carry it. Then I used the snowmobile to carry it back. Hmm. I'm trying to think of which one to present, cause, huh? Because right now, hmm, or could it be, hmm, because let's see, I believe the weather data is important because the lightning struck the bridge at 1045. Meanwhile, the snow was still falling five, uh, yeah, five minutes after that, while she claims that the snow, hmm, I think I'm talking myself out of things. But at the same time, if the snow stopped falling before the murder, then the lightning would have already struck the bridge. Then I suppose I go to this one, I believe. I haven't saved in a while and I'm paranoid. I, I don't want another obscure glitch to come in and eat my, my day. I'm gonna say weather data for this because I think it should work. Nope, the music didn't stop. Darn you. But it makes perfect sense. Darn you. Then what else? What else could that possibly... Because the weather data has to be it. Maybe it's the snowmobile one? Because... Because it has to be the weather data. That is the important thing, because if... Do I? But do I, though? I'm gonna give it a shot. Huh. I could have sworn. Hmm. Because my thought process is... The weather data clearly states that the bridge was on fire by... Or, like, got struck by the time the murder took place. Which means that things should be wonky. Except there should be blood on the snowmobile from the picture. That's also true. If it was bleeding out. Hmm. But I don't think that I could reasonably be able to present that. <sighs> Maybe I need to press. There have been a lot of contradictions in your testimony. This time, are you sure it's all true? When the murder happened, the snow had already stopped. According to you, that's why the snowmobile tracks were so clear. That's right, I'm certain of it. I think I've trapped her this time. I see how you think snow, huh? What is going on here? If the snow really had stopped by the time of the murder, it means there's a bigger hole in her story than the movie The Grid Revelations. Ha! Huh. Well then, Mr. Trap, perhaps you'd like to share your theory with us. Let's see what's up your sleeve, or rather, at the end of your index finger. I don't want to believe it, but I think my logic is failing. Hmm. There's only one reason I can think of. Yeah, Morgan. And also the betrayal of her sister. Hmm. I don't know. Because... I tracked it behind me all the way across Dusky Bridge. Which, I feel like the weather data should, like, prove it, right? But we already did the weather data. Hmm. 
because she dragged the body behind her all the way across Dusky Bridge. And yeah, there should be blood on the, like, snowmobile. Hmm. But at the same time, the bridge picture. Maybe? Let's see. No, it's just a horrible sketch of what he saw that night. It doesn't explicitly connect. Because the thing I think here is... Like, my brain is still saying the freaking weather data because it's the only thing that's stuck in my head. Because snow stopped falling by the time, but I don't know. I don't know. My brain is on fire. Because it feels like... Hmm. Because... The two that I think stick out is, by the time the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. Like, this is an important thing that was added to the official record. But the, I dragged it behind me all the way across Dusky Bridge, my brain leaps to the weather data because if it stopped falling, as the record states, she says the murder happened after the snow stopped falling, then we can say, then it's impossible for you have, to have drugged the body across the bridge because of the lightning strike. But I did it. Okay, I'm gonna double save, because now that that glitch happened, I'm kind of paranoid. Because, like, I feel this has to be it. Like, my gut is telling me. Weather data of this. <laughs> I did this before! Why did it work before? Why? I am very, very enraged. Uh, two time? You two time me? Mm -hmm. No, the snowmobile shouldn't have shown two tracks because we've already covered that in the last day where she left when it was snowing and the snow stopped on the way back. But, yeah, I know that I put the weather report to that statement and then the game fucked me. It fucked me again. Ah, oh, agony in my soul. Ah. Oh. You claim that the snow had already stopped when the murder occurred. But I'm sorry, Iris. That just isn't possible. I'm getting a headache. Remember to drink water while you're having a rage. What? It's not that she said the snow stopped after the murder, and she got the snowmobile. Yeah, that's what she's what's happening here. Or because she she was all she used the snowmobile to get to the inner temple, and it was stuck on the one side of the bridge. She crossed the bridge, saw the murder, dragged the body across the bridge, put it on the wheelie dealie, and that's also probably where the. Uh, the amethyst sphere fell off. The crystal sphere fell on the, like, uh, main side of Dusky Bridge because she was putting the body on the snowmobile. And for what it's worth, this one should have been patched. <laughs> this is the weather data from the night of the murder. According to this, the snow didn't stop until 1050. But you couldn't have crossed Dusky Bridge at that time. But why do you say that? Because five minutes before the snow stopped, Dusky Bridge was struck by lightning and had caught on fire. What did you say? The, the bridge? It was on fire? You don't mean to say you didn't know about it. You're incorrect about the orb. I am? But the orb obviously was used in some kind of confrontation. And it kind of lines up with what Iris says. Where the staff was used to smack... Somebody up the head, and that's why the blood's there. Then Iris took the staff and the body with her, but the 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 sphere fell on the like uh, the main side of Dusky Bridge, and Larry found it half covered in snow, which actually should also prove that the murder didn't take place after the snow stopped falling, 
because a part of Misty Fay's staff was found half covered in snow. Yep, it's going to hit the four hour mark because I thought we could make it, but the game's being mean to me. What? But it can't, it can't be. It looks like you still haven't figured it out. No matter how hard you try to deceive or conceal the truth, you can't pull the wool over the eyes of a real defense attorney. No! Order! Order! And I can't really stop now, because if we stop now, we only have, like, an hour of gameplay left, I, I estimate. The bridge was already on fire when the incident took place. That's right, the inner temple was already totally cut off from the outside world. There's no way you could have crossed the bridge, body or no body. Uh, ah. Witness, even my patience has its limits. Any further line and I will find you in contempt of court. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Uh, Except the orb fell 10 feet? No. The body fell 10 feet after death. And the orb was found on the main side of Dusky Bridge. Like, let's see. I wish we had the uh, temple map. Like, uh, that purple sphere that is there for some reason? I don't know why it's there. But that purple sphere is kind of the location where Larry found the the orb. I believe. Because it was half covered in snow. The only person here that is truly contemptible is you. Old man. Me? How dare you? Whether this witness lied or not doesn't mean squat right now. Squat? The important thing now is to find the truth. Isn't that right? The body would have had the staff, no. And the body did have the staff. Because if we uh, go to the crime scene photo, uh, right behind the body to the left, kind of down left is where the staff was found at the crime scene. The sphere was broken off and found half buried in snow. The body was found after the, the body was placed after the snow stopped falling, and that's how we know that things were wonky last time. Because the sphere was still half covered in snow, which means that something happened about the transporting and stuff, and the timing of snow falling. But yes, of course, but... Whether it was snowing or not snowing, or whether the bridge was burning or not, there are two facts that can't be disputed. First, the body of Elise Dunham was discovered in the Hazakura Temple courtyard. And second, the head nun, Sister Bikini, Witnessed Iris desecrating Eilis Dunham's body. He makes a good point on both accounts. So how did the body fall 10 feet with the staff and not the orb? That's my thinking is that... That is the part. Like, when the body fell 10 feet is important. But it, it depends. Because I don't think it fell 10 feet into the river. Because... Things, things, things. But that's right, I'm not lying. What are you claiming this time? I wasn't myself at the Ta'o last night, so my memory is still somewhat hazy. You have stood at that witness stand and testified this entire time. Are you telling us now that your memory of that night is hazy? I'm sure we'll find more information about the weirdness of everything and how everything ended up where they are. It is only human to err. If you're so perfect trite, maybe you can explain this to the court. But what is it? When the murder had happened, the bridge had already burnt down. But somehow the body had traveled across the bridge and was found in the temple courtyard. Perhaps you have some kind of perfect explanation for this little magic trick. Uh, well, not exactly, no. I know there must be some other way she got across that burnout bridge, but unless I can somehow demonstrate it, we'll never know the truth. It looks like the defense is not prepared to offer a suitable explanation. You see what I mean? In other words, you're in no position to suggest that this lady's testimony isn't the truth. Ah! <laughs> She's gonna claim. Well, let's see. 
All right, then, witness, let's hear your testimony once more. About what, Your Honor? You've admitted that you moved the victim's body. Nevertheless, your prior testimony contained a rather large inconsistency. Please add an explanation for t that to your testimony. Yes, Your Honor. Will this be her final testimony? Crazy idea time! My ideas are always crazy. Hmm. Other than walking over the bridge, there's no way to move the body. So I must have just gotten confused, I guess. Was the snow still falling, or had it stopped? Does it really matter that much? Or are you saying that there is a way to cross a burning bridge? Hmm. Huh. So it was just a misunderstanding, I see. This is a photo of Dusky Bridge after it burned down from the lightning blast. It was taken on the morning after the incident. The last statement. Think about it. We will. It certainly was burned to a crisp. And one of the suspension wires even snapped. It's amazing the whole bridge didn't fall. Hmm. Clearly it would be impossible to carry a corpse across the bridge in such a condition. <sighs> Unless I do something to discredit this testimony, it's going to be deemed as the truth. And Maya will be accused of murder. Isn't that rope hanging down? I was... I did notice that. Trite, I'm only gonna say it one more time. It is only human to err. And... Only humans can spot the errors of our ways. Well, if you care so much about humans being okay to err, why are you getting on my ass? The more sense he makes, the less sense he makes. All right, Mr. Wright, please begin your final cross-examination. Hmm, let's see. Other than walking, there's no way to move the body, so I must have just gotten confused. With snow, does it matter? Or are you saying that there is another way to cross the burning bridge? I mean, I guess I could throw out the Larry sketch. Let me quickly see, because the... Let me quickly, quickly look at that new uh, photo that was added. Hmm. Hmm. He's trying to say that Iris is lying. He's a weird man, so I don't know. Huh. And it could be upside down, like I said. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna take a save, and I guess I'm gonna yabba dabba do it. I'm gonna present it because it has to be important. Larry has to make an impact somehow. If it was originally on one side, wouldn't you tie Elise to the, uh, the staff with the wire and trebuchet her over? That would never work. <laughs> if it is upside down, like, because if we look here, I wish we had, like, a, hmm, like a before and after photo of the bridge, rather than just the after. Because the one thing that I'm thinking is, I keep thinking, I wait, wait is that you see those big wires underneath the bridge? Like, I'm thinking that Larry saw them and that's why they're drawn this way, those two taut wires. They're drawn that way because they're meant to be the suspension wires, but they're seen from below. So, um, yabba dabba doo, you flew but not flew. Look at this photo sketch. A dead body flying over a burning bridge. I wouldn't exactly rule out the possibility. What? Ha! Huh. You're saying it's possible? Don't make me laugh. The only thing that's possible about your claim is that it's been pulled out of thin air. I don't know about that. In any case, we have a witness who did see it happen. Too preposterous! Who is it? Who is the witness? I can't chicken out here. I've got to keep on going. 
Miss Elise Dunham's brilliant and highly gifted apprentice. Laurie's Dunham! Brilliant? Highly gifted? Apprentice? Remember what he said in his testimony? That night he was at the Mountain Shack Heaven Heavenly Hall. And that's when he witnessed the event upside down. I think you've all seen this sketch before. It's the exact drawing of what he witnessed that night. Are you serious? Today's not April Fool's Day, is it? Mr. Wright, are you seriously claiming that the victim flew through the air? And you're using this pathetic scribble to support your argument? Uh-oh. The judge looks like he's about to blow a gasket. Ha! Huh. Well, Trite, there's nowhere for you to hide now. Other than looking like it was drawn by a six-year-old, does this sketch prove anything? Yes, I'm pretty sure it does, and I'm going to prove it. Listen, I know your tricks. You're trying to turn this whole thing upside down. <laughs> that is... What is your purpose, Gato? What is your reasoning for helping me? Like, either he is intentionally saying, it's upside down, trat, you idiot, or he just gave it to me by accident. If you're so eager to turn this case upside down, why not start with this sketch? He really is. <laughs> it has to be in intentional at that point. Why did Godot say that? All right, then let's hear the defense's theory. What exactly is this sketch trying to show? I don't think old Whiskerface is going to forgive any more mistakes. All right, Phoenix, so carefully, uh, look at carefully over. The sketch drawn by Larice Dunham is... Exactly what happened. I do believe it says. Hmm. Wait. Hmm. Hmm. Because it's either exactly what happened or a complete contradiction. Because... Then again, I am saying that it's upside down, so a complete contradiction. It's literally upside down. It's the reverse of what happens. Uh, yeah, da, da. Something is obviously funny about this sketch. I'm no art critic, but even I can see that! No, no, that's not what I mean, Your Honor. Larice Dunham stated over and over that this sketch was exactly as he saw it. However, if we're to believe his testimony, then the sketch contradicts reality as we know it. It contradicts reality? Ha! Ah, this is getting interesting. Looks like you're back to that finger-pointing thing again. Okay, Trite, so what exactly contradicts reality as we know it? So I'm going to think that... I'm going to say it's the wires, because like I said, the wires... Like, reach out to the bottom of various things, not up into the sky. So... Bah? It's this wire connected to the bridge! The wire? Huh. Is that the thing that contradicts reality? It is indeed. Then show us the reality it supposedly conflicts with. Show us something that will point out how the sketch contradicts reality. I'm going to say... Like the, the dusky bridge thing. That's the, the only thing. Because now we can see that the wires are... hibbity babbity boo My dude. That's a photo of dusky bridge, correct? Yes. Now compare the sketch and the photo for a minute. In the sketch, the wires appear to be above the guard wires. But on the actual Dusky Bridge... Jumping Jehoshaphat! The wires are below the guard wires! What?! My dude, you are literally leading me here. Order! 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 This sketch is somewhat different than what's depicted in the photo. However... It is, isn't it likely that the artist just saw it wrong? Or perhaps he just drew it wrong. Either way, it sounds like you're just wrong. With someone like Loris, I admit a mistake is definitely possible. But then that begs the question. Why did he make a mistake? What was the reason? Are you saying you know the answer to that? Listen, think back, all right? Remember what Loris was doing when he witnessed this event. He was at Heavenly Hall waiting for a lover that was never going to come. He waited and waited and finally he laid down. But then, 
Lightning shoots from the sky and sets the bridge on flame. Now ponder what sort of position Maurice must have been in at the time. He was lying on his back, which is why he remembered the scene the way he did. He, he was lying on his back? I can't see how it relates. But it does, Your Honor. That is the reason why the wires in the sketch go up instead of down. Ah! Ugh. No way. Larice Dunham witnessed the event while he was lying on his back face up. In other words, the scene that he saw was actually upside down! Suvin, this sketch should actually... I think you finally get it, Your Honor. The correct way to view Larice Dunham's sketch is like this. This is how it should actually look. The victim's body wasn't flying above the bridge. It was actually swinging below. That's right, just like a pendulum. But delicious! Order, order, order! Of all the things to say, a pendulum? The bridge was burning to a crisp. There was no way to get across. But if the body had been found at the inner temple, it would have caused problems. This is where the criminal decided to take a gamble. They used the burning bridge to get the body across the other way. And a pendulum was the only way to get it done. Let's think about this for a minute, shall we? Dusky Bridge is about 20 yards long. Which means it's about the... It's about that far from the inner temple to the opposite cliff. Yes, that sounds about right. In order to cover that distance with a pendulum, you'd need a rope at least 10 yards long. To get a rope that long, you'd have to plan ahead. The lightning strike that night can only have been an accident, so it doesn't make sense that the culprit would have prepared the rope beforehand. So then, they didn't have to get the rope ready. The rope was already right in front of them. What? I'm saying that it was just a matter of using what was already there. In that case, Mr. Wright, please give us an explanation to support your theory. What makes you think the criminal had the rope on the hand to create the pendulum? Is it the Dusky Bridge photo again? Because the rope that's hanging below. And the meaning of this is? If you want to know where the rope came from, it's hanging right there in front of your glorious beard. Oh! This, this is one of the wires from the bridge. Also, Godot didn't seem to expect Phoenix getting this. He's pushing rather hard, don't you think? He is a silly weird man. I don't, I don't get it. When the lightning struck the bridge and set it on fire, one of the suspension wires came loose from the anchor. The criminal didn't have any time to waste, so they tied the wire around Elise Dunham's body. That's freaking hilarious. I don't see how that would actually work in reality, but whatever. Because there was simply no other way to move the body. Then how did they get across? Huh. <laughs> he just panic drinks his, all his coffee. His throat is scalded. Mr. Godot? Hmm. It seems that Mr. Godot is more focused on his coffee than answering my question. It seems that the odds of a rope being readily available were very high. So I suppose that it's not an impossibility after all. He's pushing to have Maya cleared. But who is he claiming to be the culprit? Who he thinks is Delilah, D Delia, whatever her name is. I swear it was Delilah, and then it changed to Delia, and I hate it. Possible or impossible, that's not the question we need to ask. There's only one question. Did that really happen? Trat, I wonder if you can prove what happened to us. Do you have any actual evidence that the body was swung over like a pendulum? Wouldn't it be the autopsy report? Because... If it was exactly 10 meters long, or like 10 feet long, then that would explain. Before I present my evidence, let me review what we know so far. According to this photo of the, one of the wires snapped. Looking at the map, we can see it's one of that was in front of the inner temple. So then that was the spot where the criminal... Yes, precisely. Now let us consider the body's movement by looking at the overhead map again. If the body was pushed from this point here, 
it would drop on the opposite bank at approximately this point. Did you say drop? Well, they must have failed to catch the body on the other bank. What? What makes you think something like that happened? Because I have evidence that suggests her body dropped some distance. What kind of evidence? Take a look at this autopsy report. It says here that her body fell about 10 feet after her death. 10 feet, huh? That's most likely the height difference between the two sides. The body swung over swung due to the forward momentum, but then came loose and fell about 10 feet. So I basically got lucky there. And then as a result of the landing impact, this crystal sphere was knocked loose. That's... Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yes, this bloodstained amethyst crystal. It's the one that came off of Miss Elise Dunham's staff. And even more important is the place where this crystal sphere was found. I indeed. I believe it's already marked on this overhead map. Ah, oh, so it literally was what I pointed out. The crystal was found. The crystal was found. Ah! Precisely, Your Honor. In the very spot where the pendulum would arrive if given the right amount of speed. This explains your theory quite well, Mr. Wright. You have provided us with a way the body could have been moved that night. An impressive deduction, Mr. Wright. Most impressive. I, I got hit in the head. I wonder what that was. But Mr. Wright! I thought this cold coffee might help cool you down. But what is the meaning of this, Mr. Cadu? That was a dark and bitter guess that you made, Trite. But you forgot about one thing. Oh, and what would that be? The aroma. Huh? A coffee's most reliable accomplice is its deep and profound aroma. Um, the rest of the court doesn't speak Coffinese. Can you elaborate a bit more? If the criminal had sent the body to the other side like you said, then naturally there must have been an accomplice lying in wait to catch it. An accomplice? The criminal wasn't able to cross Dusky Bridge. So who collected the body? So I'm going to assume that what happened is kind of similar, but it was Dahlia who sent the body flying over, and then Iris caught the body and ran away with it. Because she was probably waiting to uh, carry the body on the snowmobile. What do you have to say about that, Trite? Mr. Cadeau is correct. This can't be the work of a single person. Well, Mr. Wright, you know what you must do. Yes, Your Honor. The body couldn't have made it to Hazakura Temple without an accomplice. I counted seven mugs that have been slit to Godot. He is a coffee-holic. Very well, then, if you please, Mr. Wright. Who was the person that received the body? Hmm. Well, if it's the person that received the body, then it has to be Iris. It can only be you. Sister Iris. Huh? Ah! B but I... I don't see why you're so surprised. The only way to transport the body from Dusky Bridge is by snowmobile. But with her bad back, Sister Bikini could never pick up a body like that. You're the only one that could have managed it. Trat, were you even listening to the witness's testimony? On the night of the crime, this little cutie pie was on the... But also, like... It's obvious that it couldn't have been Iris on the other side because Iris was on the normal side. Iris couldn't have sent the body swinging because she was with us the entire time. Was on cleanup duty in the inner temple garden after the mother-daughter bloodbath. I haven't forgotten, but I have you, Mr. Godot. This witness was also seen at Hazakura Temple, desecrating the corpse of the victim. Hmm... Strange indeed. It's almost as if, on that night, the defendant was in two different places at the same time. Sister Iris, let me ask you something. Why didn't you mention it when you first gave your testimony? Mention what? The pendulum, of course. Using this sketch drawn by an eyewitness, I have, an establi I have established how the body was moved using the burnt-out bridge, which means it's now a fact that this occurred something... Uh, occur something occurred. Uh, my brain is melting. Uh, there's a new third. Uh, there's a slight problem. There's a new third party. 
It always is in these games. Which means it's now a fact that this occurred. Something you should have already known. N no I, I had no idea. I, I didn't know anything about a pendulum. But the body couldn't have been passed along to the other side without your help. So you should have known about it. In fact, it'd be impossible for you to be clueless about this whole thing. Unless you're not really Iris to begin with. But she is Iris. What? How can you say that, Mr. Wright? What? What kind of nonsense is this? You, you're saying this witness isn't Iris of Hazakura Temple? Uh, are you serious, Trite? You, you mean... Th this woman is... Am I going to push Godot? You actually have all but confirmation of who did this. There's no one besides Iris that could have received the corpse that night. Now I get it. Now I know why I've been sick to my stomach this whole trial. Why her whole demeanor changed so suddenly from yesterday. And why she's trying to pin this murder on Maya. The woman that's standing there at the witness stand. Her real name is... The only thing that we can present is Dahlia Hawthorne. I don't understand it exactly fully, but it has to be. I never thought I'd have to utter your name again, let alone see you. It's been a long time, Dahlia Hawthorne. Hawthorne? Sister Iris had a twin sister. And you're looking at her, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. That name rings something, some bells. Distant bells, but bells nonetheless. <sighs> it's just your imagination, Gramps. This file contains all the relevant data about Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, yes, I remember now. That case, five years ago. My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I just want to say, it's an honor for you, for me to be in your presence. Physical bodies can change, but hair color change is too drastic. Yep. The honor is all mine. But no, the honor is all mine. It's been a while since we've done pain. But according to this, Dahlia Hawthorne is already dead. It says her execution was carried out last month. So what? Death has no meaning in this courtroom! What?! Order! 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 Wait a moment! How can you- My sister- She's already dead! What kind of- You of all people should already understand, after all. The blood of the master of the curing channeling technique flows within that body. The curing channeling technique? Now where have I heard that? That's right. You're not Dahlia Hawthorne or yourself. You're the spirit of Dahlia currently inhabiting the body of a spirit medium. What an exciting story. Exciting, but quite impossible. You're asking us to buy that Dahlia Hawthorne just happened to be channeled by someone on the very night of the murder to a temple where her twin sister Iris was? Well, if you're gonna put things that way, then yes. We're supposed to believe a coincidence like that just happens? Naturally, it was no coincidence. The whole thing was part of a plan from the very beginning. It's all written right here in these instructions. Uh, what is that? These instructions were written by your mother, Morgan Fay. And part of the plan called for Dahlia Hawthorne to be channeled. That night, there were two irises at Hazakura Temple. T two of them. Even the time of the channeling was planned out. As soon as you hear the lights out bell, in other words, 10 p.m., however, Iris was seen before dinner time. That means the Iris that was at dinner was the real Iris. And the Iris who gave me the hood in the ma main hall was also the real Iris. Meaning that the Iris sister bikini saw at the inner temple was someone else dressed as her, namely one Dahlia Hawthorne. Do you even know what you're saying, Trite? 
this whole channeling the spirit of Dahlia Hawthorne business. Yes, it's true that you found plants that talk about it. However, there's one thing that's perfectly clear. The witness currently standing in the witness... Uh, standing in the witness stand is the real Iris. What? What? Calm down and remember what you know about the night of the crime. After meeting Sister Bikini, the Dahlia Hawthorne that had been channeled would have been stranded at the Inner Temple due to the lightning strike. Yeah, what I was saying. I love that they just show this again. Whee! It was later than the body it was moved by Pendulum. That's right. Naturally, that would mean that the iris that received the body was the real iris. Are you with me so far? Yes. After being notified of what happened, the police came to Hazakura Temple's main hall. Then they found Iris in her room and arrested her. And ever since, she's been under police supervision at the detention center. Yes, I suppose. Can't deny any of that. Whew, thank goodness. Looks like he's finally convinced. But something still seems off. Way off. I'm still not convinced that the Iris here is the same one from the other night. Huh. I suppose you're about to say something really ridiculous. Oh, but there was a time where she wasn't under supervision. Like the real Iris and the spirit of Dahlia somehow switched places. S switched places? <laughs> to be perfectly honest, there are still quite a few things I don't understand. But I do know that unless we confirm the witness's identity, we can't continue with this trial. Iris doesn't have the spiritual power needed to channel Dahlia, which means they must have switched places somewhere. Well, Mr. Wright, since the time she was arrested to Hazakura Temple, have there been any chances for Iris to switch places with Dahlia Hawthorne? There was one. That's Maya's body. Right? Because, and that's why there were five extra diddly Ds. Because Maya channeling Dahlia came out. Or something like that. Something around that. The switch happened then. Your Honor, I think there might have been one chance. Oh, explain yourself. Yesterday, for a few minutes, Iris's whereabouts were unknown. Unknown? What do you mean? What I mean is, there was a span of time in which Iris was able to move about freely, unsupervised. Well, who was it? Who would give a murder suspect time to move about freely like that? I'm sorry. I know you didn't mean to. It wasn't your fault. The person who gave Iris the chance to freely move about was Miles Edgeworth. Th this is Mr. Edgeworth, isn't it? Your Honor, there was a fairly large earthquake yesterday, was there not? An earthquake? Hmm. A earthquake! Oh my goodness, the inner temple! This kind of tremor might... How could I have... She fled. She escaped. He went to the inner temple right away. And it's true. Iris was already there. However, they had already switched places by that point. When I arrived at the training hall, I was met by none other than Dahlia Hawthorne. That's quite enough already, Mr. Wright. Now see here. No judge in his right mind would consider the idea of spirit channeling to be... Be quiet. There she is. It's been a long time, Mr. Judge. <gasps> the, that voice. I guess I'll have to ask again. Name an occupation. <laughs> Upon meeting a beautiful lady, always ask for her name and profession. That's one of my rules. Dahlia Hawthorne, and my current profession, permanently retired. Ha! Huh. So you're not going to bother hiding your identity anymore, huh? Why should I? After all, I'm dead. There's really nothing you can do to punish me. But what is going on here? Dahlia Hawthorne. 
I never thought we'd meet again, and I never thought we'd meet like this. But this time, I'll end it. For her and for myself. And I'm gonna keep on trucking, because I this is I this has to be the climactic finale. And I think we're nearing the end. The end of this case, the end of this trial, the end of Ace Attorney 3. <laughs> There's one way for Dahlia to be punished. Torture! What must the, the, the court, like, viewers be thinking? Now then, let's continue where we left off, shall we? Well, witness? Yes, how can I help you, Mr. Judge? Well, it seems that if we're to learn the truth, we'll need to hear your testimony. I have no problem with that. But when you've seen what I have, sometimes the truth is better left unknown. In any case, let's hear your testimony. Tell us about the plan that was carried out that night. The whole plan began with my death. A stupid plan hatched by Morgan Fay to install her own daughter as the next master. But for it to work, Maya Fay would first have to die. The idea was for me to kill Maya and then have the blame pinned on Iris. The plan went wrong, but it seems to have succeeded anyway. Notice whenever Misty is mentioned, there's a seal on the ground? Actually, there is. Or at least uh, that one main picture of Misty. Wait a minute! Did you just say the plan was to kill Maya Fey? Yes, you have a problem with that. Don't give us that nonsense! There's no way that- Watch yourself, trite! If you've got a problem, solve it during cross-examination. That's one of my rules. Mr. Godot is correct. And by the way, that's one of my rules as well. To kill Maya? Could it be true? <laughs> the whole plan began with my death. We'll press on everything, I think. You were executed last month, correct? Yes, I was hanged. Huh. It wasn't exactly pleasant. How did you manage to discuss the plan? When did you talk with Morgan Fay? Last year, she was transferred to the same detention center as me. Since I was on death row and she was my mother, it was actually pretty easy to meet with her. I see. So that's when you discussed the plan. Ha! Ah, are you crazy? At first that woman was planning to kill me as well, even though I'm her own daughter. All to make Pearl Fay the master of curing? She's a cold, twisted woman. She thought she could finally regain her lost honor. The honor she lost when her younger sister Misty took her place as the master. Ever since that day, she's been working on this plan. Hmm, a plan, huh? You're talking about Pearl Fay, is that correct? Yes, though at first she had high hopes for the two of us. You and your twin sister Iris. That's correct. Fortunately, neither of us had much spiritual power. That's why we were abandoned by her along with our father. So he didn't take... So that, hmm, that ex kind of explains it. Abandoned? The only person I ever really cared about in life was myself. My sister was a nuisance, so I convinced my father to leave her at an old temple. You mean Iris? Yes, my father remarried a woman who also had a daughter. The less children you have, the, less, the more money there is to go around, right? And on top of that, my father has absolutely no interest in children in general. How horrible. The really horrible one was that woman, that bitter, vengeful woman. It was her stubbornness that gave birth to that child, Pearl Fay. She was born with an abundance of spiritual power, unfortunately for her. Morgan Fay heaped all of it into of her broken hopes and dreams onto that poor child's back. All because of her pathetic dreams of having her bloodline become the main family. Kind of ironic that... Misty F uh, Morgan had two older sis uh, daughters and went with the youngest daughter to make Master Curing when that's basically what happened to her. The younger daughter of more power got, uh, got it instead of the eldest sister. Maya would have to die, but why? For our bloodline to succeed as the main family, thus making Pearl the new master... The remaining descendants of the current master had to be taken care of. But Pearls would never agree to a plan like that. 
She adores Maya. How sad. You still don't get it, do you? What Pearl wanted had nothing to do with it. Morgan didn't care one bit about Pearl. The only thing she cared about was the position of the master, that's all. Th that's ridiculous! She was willing to sacrifice anything and anyone to achieve her goal. The life of her daughter, and naturally the life of Maya Fey as well. How could anyone do that? The idea was for me to kill Maya and then put the blame on Iris. Y you You're going to kill Maya?! Pearl didn't need to know anything about it. All she had to do was follow the instructions in the letter and channel me. Then I would have simply used her body and finished the job. In any case... Oh, I think I get it. Ish. Maybe? I think... Misty Fay saw what was going to happen, so she channeled Dahlia. To, like, mix things up. And that's when Maya fought back, maybe? Five-hour mark is close, yeah, but I think we're nearing the end. I'm already dead, and there's nothing any of you can do to me. She believes she's in Pearl's body. She doesn't know. She only knew the plan. She doesn't know who actually summoned her. Oh, interesting. Gah. So the plan was to blame the crime on your younger twin, on Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple. So maybe I was wrong, and Godot didn't uh, ex thought, didn't think that Iris was Dahlia. Hmm. She and I look absolutely identical. No one can tell us apart. If someone were to witness me killing Maya, naturally they would think it was Iris that had done it. And the witness in this case was the head nun, Sister Bikini. I never would have guessed she was going to return to Hazakura Temple that night, but she wound up seeing Iris' crime anyway. But why did you want to pin the murder on Iris in the first place? She's your twin sister, isn't she? Twin sister? Don't make me laugh. She's nothing but a backstabber. I couldn't care less about her. Backstabber? You just don't understand. You never will. Anyway... The plan went wrong, but it seems to have succeeded anyway. There's one other person who she could be channeled by. Because the people that could channel were Pearl, presumably Iris, Maya, and Misty. Misty is dead, so it's possible that that's Maya's body. But they swapped, didn't they? Ah, this is all confusing. You think the plan was a success? Ours is too weak to channel. Maybe. Eh, but still, meh. You heard me, just as that woman had hoped. Maya Fey is dead. Now the title of Master will pass on to Pearl. Th that's absurd! M Maya's just... She's just trapped! Trapped inside the secret cavern! Really? You're as foolishly optimistic as ever, aren't you? My darling Feeny. Do you want to know the truth? Ever since we met, I've despised you. Your sniveling naivete and your pathetic faith in other people. I just want to know one thing. What did you personally think of Morgan Fay's plan? I told you already, didn't I? It was a stupid plan. It had no point, no value other than fulfilling her own greedy desires. Yes, it was certainly nothing to be proud of. If that's how you feel, why did you help her carry it out? Why would you do it? Why would you kill Maya? You may not understand it, being the kind and gentle soul that you are, you may not be able to appreciate why someone like me would help a woman like that. So then tell me, why? Isn't it obvious? I'm not like that woman. I only act in my own self-interest. The reason I helped her was... For myself. For my own personal satisfaction. Ara swapped physical bodies with the possessed Dahlia as she was channeled by Maya. Ah. Because I guess... Hmm. Uh, doesn't that kind of mean that... Hmm. Once again, brain is kind of overloading. Let's move on. What did you say? 
So this woman, Dahlia Hawthorne, she had her own reason for wanting Maya dead? Do you understand why I would kill Maya Faye now? What was my goal? Hmm. Oh, I think I know. Uh, I believe... Dahlia is assuming that she's in Pearl or Iris's body. But I think I know precisely why. You wanted revenge. Could it be that your actual goal had nothing to do with Maya Faye herself? As I said, none of you have the power to punish me anymore. Because I'm already dead. Well, I had the same problem, you see. You can't punish the dead. And you can't take revenge against them either. Y you wanted to take revenge on someone? I was sentenced to die because of that woman, Mia Faye. I somehow knew this was it. I wanted to send her a message. It was at her hands that I suffered my first humiliation. I wanted her to feel the same pain she made me feel. Sadly, when I realized revenge was impossible, I gave up. And the reason it was impossible, was it perhaps because Mia Faye already died? Yes, and I realized. There's only one way to take revenge against the dead. And how do you do that? Even when the body dies, the spirit, the ego, it lives on forever. I wanted to take away the person that Mia Faye loved most. I wanted to kill her with my own hands. That would be the one and only way I could take my revenge against Mia Faye. Oh, so the true way to punish her is to make her realize that she failed. <laughs> that M M Maya's still alive. That'd be hilarious. That was the reason I helped out with that woman's plans. Just for that? For that you would kill Maya? Your goal is no different than that of Morgan Fay. As they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. What a cruel plan. Cruel, cold, and heartless. <laughs> Don't waste your time preaching to the dead. I've already told you there's not a thing you can do to me. That night, at about 9.30, I materialized into the world. Yep, Pearl is still... Well, we last saw Pearl after the earthquake and when we met Godot. So we know that Pearl is... And Pearl has been trying to channel Dahlia the entire time. So... She thinks that her power is busted. So we know it's not Pearl. We just... So I presume... But the fact is, is if... Uh, I, I'm so, My brain's still wiggly-woggly on the whole thing. I'm sure we'll find it out. I'll be able to play it by ear. At about 9.30 p.m., I materialized into this world. But she didn't come into the trial. True. Then again, she hasn't been coming to the trial... Well, to be fair, the first time she didn't come to the trial was because she was stuck on the island, and this is the second trial... So maybe she's in the room, but she hasn't been... But wait, she did come to the court home because Iris, or Iris, was with Godot. And then Pearl was with Phoenix. So she's she should actually be here. Or at least she was here. I quickly pinned my hair up and put on the demon warding hood. Then I picked up the staff that was by my side and left Hasakura Temple. So... It was at least Dunham who channeled her after all. That was ridiculous, had none never noticed a thing. She left Maya Fey at the inner temple and wobbled back, clutching her poor old back. W what did you do then? That kid was easier to handle than I'd hoped. I caught up with her in front of the stone lantern, but I took out the dagger I got from the storeroom and... So, then you... You're saying you stabbed Maya? It's strange, but... I don't have a clear memory of what happened after that. But things are going weird. Except the leaps was the corpse. No, because I think... At that point, I think Elise... I don't know. So, yeah, but like... She was stabbed in the back. 
And what about the bloody sphere? I don't know. I don't have a clear memory of what happened after that. What does that mean? No clear memory. I don't know. I think... I think I was stabbed. You were stabbed? At the last minute, Ma Mia Faye must have stabbed me. I'm sure of it. That's not like her at all! Maya wouldn't stab a french fry with a plastic fork! Anyway, I suddenly lost consciousness. Before I did, I scrawled her name on the lantern. So, yeah. Alright, so, that confirms that part. She, Hawthorne was summoned by Elise, Misty Fay, To spare Pearl, probably. Just as I was passing out, I wrote Maya behind my back. But... You were stabbed in the... You had to be stabbed in the back. That's wrong. I'd hoped it would cast suspicion on her. I can't believe she was thinking of that until the bitter end. Well, she already died once. That's where my memory temporarily stops. It, it stops? I don't have any memory of actually killing Maya Faye with my own two hands. My very last memory was... Maya's terror-filled eyes. When I woke up after that... I was in the sacred cavern, surrounded by darkness. You are in the sacred cavern! The entrance was sealed with one of those trick locks. Some I had been trapped in there. But how did you wind up in there? I'd like to know that myself. Anyway, I was worried. I didn't know whether or not Maya, Maya, yeah, Maya was dead or not. And I swore I wouldn't return to the underworld until I knew I'd killed her myself. Hmm. For a ghost, you're one tough cookie. I wanted to get out of there and make sure she was dead, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't get out. The trick lock stopped you, huh? I didn't know how to remove it. So then you're saying you're actually confined against your will inside the sacred cavern? Yes, I wanted to get rid of that annoying lock as soon as possible, but it wasn't easy. I kept getting interrupted while I was working on it. Interrupted? It was early in the morning, but someone came into the training hall. What? Who? Pearl. Could it have been Maya? So who stabbed Elise? Presumably Maya at that point. In self-defense. But at the, like you said, uh, Maya wouldn't have done it. Like, I don't know. Hmm. She says that her memory is kind of whacked out. I don't know. I thought the same thing, but I couldn't see. Why not? If someone had spotted me, I would have lost my chance to take revenge, so I made sure to hide myself well at the back of the sacred cavern. Oh, yeah. So everything played out like she kind of said. Delilah, Dahlia attacked, somebody came up from behind and stabbed, and Maya was terrified. And Pearl blacked out at one point. That morning, only two people could have gone into the training hall. Maya and Pearls. Pearls went there to cover the hanging scroll and gravy. Still, I finally managed to remove the lock, but I was too late. What do you mean by that? The flies had already started to gather. The bridge had been fixed and the police had started their investigation. The bridge had been fixed and the police had started their investigation, correct? There's someone who could have seen Elise. I don't know who. Naturally, I couldn't go out, so instead I returned to the cavern and put the lock back on myself. I realized I wouldn't get out a chance to see Maya's corpse as I'd hoped. But just then, Lady Luck showed up. Lady Luck? After that big earthquake, she showed up all by herself. The real Iris? She said she'd come to make sure the sacred cavern was safe, stupid girl. I came out from the sacred cavern and got a feel for the situation. And I locked her away in my place. Who else had a super strong connection to Mia? Could... The thing is, like, I guess Armando? Like, who, basically, the guy I always thought was Godot? Like, the only people that could have done the stabbing are, in my opinion, people who were channeled. But, 
the only way to have done, been channeled was would have been through pearls. Or, I don't even know, my brain is dead. I'd finally learned exactly what had happened. It was then that I learned that the planet actually succeeded. What do you mean your planet succeeded? I'd misunderstood one thing, you see. That night, the one that had summoned me, I'd assumed that it was Pearl Fay. Well, of course you would have assumed that. It was written in the instructions. But I was wrong. The person that had actually called my spirit back was... Misty Fay, the picture book author. B what? Well, that's what really... Well, that's really the only possibility, isn't it? But... Mm, hmm. So, she thinks that Pearl got stabbed... Wait. Because she hasn't been a part of everything. She thought... I don't know. Misty was constantly working with the police, no? Well, not constantly. She worked with the police once. And that was on the DL6 incident. Which I guess could have been... Like, uh... Handled by Armando. After I lost consciousness in the garden. It was her body that was left lying there. Alright, so she knows that part. Maya Faye. I wasn't able to kill her with my own hands after all. But even so, I made her commit the most vile sin a human can commit. And that is? Matricide. The sin of killing her own mother. Uh, no way! Except that her identity had been hidden and protected. Witness Protection Project. Maybe. It's just that I only know that she disappeared for 17 years. So I didn't know. I guess. Huh. Order! Order in the court! What is the meaning of this? It's true that I was the one who attacked Maya Fay, But even so, the murderer who actually snuffed out Misty Fay's life was none other than your darling little Maya. Ridiculous! That's nonsense! Are you sure about that? Just think about it. There's even evidence supporting these facts, isn't there? What? What do you mean? What is this so-called evidence? The fact that Maya Faye has disappeared is evidence enough, isn't it? Huh? The idea that she's still in the sacred cavern is just ridiculous. She wasn't able to escape from the inner temple that much is obvious. In that case, there's only one place that she could be. Where? Do I have to spell it out? The bottom of Eagle River, where else? E Eagle River? Maya Faye killed her long-lost mother. Can you imagine the guilt? Oh, but it can't have been. Because tossing yourself in Eagle River from the Inner Sanctum side would lead to a rock. Can you imagine the guilt she must have felt when she realized that? That's why she threw herself into the Eagle River. Most bodies wind up in there are lost forever. So what do you have to say now, Feeny? Uh, uh. She's still not somehow not getting that Elise is dead. She is weird. Well, no, she actually does get it. She gets that Elise was killed, and Elise summoned her, and she thinks that Maya killed her in self-defense. Oops, sorry. That's my phone. What kind of ringtone is that? Godot here. Okay, thanks. But was it something important? They just finished removing the locks from the sacred cavern. That's great! What about Maya? There was a woman in the cave. Was it Maya Fay? It was the accused, Sister Iris. Huh? Don't look so surprised. I locked her in there yesterday. I just finished telling you that. So, what about Maya? Where is she? There was no one else found inside the sacred cavern. No, it can't be. I told you, didn't I? She's dead. No. No! But she can't be dead because the only person capable of channeling Dahlia is Maya. Because Pearl is still alive and we saw her. It seems that this case has come to an end. 
A tragic end. Sadly, it appears the killer of Elise Dunham, also known as Misty Fay, was her own daughter, Maya Fay. Overcome with guilt for what she had done, Maya Fay jumped to her death into the raging waters of Eagle River. It can't be. Shrite, have you ever heard this one? Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. No matter how improbable it may seem. But what is that supposed to mean, Prosecutor Godot? According to this witness, Maya Faye threw herself into the Eagle River. However, is that really the truth? Remember, this woman testified earlier that the bridge was already on fire when the murder was taking place in the garden. Which means if Maya had thrown herself into the river, it must have been from the inner temple side, near the bridge. That's right, that's where she jumped from. But that's impossible. It's impossible to jump into the river from there! Wh what Don't get your panties all twisted up, trite. Just relax and think through the whole thing again. So it's impossible? Maya couldn't have thrown herself into Eagle River? Well, Mr. Wright, Miss Hawthorne claims Miss Faye threw herself into the river from the inner temple side. Do you have any evidence that refutes this claim? I do believe the Hasakura temple map should do it. My head hurts too to the twists. Mine do too. I kind of wrap it all around generally, but this has been a trip. It's impossible to jump into the Eagle River from the Inner Temple side, since no one knows that better than the witness. What did you say? Eleven years ago, you jumped into the e very same river. Just take a look at this overhead map. Look at this photograph. As you can see, Below the cliff on the inner temple side is a big rock shelf. Oh, oh, y you're right. She wouldn't have reached the river if she had jumped from there. In other words, if she had jumped, she would be able to see her body in this photo. Ah, uh. I want to pass out of my damn pillow already. Ah, <laughs> uh. so you finally figured it out. You, no. Order! Order! You, you're just playing with me. My F.A.'s body's at the bottom of Eagle River. There's nowhere else she could possibly be hiding. Miss Hawthorne, have you ever heard this one before? Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. Yes, just a few minutes ago. My F.A. wasn't inside the sacred cavern. We now know that she didn't throw herself into the Eagle River. Correct. That eliminates all the most likely possibilities. Now, although it seems improbable, there's still one other off place she could be. W what What is this one possibility you're talking about? That's obviously a bluff. So where's her dead body then? Finally, I think the pieces are falling into place. Normally, the living have no way to punish the dead. But I think there's a way to give Dahlia Hawthorne the ultimate punishment. Shall I tell you where Miss... Shall I tell you, Miss Hawthorne? Shall I tell you where Maya is this very instant? She's in this very courtroom! There's only one possibility left. Namely, she's right here in this very courtroom! What? Maya Faye is here? You say she's here in my courtroom? Dahlia Hawthorne, I seem to recall that you said I had misunderstood one thing, you see. So what? But I think there's one more thing you misunderstood. What do you mean? Tell me something. At this very moment, who's channeling Dahlia Hawthorne? Why, that, that's obvious. It's Pearl Fay, that pathetic little sniveling runt. You're wrong. Pearl's tried. But she couldn't do it. 
I've never failed at channeling someone. This is the first time it's happened. Isn't there any explanation for why you couldn't channel a spirit? It could happen if someone else is already channeling the same spirit. Someone called me before Pearl did? But who? Pearl's even tried again on the day after the crime. But she couldn't do it. What could that mean? Five hour mark. <laughs> I think the truth is becoming clearer to you right about now, am I correct? <sighs> it wasn't Pearls that channeled you. There was someone else who channeled you before she could. And it has to be Maya Fay. This is an easy one. Pearls couldn't do it, and Misty Fay is gone. There's only one possibility left. Come on already! I can't stand the tension! Dahlia Hawthorne, the person channeling you right now must be... Maya Fay. What? What? How could this be? Remember this witness Dahlia Hawthorne said about her goal? She said that her goal was to kill Maya Fay. Yes, that's right. But if Maya channeled the spirit of someone that was trying to kill her... Ha! Huh. Well, Gramps, what would happen? C could it be? It looks like you finally understand, Your Honor. Well, I don't. What are you going on about? What I'm going on about is the reason Maya channeled you. And there's only one reason. To protect herself from you. To protect herself? From me? Yes. On the night of the crime, you were only interested in one thing. Killing Maya Fay. The path back to the Hazakura was closed. Uh, yeah, I, my brain is just bleh. The path back to Hazakura was closed off and there was nowhere for her to run. So then the problem became, where would be the safest place to hide? Ah, uh, uh, you mean that's when she channeled me? All this time you thought you had been channeled by pearls. That's why it never occurred to you that Maya's hiding place was you! No, no. Don't say that! That was an interesting breakdown look. You're saying that I, Dahlia Hawthorne, was played for a fool by that little whelp? Maya Faye killed herself, isn't it obvious? Sorry, but no. It would have been impossible for her to jump into the river. This was the only avenue of escape to open to Maya. The only way that Maya could disappear from the inner temple. I don't believe you. A stupid little girl like that who's never been out in the real world. She could never have come up with a plan like that. How, who could have ever given her such a brilliant idea? Misty. Maya has given Dahlia the ultimate finger salute. <laughs> well, me of course. Rip, what? What? But how did Pearl get there? And did, what? But Mia! Mia Fey! It's been a long time, Dahlia Hawthorne. Uh, so it's true. It was you. Yes. Ha! Huh. You're something else. But what? What are you doing here? That hair. Must It's pearls, right? Tell me something, Dahlia. I want you to think back to that night one more time. You had just cornered Maya in the inner temple's garden. And then, in the final moments of the fight, you lost consciousness. Mia's undead too. It's not too unreasonable. I was just thinking, well mostly, that means that Pearls had to channel Mia. And... It's just, it's just sudden that Pearls was standing next to me, but not ever being there, and then Mia just appears. It's interesting. I was stabbed by Maya Fey. Actually, Maya lost consciousness at the same time as you. She did? Not terribly surprising since she was about to be killed. When she woke up, she was in the training hall. That's when Maya decided she needed help. Oh! Yeah. Oh, oh, 
I still don't know. Okay, so Mia didn't stab her. So she channeled her to get her. Okay, well, that makes sense. She explained in a memo the situation she was in. She asked me what I thought she should do. She did that? I can't believe it. Of course I didn't have all the details. But one thing was perfectly clear. And that was? I knew that you couldn't be allowed to wander free. Free? What do you mean? It was a race against time, so I wrote down two things that Maya had to do. Channel Dahlia Hawthorne as soon as possible, and lock herself in the sacred cavern until help arrived. So it was Maya who put the lock in there. Yes, but why did you order her to do those two things? If she hadn't done it, Dahlia Hawthorne would have been channeled by someone else. By one Pearl Fay. Pearls? Yes, Pearl didn't properly understand the plan. So all she was trying to do was follow her mother, Morgan Fay's instructions. If she'd succeeded in channeling Dahlia Hawthorne's spirit, things would have turned out very badly, to put it mildly. So that's how it was. Dahlia Hawthorne would have used the body of Pearl Fay to kill Maya at all costs. But yes, it certainly sounds like that was the intent all along. How dare you! I won't forget this! Why not just admit it, Dahlia Hawthorne? Your little plan was nothing but a big failure! Yes, another failure to add to the pile of shame, wouldn't you say? Wha what do you mean, another? Think about it, Dahlia. Remember all your past crimes? Not a single one of them was a success. They all ended in failure. What? How dare you? Eleven years ago... The Fake Kidnapping. Your very first crime. You got your hands on a $2 million diamond, but... After Terry Falls escaped and went to meet with Valerie Hawthorne, the truth was exposed. Shut your mouth! That wasn't my fault! It was because of that stupid oaf of a prisoner and that weakling of a policewoman! And then, one year later, you tried to kill me. Well... I'm still alive, but... You wound up killing someone else. As a result, you were sentenced to death. Is this where we're gonna find out that, like, Armando is still alive and it's like, By the way, you didn't kill me if you're poisoned. God damn it! It's one stupid move after another for you. But it's no longer funny. You wipe that smug, happy-go-lucky smile off your face! And now this! You've messed up again! You let Maya Fey escape! Even though she was right there in front of you! <laughs> Mia Fey! Mia Fey! Mia Fey! Mia Fey! You spinster! I was supposed to kill Maya Faye like I swore I would! And if I had only gotten this spiky-haired jerk the guilty verdict, I wouldn't have been hanged to death! True. But I think you finally understand, Dahlia Hawthorne. You will never defeat me. What? What did you say? Whether you're alive, dead, or somewhere in between, you will never defeat me. As long as I'm around, you're destined to lose for all of eternity. <laughs> I remember what you said earlier in the trial. You said there was no way we could punish you. Because you were already dead. What about it? Then you said, even when the body dies, the spirit, the ego, it lives on forever. That's very true, Dahlia. And that's exactly the punishment you'll never be able to escape from. For all of eternity, you'll have to remain as Dahlia Hawthorne. A miserable, pathetic, weak creature who can never win at anything. Man, I really want to see this, but I also want to hit the pillow. This has gone for a long time. <laughs> but we are nearing the end, I believe. And for you, there's no escape from that. No hope of freedom. Since the day you were executed, 
The narrow bridge that once stretched out in front of you has been burnt to a crisp. You... You're wrong! It can't be! How could I lose to the likes of you? It no longer matters. I don't care whether you win or lose anymore. The only thing I want is for you to come out of Maya's body right now! Are we gonna perform an exorcism here? Oh, Jesus! That's actually kind of cool and horrifying. I'm not ready. Not ready to go. Huh. Okay, that, this is getting a bit droning. <laughs> So, this basically is an exorcism. Maya! With new sprite face. Nexus. Oh, hey, is this gonna be like... Oh, no. Uh, oh, never mind. I was gonna say, is this the first time that Maya had seen Mia in forever? But I think they've had before. <laughs> now then, I assume you are... The real Iris. Yes, I was just rescued from the sacred cavern. I must say, you and your twin sister are indeed identical from what I can see. In any case, it appears that everything has finally been cleared up. Mr. Godot, what happened to Dahlia Hawthorne? If you ask me, Your Honor, it looks like she went back to hell she came from. Hmm, it seems that Misty Fay wasn't the only victim of this crime. Maya Fay as well as the young Pearl Fay. We're also victims of this wicked and selfish plan. Yes, Your Honor. The tragedy of Medium Valley has finally come to an end, it seems. It would be best for everyone if no further attempt was made to channel that spirit again. Um, Your Honor? Yes, what is it? About this whole spirit medium thing. It's almost weird how comfortable you are. You seem to be with the concept now. Well, to be frank, my younger brother is quite judgmental. He often criticizes me for not studying hard enough. That's why I made a concerted effort to study up on the curing channeling technique. Hey, isn't that the New Year's issue of Occult? I've seen quite a few things in my many years on the bench. And in all that time, I finally learned this one thing. Each case is different and takes place in its own world, if you will. In order to fully understand that world, First, we have to immerse ourselves in it completely. And that's where my brother and I used to defer. Huh, never thought of it that way. Dahlia was essentially sealed by Mia by pointing out that her eternal revenge will never come, consuming her with guilt. So now she's in super hell. At any rate, it's time to pass judgment in the case of Iris of Hazakura Temple. Objection! Oh, don't tell me this more, dude! You're a little too fast of that gavel, Your Honor. What do you mean by that, Godot? D -d How long do we have to go? <laughs> I thought this was a simple lawyer game. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean by that, Mr. Godot? This trial isn't over yet. That's what he means. B what? Trite. Remember what Miss Evil Spirit said in her testimony? Huh? Dahlia's testimony? I caught up with her in front of the stone lantern. Then I took out the dagger and got from the storeroom and... It's strange, but I don't have a clear memory of what happened after that. I think... I think I was stabbed. Another half hour or so. Ah, screw it. I think we'll go. Just as Dahlia Hawthorne was about to attack Maya, she was stabbed and killed by someone. Yes, that's right. And that person was ultimately killed was the spirit medium that channeled Dahlia. Elise Dunham. No, Misty Fay. But who killed her? 
We still don't know who did it. This isn't over? <laughs> Unless someone else is found guilty, the accused is still on trial. We can't let her walk until there's evidence that proves her innocence. No way. But the court isn't prepared for any further testimony. The prosecution is ready to call our final witness. In my opinion, there is proof that Iris is innocent. Because Iris was on the unburnt, well, on the Hazakura side of the Dusky Bridge. So, whoever stabbed Babadaba, Babadaba. This next testimony is heartbreaking. Oh no. Final witness? This one will clear up the whole mystery. The mystery of who killed Misty Fay. Hmm, indeed. Is it really all right, Mr. Prosecutor? Of course it's all right, Madam Attorney. Very well then, who is this final witness? Ha! Isn't it obvious? There's one person who saw the whole event and will put the final dagger in this case. Someone who saw the murder take place? The very person who saw her mother killed in front of her eyes. Y you You mean Maya? You can't! She can't testify after what she's been through! <laughs> Hell squared, indeed. We need to find the truth. The prosecution calls Maya Faye to the witness stand. That's not Maya's sprite, though. Back sprite. Very well. But first we'll take a brief recess. We'll have to wait for Miss Faye to recover before summoning her. Once- Oh no, that- My bleh. That was Iris's back sprite. I'm an idiot. Once we receive the doctor's permission, we will proceed with the trial. Hey, Trite. I've got something to say to you, so listen up. What is it? I don't think much of you as a lawyer. It's always the same with you. You somehow managed to just squeak by without even a faint understanding of the case. Some beautiful woman always seems to come dashing in at the last minute to save you. Y you've got some nerve. But that's not going to happen this time. This time, you're going to have to do this by yourself. Well, technically... T technically, we kind of did that with the... Rise from the Ashes, the extra case of the DS first game. That's enough. This court is now in recess. I'm truly sorry about everything. You were working so hard to defend me, but I was missing all day and we didn't even have a chance to talk. She's right. When I met Iris at the training hall yesterday, they'd already switched places, and Iris was inside the cavern. That last interaction was super impactful. This game doesn't take the DLC case into account. Ah, that's fair, because I think it might have been made kind of separately. I wanted to at least be in the defendant's box today to root for you. Well, it wasn't your fault. You were locked up this whole time. There's something more important than that, though. I have to ask you. Why did you help your sister out as much as you did? Huh? If you had tried to get help at the Sacred Cavern yesterday, you wouldn't have spent an entire day locked up in here. My sister. I felt sorry for her. She was abandoned by our mother and never got any love from our father either. Yes, but it was the same for you too, wasn't it? Yes, but at least I had Sister Bikini who was like a mother to me. If only Dahlia had come with me to Hasakura Temple. I always, I always loved her. Dahlia was always so smart, so strong. She never complained about a thing. That's why I, that's why I promised her that I would help her. Are you talking about the fake kidnapping case 11 years ago? Yes, I, I wanted to be useful to her in some way. But, as usual, I was too cowardly. At the last minute, I ran away because of that. Dahlia's stepsister, Valerie, ended up. That was the case that wounded Mia so badly. Well, just have to watch the VOD. Have a great day. 
See you later, and have a great sleep. Sorry for going so long. I thought there was less case, but there was so much. It was, it basically, I fell victim to the just one more. <laughs> but things didn't end up there, of course. Some people suspected that my sister was involved in the murder. Some people? You must mean... He has two defense attorneys. Mia Fey and Diego Armando. After poisoning Mr. Armando, who was getting too close to learning the truth, Dahlia even tried to kill the person who had unknowingly hid the poison from her. You. That's right. Iris, there's one more thing that I have to ask you. Yes, what is it? On the night of the murder, the person that cleaned up the corpse of the victim, Elise Dunham, was it? Was it really you? Yes, it was me. That night after I rang the lights out bell, I went back to my room. At around 10.30, I received a call on my cell phone. There's a problem. Come to the inner temple right away. I, I got on the snowmobile and headed for the inner temple, but... The path to the inner temple was cut off, right? Exactly. We can't just leave the body here. So you've got to do this exactly as I say, got it? I love that they just keep playing this animation over and over again. Whee! It was me. I was the one that received her body. The murder weapon had been left in her body so she wouldn't bleed too much. The staff that Mystic Elise always held. I knew it. So the actual murder weapon was the staff. Yes, that's right. I brought the body back to Hazakura Temple on the snowmobile. But why? Why did you alter the body? I didn't want anyone to know that the staff was the murder weapon. I didn't want to leave anything that would lead me lead back to Misty Fay. So I dressed her in a robe and stabbed her with the Shishichito. I wiped the blood off the staff blade and left it next to her on the ground. Iris, just tell me one last thing. Tell me the name of the person that called your cell phone. The real killer. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I can't do that. I can't say who did it. I... I see. Defendant! Yes? The judge is calling you. He wants to see you to see him in his chambers. He has some questions about Dahlia Hawthorne. All right. Well, then, I'll see you later. There's something I want to tell you. Oh, um, okay. Something she wants to tell me? So it's true. I was cooperated with the real killer. Maybe even from the very beginning. Phoenix. Mia! Um, how is Maya doing? Physically, I'm not worried. She'll recover completely. But emotionally, she's been hurt very badly by this case. I see. You don't mean... She's learned who Elise Dunham really was? Yes, I went to the medical office and talked to her. I told her everything I knew. Also, I just gotta say... This has gotta be just completely freaky for the entirety of the court system. Cause now this is all on record. They saw a spirit rise out of somebody. She wishes to come clean about something. Yeah, cause we still don't know her deal that she knows Phoenix, but he doesn't know her. But why? Maya is stronger than you think. I wish you could take it. I knew she could take it, all of it. What do you mean by that? I want you to figure that answer out by yourself. The trial's about to restart. The real killer? Do you know who it is yet? Iris wouldn't tell me who called her, but still. I think that just maybe I know who it was. That night, the victim was killed in the garden of the inner temple. And the criminal wasn't just there by accident. Which means that the killer knew of Dahlia's plan from the very beginning. And one more thing. The victim was moved to the Hazakura temple side by Pendulum. In other words, the criminals couldn't cross the bridge. That means they were stuck on the inner temple side for almost an entire day. Like... A part of me is wondering if it's actually Godot. 
somehow. Because remember, the plan was opened before Pearl, and Godot was missing, so I don't know. Do you recall the betrayal mentioned by Dahlia? Yeah, because, well, it's hard to tell exactly how much. Then again, I guess she technically knew him. I don't know. Recall the convo between Godot and Mia. Recall what I said before. I have bad memory. It all gets jumbled up. I've been gone for five hours. That means they were stuck on the Inner Temple side the entire day. Exactly. So the culprit was someone that wasn't in Hasakura Temple the following day. That's as much help as I can give you. The rest of the battle is yours to win or lose. Okay, I've got it. Thank you, Mia. Finally, it's... Hmm, no. <laughs> My brain jumped like, ah, what if it was Pearl? It couldn't be. If you need a clarification, feel free to ask. And I will, but I like to... I like to stumble into it. Well, Scooby-Doo this shit. Finally, it's almost time to bring this case to an end. What exactly did Maya see anyway? And who was it that actually killed Misty Fay? Whoever it was, I have to prove it. Me. All by myself. Yep, Mia's uh, choosing not to help because probably along the side of uh, what Godot was saying. That we only ever really succeeded because we had help from Maya, Mia, and Pearls. Now then, before we proceed any further, I'm going to announce the results of the tests we had performed earlier. Tests? Yes, tests. On the bloody dagger that was found stuck to the pine tree. Oh yeah, that. I totally forgot about it. And that's the weapon that Maya Fey used when she fought the victim. So what are the results? Was it the victim's blood or... Due to time constraints, a full test was impossible. However, there's one thing we can say with certainty. The blood that was on this dagger was not the victim's blood. Ding. He's not gonna like this. <laughs> that is all. Now then, let's restart this trial. So it wasn't Misty's blood on the dagger. Then whose blood was it? Interesting. I'm sure both of the defense and prosecution know this, but this trial is rapidly coming to a close. Both sides will need to show some firm evidence with their claims. I understand, Your Honor. From what I've heard, the witness is dangerously weak, physically speaking. So let's finish this quickly. Agreed. Very well. Please bring in the last witness. It is out of sight. Witness, please tell us your name and profession. Maya Fay. My profession is, um... I'm the assistant manager at Wright & Cola offices. Maya. According to the magazine I have here, you're a spirit medium of the curing channeling technique. I... I'm frightened. The Fay clan. I don't want any more to do with it. Oh, Maya. The pain the Fay bloodline causes must be unbearable. Very well. Now then, Miss Fay, when the event occurred, you were in the Garden of the Inner Temple, and you witnessed the moment of Miss Elise Dunham's death. Is this correct? I, um, I... I didn't see any... Objection. Straighten up this instant, young lady. Huh? Pick your head up and speak clearly. There's always time for crying later. But, but I... Your mother was killed right in front of your eyes. There's nothing you can do to change that fact. But there's something you can do. You can finish this. You've been watching the whole thing, right? You've seen the witnesses come out, and you've seen us squeeze the truth out of them. Now it's your turn. Let's hear your testimony. On the night of the crime, what exactly did you see happen? Witness, if you please. Yes. Your Honor. I was passing through the garden on the way to a spare prep room when it happened. Suddenly someone struck me over the head. Yeah, with the staff. That's why the blood's on the amethyst crystal. I stumbled and ended up against the stone lantern. I think I screamed, Help me! And something warm splashed over me. 
That's when I lost consciousness. Be prepared. Oh no. So he was struck on the head. I suppose it must have been this staff. Maya, the person who hit you. It was Dahlia Hawthorne, wasn't it? I, I'm sorry, Nick. I just, I couldn't see. I don't know who it was. Maya, think hard. Sorry, Nick, but I really couldn't. Huh. Can't say it was an especially good night for young ladies to be walking around alone. It seems that I w it will be hard to determine the criminal through testimony alone. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Please begin your cross-examination. Maya, hang in there. It's gonna get hard. She doesn't look well at all. I was passing through. Suddenly someone... I think I screamed, help me. That interests me. That is, I'm gonna press on that. You think you screamed, but you're not sure? Listen, I was complete, I was a complete wreck. It was dark and I couldn't see my attacker. Was it a man, a woman, an adult, a child? I had no idea. I was scared of my wits. Believe me, my dear, I'm certain I would have soiled my robes. I thought this person might attack me, so I, so I... Anyway, I'm pretty sure I screamed. I thought that it was my last hope. Wow, it sounds like poor little Maya really was out of her mind. I wonder what she meant by last hope. What do I do? Do I press her for more details? Yeah, what was this last hope you mean? That seems specific. Wait a minute, Maya. What's this my last hope stuff? Um, what? What do you mean by your last hope? No, no, no. That's what you said. You said my last hope. Huh? What? I said what? Look, you're facing an attacker that you couldn't see and you screamed, right? You screamed, help me! Um, yeah. But you testify that you screamed that because you thought it was your last hope. Oh, well, you know, that's like, what you, d what do you call it when that happens? Maya's not doing so well up there. Uh, well, um, I... Oh, that's right! I remember now. I was facing my attacker, but that's not who I was screaming at. W what did you just say? Yeah, that's right. It was the person behind my attacker that I was yelling at. That's who I was screaming for help. Ah! What is it now? I messed up. I didn't, I didn't mean to let that slip. Huh? Witness, are you absolutely sure of what you're saying? Behind the attacker, there was another person? Um, I am, well, I, I meant to keep that part a secret. Uh, what have I done? Ha! Huh. It takes a ton of pressure to make a diamond. That's what I always say. A ton of pressure. You're in a court of law here. You can't make things up to try hard things in this chamber. Witness, the information you just presented is vital to this case. I want you to add it to your testimony. I could see a man behind my attacker by the light of the stone lantern. But no, that was burnt out. You couldn't do that. It was not lit the night. So there was a man standing behind your attacker. Um, yeah. That man. He's the killer. He stabbed her from behind. He's the one who killed Elise Dunham. Otherwise known as Misty Fay, your mother. The killer... Maya, you know who killed your mother, don't you? Um, what is the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? To be frank, Your Honor, I think she's in shock and quite confused. That's why she hasn't noticed the huge problem with her testimony. Huh? What do you mean? What problem? Maya, on the night of the crime, that stone lantern was out of commission. Huh? What? It's true. There was no light anywhere in the garden that night! No! Order! Order of the court, Mr. Gadot! Explain this! Add the pureness of milk to the perfect clear darkness of coffee. Stir. That is the state of the witness's mind right now. A cup of café a lot. Café au lait? Oh, I... <laughs> completed that. Is that even legal? Mr. Trite's words are the milk and you are the spoon. Your Honor. I'm a spoon? I'm no spoony bard, I'll have you know. You must have noticed it too, Trite. 
This witness's mental state is highly unstable right now. It's not hard to understand why she would make a little mistake like that. Sorry, but that's not gonna cut it. What did you just say? If there was, truly was no light in the garden, then there's a fatal contradiction in the witness's last bit of testimony. Nick. May I? Recall the witness's last statement about her attacker. She said that she didn't know if it was a man or a woman or adult or a child. And yet, the witness could describe a person that was standing behind her attacker. And she quickly described him as a man. Ah. Uh, in other words, that would have to mean that Maya actually saw our mystery person. Despite it being so dark that she couldn't see the face of her own attacker. N no! Order! Order! What in the world does this mean, Mr. Wright? Are you saying Miss Face saw the real killer under pitch black conditions? Try. do you have any idea what you're proposing? How could she have seen in the dark? There was no other light source at the scene. There are some things that can you can only see in the dark, Mr. Godot. Maya, you did see what the killer see who the killer was in the dark. And now you're trying to cover for him. C cover for the man that killed her mother? There's only one conclusion I can draw from this. You know who this man is. Please, Nick. I don't know anything. Please, I'm begging you. Ha! Huh. You talk a good game, Tribe. Let's see if you can walk that walk. It was pitch black. So what could the witness see? I'm calling your bluff. No, Nick, don't. Please, stop. I think I got a flashback. Maya's dead set on protecting this guy. The man who murdered Maya's long-lost mother. But I can't let him get away with it. I'm a lawyer, an officer of the court. I'm here to find the truth. All right, Mr. Wright, time to show us what you've got. Who was this person that you say Miss Face saw in the darkness? If I remember correctly, in one of the past cases, the lights in the court went out. And yet, your visor was still Because it was pitch black, Miss Fay was able to recognize the killer easily. I'm sure the court would like to see for itself how this is possible, yes? What? B but how do you propose to show us something like that? It's easy. We just need to recreate the conditions of that night. C conditions Your Honor, the defense officially requests that all the lights in this courtroom be turned off. What? What? This is... But it can't be! Huh. That was a nice bit of deduction. Trite. That was awesome art there. Well, everyone. This is the man Maya saw on the night of the murder! Order! 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 Prosecutor Gado, what is the meaning of this? Surely you must be shocked to hear yourself accused of such a thing. Why aren't you denying it? <laughs> Your Honor, you're asking the wrong person. What do you mean by that? If you've got a question, ask the witness. That's one of my rules. Well, Maya, how about it? What you saw that night? Was it three glowing red lines? Well, witness, answer the question. Y You're wrong. I, I I never saw that. Maya! I thought the person that said my mother was a man for a totally different reason. But what? Witness! Stop your chattering, Your Honor. Uh, ch chattering? If it's worth asking, ask the witness. That's one of my rules. All right. Well then, let's continue with the testimony. Please tell us how you knew the killer was a man. Yes, Your Honor. I didn't realize it until after I woke up, but... When I came to, I was just lying there on the training hall floor. 
By the time I got back up to the garden, the place had totally changed. The torches were lit and the body was gone. And all the snow around the stone lantern had been carefully cleaned up too. Since the person did all the work alone, I just assumed it was a man. That seems awfully presumptuous. So it was after the crime took place that the witness came to think the killer was a man. Uh, that's right. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I... No need to apologize. It, ha it says, Mr. Godot said you're utterly exhausted. It's only natural that you would be a little confused. Also, if you consider the situation you described, it doesn't seem too much of a stretch to assume the culprit was a man. Mr. Wright, proceed with your cross-examination. I feel so sorry for Maya. Don't think I need to press that. Um, let's press this, because it's specific. The torches were lit. Yes, that's how I noticed that the whole scene had changed. I'm gonna say it's the, I'm going to say it was the killer who lit the torches. I mean, who else could it have been? The killer probably lit them since it'd be impossible to do any cover-up work in the dark. However, if that's true, there's one thing that still bothers me. Why did the killer go to the effort of moving the body? That's true. It's hard to see how the, that would be the, any advantage to the killer. The only one who would gain anything from that would be... The only person that was at the inner temple, Maya. Very well, let me hear some of more of the condition of the crime scene. Hmm. And I guess all the snow had been cleaned up too. Was it for the blood? Let's see. So you're saying the killer cleaned up the snow? It did look really odd. The snow was removed in an unnatural looking rectangular shape around the lantern. There were a lot of shovels around the inner temple, but they're all really heavy, way too heavy for me to use. An odd fellow indeed, this killer. Why on earth would anyone want to take the snow anyway? Well, there's one thing I can think of. Didn't you say that a lot of the victim's blood sprayed onto the snow? Yeah. The area I collapsed in ended up being splattered. In other words, the killer's purpose was to hide the bloody snow. I think that's the most reasonable explanation. Hmm, perhaps. However, there's something that's bothering me. If the killer just wanted to hide the snow with the blood on it... There was no need to remove that amount. It's because Godot can't see red and why he missed the marker on the body. I mean, the, the, to the totem. That's true. He could have scooped up just the snow that was bloodstained. It looks like there's some mysteries behind this issue. But I think this will help explain them. Do I... Hmm, let's look at everything again. When I came to, I was just lying there. By the time I got back, the garden, the place had totally changed. Maybe I do need to press on this after all. Naturally, the killer must have done it, right? Yes, I think so. But why would the killer tamper with the crime scene like that? There must have been something that the killer desperately wanted to hide. I... The truth is, when I saw the crime scene, I felt something. You did? Yes, I felt like the killer was hiding the evidence for me, for my sake. What? Hiding it for you? Everyone knew that I was the only one at the inner temple that night. If Sister Bikini had come back and looked at the garden, she may have thought that you had done it. No, she definitely would have thought so. And you're saying that that's why the killer cleaned up the crime scene to make it look like nothing had happened. Yes, I'm sure of it. Well, that's certainly an important piece of information. I want you to add that to your testimony. Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. And now I think we've, for this, I think that we uh, cleaned up everything for my sake. We present the lantern to say, well, why then didn't he clean up this? The body of Elise Dunham was carried all the way to Hazakura Temple's courtyard. Then the garden, the real scene of the crime, the snow that we suspected was covered in blood was scooped up and removed. It's reasonable to believe all this was done in an attempt to hide the true crime scene. However, there's still one matter that seems somewhat odd. Oh, and what would that be? You must have figured it out by now, Mr. Godot. It's the message written in blood on the lantern. It was written very clearly on the white stone lantern. Maya. Uh... 
If the killer was so motivated to protect Maya from the suspicion, then why didn't they wipe the writing off the lantern? Ugh! You're right! Order! 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 But Mr. Wright, isn't it a fact that the killer was trying to cover up the crime scene? Indeed, but it doesn't make much sense to move the body and remove the bloody snow, then not wipe off the most incriminating thing of all, the bloody writing! But if that's the case, do you have an explanation for the killer's mysterious behavior? Why would this killer move the body and remove all that snow? but then leave the bloody riding on the lantern. I don't know what the killer's plan was, but it's a fact that the killer left the riding on the lantern. There must be a reason for it. Well then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your opinion. Why did the killer leave the message written in blood? Because he didn't notice it. Prosecutor Godot, earlier in this trial, you gave me some good evidence. Once you eliminate the impossible, Whatever remains must be the truth. Maybe you're not as dumb as I thought. The real killer wanted to disguise the fact that the crime had occurred there. If that's the case, they wouldn't have left the bloody writing on the stone lantern on purpose. Therefore, it must mean they didn't notice it. But that doesn't make any sense. The torches were all lit and everything. There's no way any normal person would miss something as glaring as that. You're right. There's no way any normal person would. What? What are you trying to say, Mr. Wright? There's only one person involved in this incident who could have missed seeing the bloody writing altogether. And who would that be? Who is this person that could have failed to notice the bloody writing? The guy that's already done this today. Mr. Godot, this is what you said yesterday. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. You can't see everything? Is that correct, Mr. Cadeau? This lantern was submitted as evidence today. I'd like the court to think back to the moment it was first presented. Th this lantern? There's something written on it. B why? It's written in blood! Huh, nonsense! This lantern, it's as clean as a whistle! Mr. Cadeau, just admit it. There are certain colors you can't see. Correct? You can't see red on a white background, can you? That's right. We went through this once before. During the poisoning case at Tres Bien. This is the apron of the delightful Miss Beard was wearing at the time. And somehow, spilled coffee on it. There's something still bothering me, Mr. Godot. Why do you not explain the bloodstain to the court? Bloodstain? What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood colored stain that smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. You could see the coffee on the white apron, but you couldn't see the ketchup because it was red. Ha. Huh. It's strange. In a black and white photo, those letters would have appeared black to me. I wonder. Why am I the only one who can't see them? So then, Mr. Cadeau, are you admitting it? Are you admitting that you can't see the red lighting on the lantern? Hey, Gramps. Didn't you know? There's the reason why I don't drink red tea! I wasn't sure about it until now, but... I just can't believe it. Prosecutor Godot is the murderer. But there's no going back now. I finally figured out the truth. Mr. Godot, the defense at this time formally accuses you. You are the murderer of Miss Delise Dunham, also known as Miss Misty Fay. It's hard to believe this may be true, however. Once again, Mr. Wright has brought up a disquieting fact about you. Ah. Just make sure you don't fill out the incident. Indictment in red ink, Gramps. Come on. How does a little graffiti make me the killer? Besides, it's not like it's my name that's written there. 
I'm certain that the killer wasn't able to see the color red. This is rich. Do go on, Trite. The answer's right there at the crime scene. In the snow. The snow? How so? Well, for example, why did the killer move all that snow? Your Honor, you said it yourself. If you wanted to hide the bloody snow, why not take out just that area? Yes, why didn't he just take that area? Ah, could it be? Yes, your, the killer couldn't see the red blood that had seeped into the snow. And so he had re to remove all of the snow. He couldn't be sure of where the blood had landed, so he removed the whole area. Isn't it more likely that the killer couldn't see the blood because it was dark? Not a chance. The torches were all lit. He would spin it. He would have been able to see just fine. It seems that once again this trial has taken an unexpected turn, to say the least. Can you explain this, Mr. Gadot? But wait! Wait just a minute! Maya! What is it, witness? But Mr. Godot isn't the killer! After all, he didn't even come to the Inner Temple until two days after the murder took place. He didn't show up until after the old bridge got fixed up. Maya, you can't testify to something like that. Why? What do you mean? I may not look it, but... Eek! After the murder happened, you didn't even exist. She didn't. I'm afraid I don't follow. Are you senile, old man? We established this just a little while ago. After the murder, the witness was unconscious for a long time. Because she was channeling Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, that's right. Please, Your Honor, let me add to my testimony. Nick, please listen to me. Maya, do you plan to cover for Godot no matter what the cost? If that's the case, then I've got no choice. Your Honor, let's hear her testimony. If it means we're going to hear the whole truth, I say we should not silence her. Ha! Huh. Nicely done, Trite. Very well, let's hear the witness's testimony. Please tell us what happened at the Inner Temple after the murder. Yes, sir. After I woke up, I began channeling, and my spirit left me, as it were. But little Pearly was there at the Inner Temple, too. Pearly was also stuck in the Inner Temple si side that night. The next morning, she looked around but couldn't find anyone. The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Godot arrived in the Inner Temple for the first time. He found for Pearly first and cheered her right up. Who is this Pearly? That's my little cousin, Pearl Fay. Hmm. So when did you hear about this? Oh, just a while ago when I was in the medical office. I'm terribly sorry, but what you heard from someone else is simply not admissible as testimony. What? Come on! Pearl would never lie. She's always way more honest. She's a way more honest person than I'll ever be. Real smart, Maya. You always know the best things to say when you're under oath. Ha! Huh. The prosecution has no objection. We believe the witness. But Mr. Godot! Let's just move on to the cross-examination. If the defense has no objections... This is highly unusual, but... Well, Mr. Wright... Let's get this cross-examination started. Well, let's see. Pearly was stuck. I don't think we need to press that. The next morning, she looked around but couldn't find anyone. Well, that's obvious. The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. I don't think we need to... Hmm. I think I'm going to press on this one, because I think it's the most, like, flavorful out of them all. He cheered her up? That's what Pearly said. She said he was a very nice older gentleman. Thank you for looking after my cousin, Mr. Godot. And here I was thinking you were nothing more than a coffee addict. Ha! Huh. Cut it out. You're making me blush. This guy's really beginning to get on my nerves. In more ways than one. The truth is, there aren't that many places to look on the Inner Temple side. The policemen were all very busy going over the gardens of Fine Tooth Cone. So I decided to carry out an investigation in my own way. Godot style. In the same way, I like to hand down my verdicts in my own way. Judge style. Huh, maybe I should ask some questions Phoenix style. 
Hmm. What should we ask? I guess about Godot's investigation. You said that you conducted an investigation on your own. Did you find anything? It looks like my investigation went about as well as yours, Trite. After all, I did miss the bloody riding on the lantern. Well, I didn't miss it, so speak for yourself, Goggles! The only odd thing I discovered was that beauty in the training hall. Beauty? Misty Fay, naturally. Clad in a stunning Japanese garb, surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western taste. Western taste? Could you find a stranger way to describe gravy? So from there, you headed to the prep room. Wait a second. What did Godot just say now? I think I just found his proverbial weak spot. There's only one thing of any importance there. Where was Godot when the murder was taking place? He must have already been at the inner temple when it happened. Otherwise, he couldn't have killed Elise Dunham. And he also wouldn't have known that Misty Faye's Diddly D was covered, right? Let's see. Pearl, the next morning, the next day when the virtual prep room, that's when Godot arrived at the inner temple for the first time. But yeah, if, my, if I'm correct, for the first time, she says, but he wouldn't know that this was Misty Faye. Mr. Godot, the first time you crossed Dusky Bridge and went into the Inner Temple was long before the murder took place. But why do you say that? Because he just made one fatal slip-up. The Hanging Scroll in the Training Hall. Hanging Scroll? But Mr. Godot is right. The scroll shows a picture of my own mother. Maya, I know you... I, I know you know who it is, but there's something you didn't know. By the time the bridge had been repaired two days after the murder, the hanging scroll in the training hall looked like this. What's that wonderfully delicious smell? The morning after the crime, someone covered it with gravy. Gravy? But why gravy, Nick? Because gravy was much more than a condiment to the, com to the culprit. Well, Mr. Godot, if you really hadn't seen the hanging scroll until after the murder, you wouldn't have had any way of knowing that was Misty Faye. Wait a minute, Nick. Yes? Take another look at the hanging scroll. Look at the top. There's a crest there. Ah, that. It's the mark of the master, correct? Exactly. So if you know the meaning of the mark, then you could guess that uh, that was the picture of Misty Fay on there. True, but Mr. Godot described what was underneath what that, clad in her stunning Japanese garb surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western taste. Oh. Yes, it's possible that he knew what the crest meant. However, he couldn't have known that it, she was wearing Japanese clothing. Mr. Godot, on the day of the murder, you were hiding at the Inner Temple long before the crime took place. Can I ask you just one little thing, Trite? What is it? This whole theory of yours, it all rests on a certain assumption. That I knew beforehand that a crime was going to be committed. Th that's right! Otherwise, there's no reason for him to sneak onto the crime scene. Of course Mr. Godot knew about the plan. Huh? B what did you say? Is it really possible that another person knew of the plan? But of course. Because the orders from Morgan Fay had been opened once before. <laughs> This crime was actually planned over a year ago. Morgan Fay authored the plan for her daughter's future, and these instructions were hidden somewhere in the Fay Manor for a year. However, by the time Little Pearls found these instructions, they had already been unsealed. Unsealed? Yes, the killer had read these instructions long before Pearls ever found them. That's how he knew the crime was to take place at the Inner Temple. And you still insist this crafty killer is me? You bet I do. But you just said that the instructions were hidden. That's right. Mr. Godot couldn't have known where the instructions were hidden. If he really wanted to know, he had a great chance to find out. Yes, what was that? During a visit. A visit? Morgan Faye told her daughter Pearl about where the instructions were hidden. During one of her visits to the detention center. That would be the only time for someone to have learned where they were hidden. Eavesdropping on a visit at the detention center. Yes, it could be arranged if you were someone of easy access in and out of there. 
Like, for example, a prosecutor such as Mr. McAdoo. Order, order, order! Mr. Godot, you're under fire again! This murder could not have been carried out without prior knowledge. And you. You are the only one that could have acquired this information before the murder. Humans are afraid of the dark, and yet, at the same time, we're fascinated and bewitched by it. Maybe that's why humans drink the darkness that is coffee. Um, sorry for always asking, but what does that mean? It means there's a reason for everything. According to your theory, the killer in this case, eavesdropping, on a conversation during a jail visit where he learned of a hidden plan for a crime, after discovering the plans, he hid in the inner temple and waited for the crime to occur. Then he ultimately took a person's life. And he did all that just to protect this witness? That's right. If you're accusing me of this crime, I have to ask you, why would I do this? This girl is nothing but a stranger to me. I've got no reason to go through that kind of trouble to protect her. I am what you see. I am certainly not the type to rescue the damsel in distress. Hmm. The killer's behavior is certainly extreme, for the lack of a better word. Even considering that the killer wanted to protect this witness's life, his behavior is still a little too unnatural. However, you had a good reason, didn't you, Mr. Godot? An unshakable reason that forced you to protect this witness at all costs. I knew it. You figured it out, haven't you, Nick? Maya, I guess you were doing your best to cover for Godot. For the same reason, huh? Okay, try it. I'm all ears. Let's hear it. It's very simple. Maya Faye's a lot more than just a stranger to you. What's this? There's one person who lies at the very center of this whole story. One person that ties you and Maya Faye together inextricably. Mia Faye. There's a very good reason why Maya Faye's life is so precious to you. After all, she is Mia Faye's only sister. Mia Faye. You once worked alongside her. That was when you were a defense attorney. Wait a second here! Mr. Cadeau is a defense attorney? With your honor's piercing intellect, you must have figured it out by now. The real name of this man who calls himself Godot. His real name is... Diego Armando. Isn't that right? The last time someone called me by that name was over six years ago. Diego Armando! That name rings a bell. It should, Your Honor. All of this is related to a single case. A case in which a convict named Terry Falls killed himself. Mia Faye's first time in court, the tragic outcome left a deep wound in her heart. She knew that behind it all was a heartless, scheming demoness in disguise. But in the end, Mia couldn't tear off that disguise. However, there was one man who reached out to help her. Diego Armando, a senior defense attorney at the office where Mia worked. It's my fault! It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself! Mia, you can't cry yet. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. I was moved by her. The way she put all her faith in her clients that pure, sweet heart of yours. That's why I could never forgive Dahlia Hawthorne. Mia and I thoroughly investigated that fake kidnapping incident. Then once fateful day, Dahlia wanted to meet with me. It had been six months since the trial. We met in the courthouse cafeteria. 
Ah, I just remembered. Six years ago, right here in this courthouse, you were poisoned. Even I didn't see it coming. Dahlia Hawthorne slipped some poison into my coffee. Some newspapers at the time called it a murder, but very little information about the case was released to the press. But you weren't dead at all. No official reports ever actually called it a murder. It was just a deep, deep coma. I see. My body shut down, and my life became nothing but a long, deep sleep. That woman's poison did a real number on my central nervous system. I lost my sight, and all my hair turned white due to the damage it caused. That's terrible. Apparently, it was a miracle that I ever regained consciousness. Five years had passed since I drank that poison brew. Then one morning, my eyes flew open from the smell of a doctor's cup of coffee. That is so unbelievably dumb that I love it. His entire character is coffee. Why was he in a coma? Coffee. Why did he wake up? Coffee. This is why I love Ace Attorney. For five years! You were asleep for five years! And the worst possible news was waiting for me. Mia Fey was dead. From the very moment I opened my eyes, I had already lost everything I thought I had. The woman I loved had been murdered. The woman I loathed had been sentenced to death. The woman you loathed? The woman who had spiked my skull and hot drink, Dahlia Hawthorne! Ha. <sighs> Good old Mia. She didn't let me down. She got her revenge before she checked out. In the end, there wasn't anyone waiting for me when I woke up. That's so sad. For someone like me, for someone who had slept away their best days, there were only two reasons left to live. And it was for those two reasons that I decided to become a prosecutor. If I may ask, what were your two reasons to live? The first was you, Trite. Huh? M me If I hadn't drank that stupid poison, Mia Fey never would have died, much less the way she did. You are the only one who was there to protect her, but you let her die. It was all your fault. I... It wasn't like that. I wanted to see for myself what kind of man you really were. So that's why you became a prosecutor. My other reason for living, she goes by the name of Maya Fey. Huh? You mean me? You are the only way I can make up the, the sin of not saving me. One year ago, when the Curain Village incident was resolved, it was obvious that Morgan Fey was planning something. Whatever her evil plan was, I was determined to stop it. My role as a prosecutor put me in the perfect position to do something about her. That's how you overheard Pearl's visit with Morgan at the detention center. I knew that time was drawing near. Since I knew the plan, I thought I could foil it. My goal was to outwit the plan. I thought I could do it. I could keep that girl from being caught up in it. That makes sense. Pearls had known that the actual purpose of the plan was to kill Maya, she never would have helped out. Finally, the day of the plan was drawn near. I contacted both of my accomplices. Accomplices? Iris of Hazakura Temple. And Misty Fay. I especially needed the help of Iris. She was to take the fall in my backup plan in case we couldn't control Pearl Fay. But... How did you contact my mother? That's what I want to know. She'd been missing for almost 20 years. Officially, yes. What? What do you mean, officially? You've heard about it, haven't you? About the strong ties between the main family and the government. Now that you mention it, Bikini Sir did say something about that. She said that the master of the Curane had great authority. 
even without her official position. Mr. Faye still wielded great influence. The police have been keeping an eye on her movements all this time. That's how I was able to contact her. Again, because of my position as a prosecutor. So my mother is cooperating with you? Don't ever forget, no matter how far away from you she was, she never stopped thinking about you. She was always... That's why I knew she would do anything to protect you. If you want to know how strong her resolve was to protect you, look at her staff. Her staff? The one with the sword in it! The day the plan was to be carried out arrived and noon soon enough. We met for the first time at Hazakura Temple. That's when your mother showed me her special staff. I realized it then just how far she was willing to go. She was ready to use that sword to protect you from Morgan Fay, if necessary. Yes, even if it meant paying the ultimate price. Mother. And that night, the night of the crime, there was just one way to stop Morgan's evil plan. You mean pearls, don't you? We had to make sure she didn't channel Dahlia Hawthorne. Well, Pearl, what are you going to do tonight? Well, um... If you'd like, you can come to my room. Perhaps we can read some books together. We thought we could prevent her from playing her part in Morgan's plan. But she never showed up. She was worried and followed me to the inner temple. That was the thing we were most afraid of. And that's why Misty Fay had to do this channeling herself. She channeled Dahlia Hawthorne into her own body. What? What do you mean? If she channeled the spirit first, then Pearls wouldn't be able to do it herself. As master of Curane, Mr. Fay's power was supreme. So that's how it went down. She channeled Dahlia Hawthorne so that Pearl Fay wouldn't be able to! Ah. Uh. Ah! What is this true? My role in the plan was to make sure no one was going to hurt my affair. That's why I hid myself at the inner temple. Just in case you needed to be saved from Dahlia Hawthorne. Godot. Anyway, that's all I'm going to admit to. Trite. Huh? There's no doubt about it. You're a great defense attorney. But you're going to have to do the rest yourself. The background leading up to this incident has been laid bare. There's just one question remaining, Phoenix. Who killed the victim? There are only two possible suspects right now. My F.A. And I'm sad to say you, Mr. Godot. Well, Trite, if you're the real deal, then finish this thing once and for all. Show us beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can finish this on your own! No, Nick. P please don't! M Maya. I, I heard the whole thing from my sister in the medical office. That's why... that's why I have to protect Mr. Godot! I can't do it. I can't testify against him. After all... The man who put his life on the line to protect Mia. And me too! Maya, I know that! But Nick! But even so, it doesn't absolve him of his crime! Please, Maya, testify! Miss Faye, your testimony, please. This is the final testimony. Don't bother trying to hide anything, because I'll know. I want to hear the truth from your own lips. I understand. I'm sure you're right. I'm ready now, Nick. All right, young lady. Tell us about the moments before you lost consciousness. What exactly happened at the time of the murder? Just before it happened, I think I saw some red lights, three of them. I thought I'd ask for help, but just then I was splattered with blood. 
She wasn't dead, though. She was struck in the back at the enemy. She struck back at the enemy behind her. Suddenly, the red lights went out, and the whole area was dark. Just at that moment, there was a horrible scream. Right after that, Dahlia collapsed, and I lost consciousness. Hmm. These red lights. I thought you said you don't remember seeing them. I'm sorry. I thought I saw them, but they, they disappeared all of a sudden. Ah, things break, Trite. Even the best of theories. Who was it that stabbed Misty Fay? It looks like you still can't prove it. Maya's telling the truth this time, I know it. The rest is up to me. Well then, Mr. Wright, proceed with your final cross-examination of the witness. Let's see, just before that happened, I saw some red lights. I don't think we need to press on that. I thought I asked for help, but then I almost splattered in blood. I don't think I need to press on that. She, was, she wasn't dead, and she struck back at the enemy behind her. Hmm, I don't think so. Or maybe. Hmm. Suddenly, the red lights went out, and the whole area was dark. At just that moment, there was a horrible scream. Right after that, Dahlia collapsed, and I lost consciousness. I think I... Well, first things first, I'm going to save, because we're nearing the end. I'm going to press on this. What do you mean by just at that moment? Do you mean the moment when the red lights went out? Yes, that's right. And the scream you heard then, was it Dahlia Hawthorne? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was a man's voice. What? So then that scream came from the killer. That's got to be it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I think Dahlia Hawthorne must have taken the blade and attacked the killer with it. And then the killer let out a scream of pain, huh? After that, the killer stole the blade back and delivered the final blow, I guess. That's wrong. I, I already know what's going on. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems to make sense to me. It sounds like a reasonable deduction, but I still kind of wonder. There's a contradiction. I'm sorry to say this, but that interpretation would create an enormous contradiction. That makes sense. After all, my deductions are almost certainly never correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Judge, thank you for the mild humor here in this tension. Remember the testimony she just gave. Before the killer let out a scream, Maya said she had already been splattered with the victim's blood. In other words, that blade and the staff had already been plunged into the victim. Uh, is that right? She couldn't have struck back with a sword that was stuck already stuck in her body. The weapon that caused the killer let out a scream... Must have been something other than the staff. If you're so sure about that, then don't keep us waiting any longer, Trite. There's only one thing I can think of that could have been used as the weapon here. If Dahlia Hawthorne had already been stabbed in the back by the staff, what could she have used to strike back at the killer? The dagger. Naturally, the dagger the killer brought to the scene of the crime. Oh, that's right! I forgot about that. This dagger was found at the crime scene, stuck into the pine tree. Yes, the detective found this this morning and brought it to me. Dahlia Hawthorne struck back at the killer with this, and she managed to wound him as well. Just because he let out a scream doesn't mean that he was wounded. For all we know, the blood of the dagger could have been from the victim. Well, we just discounted that with the testing. Have you forgotten that the blood has already been tested? Since we learned it wasn't the victim's blood, it must be the killer's. The killer must have a wound somewhere on his body. So you're saying the blood on this dagger belongs to the killer? Exactly. A DNA analysis of the blood would prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And yes, Mr. Godot would prove that it's your blood. Nice theory, Trite. Order! Order in the court! Is this the end? Have I done it? Even he won't be able to change the results of a scientific test. Huh. Let me ask you something, Trite. Let's just say that it turned out that I was the killer. Do you really think I'd be stupid enough to leave evidence like that? What? Just think for a second. This dagger was found in this morning by a detective and brought to me. There was already blood on it, correct? 
But even so, I was the one who brought this dagger here to the courtroom. Yes, what does that prove? Well, if I really were the killer, I could have washed the blade off and then planted another person's blood on it. That's... it can't be! In any case, there's one thing I can guarantee, Trite. That blood, it doesn't belong to me. Not a chance! What?! In any event, it seems to be established that the killer was wounded. All right, then, witness, continue your testimony. But wait a minute. What's the problem? Um, I, I know I probably shouldn't say this, but there's a big contradiction in Nick's explanation. M Maya? But this dagger, you said that it wounded the killer. That's right. But, 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 if Mr. Cadeau had really been cut with the dagger, his clothes should be bloody or have a rip in them, right? Um, Maya? Maybe he's just changed his clothes. That'd solve the contradiction pretty easily. What are you talking about? He's not that simple at all. Remember back to the day of the murder? Everyone that was on the Inner Temple side got trapped there. Ah, th that's right. And once the bridge was fixed and the police headed for the Inner Temple, Mr. Godot was already there waiting for them. He never had a chance to change his clothes. Ah! Order! Well, maybe he brought a change of clothes with him. But no one could have predicted the lightning strike that shut down the bridge. Why would anyone have bought a change of clothes? Ah, did the judge take a smart pills during the last recess? Well then, maybe the killer took his clothes before he committed the murder. That way he wouldn't get any blood on him. That's impossible, Trite. You know how cold it gets up there at night. Eh... Uh, after a few minutes of no clothes on, you'd be frozen solid! Ah! Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> ha. So that's all you've got? I knew you weren't tough enough for this. Uh, right now, if Mia Faye were here... If Mia Faye were here, she would have closed the book on this case already. If Mia Faye were here... So come on, Shrite, can you do it or not? How about this, Mr. Wright? You've accused Mr. Godot of being the killer. Can you prove it? Have you got even one piece of evidence? Do we? The question isn't whether I can prove it or not. The fact is I have to prove it. That's the only choice I have. I was taught that it's one of the rules of being a lawyer. I can prove it. I'm going to bring your magnificent vengeance to fruition just as you want! Ha! Huh. That's good. A fighter to the bitter end, Trite. Since there's just one piece of evidence that can prove your point, why don't we go for an unlimited penalty? I... Oh? Are you trying to pressure me, Mr. Godot? Because it doesn't matter to me, I've got the one piece of evidence I need. Give me a break! You've got nothing, Trite! So, what do I do at a time like this? It's simple. I've got to think outside the box and approach this from a different angle. All right then, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you've got. There's one thing I've demonstrated in the previous cross-examination. The killer was wounded. That was proven by the blood on the dagger. But... We decided it was impossible for him to have hidden such a wound. If he had been cut by a dagger, there should have been blood stain on his clothes. There's one place. One place the killer could have hidden his wound. What did you say? Hidden? This is it. My last stand. I need to think about this from a different angle. I don't need to think about why there were no blood stains on his clothing. I need to show how he hid the wound. In the end, it's the end of the line, the final stop, Trite. Let's hear what you've got. Where's this location where you say the killer hit his wound? Well, I mean, I kind of have an idea that goes along with the testimony because I'm kind of scared because it's the ultimate penalty, but the lights went out. She knocked your mask off. She cut your face. 
And where's your face? Your profile picture. Ha! Huh. I don't know what you're talking about. And frankly, I don't need to know. What I do know is that you'll never be half the lawyer she was! Isn't that right, Trite? Huh? What was that just now? Mia? It can't be! You're living on through him? Even as we speak, you're still hiding the wound. Awesome. It's beneath your mask! During the fight, the red lights given off by the killer suddenly disappeared. Seconds later, the killer let out a scream. That's right, your mask went flying off your face. Mr. Godot, would you mind removing your mask? If you have a dagger wound under there somewhere, then I'd say this whole case is solved. <laughs> what? Explosion to face. Immediately drinks coffee. Just now, I saw her spirit in you. I never liked you. Six years ago, you helped the woman who put me to sleep by hiding a bottle of poison. And then, while I was sleeping, you let me die. But you didn't care. You just kept living your pathetic, happy-go-lucky life. You even had the nerve to follow in her footsteps as a lawyer. I could never forgive you. That's what I thought. Mr. Godot. But I was wrong about you. I knew it from the very beginning. The truth is... The only person I could never find it in my heart to forgive was me. You yourself? I was the one that failed to protect me. Me and no one else. I tried to avert my eyes from the truth. To escape from the harshness of reality. I just couldn't face me as death head on, so I ran. I hid behind a mask. I threw away my true name. I couldn't even deal with being a defense attorney anymore, so I quit. But, but, you saved me, Maya! Yeah, that was my plan. Up until just now, anyway. What do you mean? Are you listening, Maya? If I'd really wanted to save you, then there's one person that I should have gone and talked to right away. Who would that be? Are you talking about Nick? But I didn't do it. I tried to get the help of Iris and your mother, but I closed my eyes to the most important man involved. Do you know why? The real reason? No, why? I suppose I wasn't really interested in saving you at all. Huh? I think I was just trying to salvage left of my own broken soul. I was trying to make up for the fact I couldn't save Mia. Nothing more. That's why I let you walk right into a situation that I knew was dangerous. Forgive me. Y you're wrong! You put your life on the line to save Maya! Was it really for Maya's sake? Even I'm not really sure. What do you mean by that? That night in the darkness of the garden when I saw her silhouette. A part of me must have known the truth. This is a badass picture. The truth that it wasn't really Dahlia Hawthorne standing there in front of me. It could have been Misty Fay, or even that little girl. But I still picked up the blade 
It was like I was dreaming. I'm not sure exactly what was going on in my mind at that point. Was I really motivated by the pure desire to protect my affair? Or was it something else? Was it my hatred for a woman who had stolen everything from me six years earlier? Could it have been simply a desire for revenge? And now... I don't know anything anymore! I did learn something today, however. I finally realized that I was the arrogant one. I was just... chasing an illusion. A fantasy. The stupid fantasy of defeating you in the court. You are the one who made me realize my folly. You never ran away from me as deaf. Instead, you picked up where she left off. As a true defender of the people. In that one moment, I understood everything. Mr. Cadeau. I think you already know this, but if you don't, my name is Diego Armando. Mr. Armando, I believe in you. I know you were trying to save me. Hmm. Thanks. Y your wound, it's bleeding. <laughs> Did you forget already? In my world, the color red doesn't exist. These must be my tears. Tears? Ever since I woke up from my coma, I think I've been waiting for this very moment. But Mr. Armando. You do well to remember this, Maya. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. I just got a rush there from this moment. This time, it really is all over, isn't it? Defendant. Yes, Your Honor? Although you weren't directly involved in the murder, tampering with the body in the crime scene is a serious offense in itself. I understand, Your Honor. Mr. Armando explained that to me very carefully. I knew the risk and I willingly had cooperated anyway. Very well. Before I hand down my verdict, is there anything you'd like to say? Well, there is one thing. I'd like to say something to Mr. Wright. I want to... I want to apologize to you. Apologize? To me? For what? For the case five years ago, of course. I just remembered. Weren't you poisoned by your own lover? Not exactly, but yeah, something like that. Even now, five years later, I can hardly believe it. She was going to do it. She was planning to kill me. It's not all that surprising. The two of you, you hardly knew each other. Huh? What do you mean? You and my sister. You only met twice. Uh-huh. But we only met twice? The first time you met was on that fateful day. The day she poisoned Mr. Armando in the cafeteria. I think I called this. To a degree. Thinking that maybe she saw Dahlia and Phoenix going about and she pretended to be Dahlia to have happy times with Phoenix. The next time you met her was eight months later. You met her again on the day that she stole your heart, your, your heart cold, your cold medicine. And Doug Swallow was killed. D no way! It just, it can't be true! I mean, during our whole relationship, we were... For those eight months, the woman that you thought was Dahlia Hawthorne wasn't actually my sister. Huh? It wasn't Dahlia? 
I hope one day you can forgive me. Feeny. You... You mean... That's right. I lied to you. For eight months. B but why? Why would you do such a thing? Ever since she gave you the bottle that day, my sister was trying to get it back as soon as she possibly could. Because of the police investigation and their surveillance, she couldn't move about freely. So that's why you... My sister, from the beginning, she was prepared for the worst. Prepared for the worst? She thought you might somehow discover the truth. That's why she was always ready to deal with you at the moment's notice. You mean she was ready to kill me, don't you? She already had so much to answer for. I didn't want any more sins on her soul. I begged her not to do it, and she agreed to give me a chance. And that's why you came to me? You came to get the bottle pendant back from me in her place? But I couldn't get you to give it back. I failed at something even as simple as that. Eight months passed, and I still couldn't get it back from you. Finally, my sister couldn't wait any longer. She didn't consult me about her plans for you that day. If I was the first, it was the first time that it had ever happened. That was a bit strange, wasn't it? Up until that day, you two were partners in crime, and she would confer with you. I think she must have noticed. Noticed what? My feelings for you. If I had found out what she, what she was planning to kill you, I would have done whatever was necessary to stop her. Even if it meant her life. Or mine. Uh, Iris. After spending those eight months by your side, my feelings toward you, they changed. I have something to say to you, too. Yes? You really are the person I always thought you were. Even after Dahlia Hawthorne was found guilty, I still believed in you. Thank you. That's, awesome. That's actually sweet! Damn it, and now she's never gonna appear in another game, probably. How many cups of darkness have I drank over the years? Even I don't know. I'll tell you, though, right now, this one here is the greatest cup I think I've ever had. Don't you think so, Phoenix Wright? That's sweet, too. Yeah, I think you're right. The purpose of this trial was to rule on the murder of the victim, Elise Dunham. At some point, I expect you will be tried for your role as an accomplice in this case. I understand, Your Honor. Very well. On the charge of murder, I hereby find the defendant. Not guilty. Court is now adjourned. We've gone for six and a half hours. This easily could have been two different streams. And even those would be extra long streams. So I guess it's all over. The way everything ended. Was justice really served? The man who risked his life to save Maya is being sent to prison by my own hand. Of course justice was served. Mia! I'm proud of you, Phoenix. Your defense was truly brilliant. But, but I couldn't save Mr. Armando! The man who cared so deeply for you! You're wrong, Phoenix. You did save Diego. You saved him in the only way possible. You mean, with that verdict? I think one day you'll understand, too. Phoenix, I want you to remember one thing. You were as good as out there... You were as good out there today as any defense attorney could ever hope to be. There's nothing more you can learn from me. But Mia! You've accomplished something I wasn't able to. Are you a great deal? Thank you. Mia. I'm sure we'll meet again. Someday. Phoenix. I've handled a lot of cases. I've seen a lot of things. And along this journey, I found myself asking just one question. What does it really mean to defend someone? I suppose today's case produced one possible answer. 
Nick. M Maya. I guess it's just like my sis said. Mia? What did she say? That night when I channeled Mia to get her advice on what to do, this is what she wrote back on my notebook. Don't worry. Phoenix will save everyone in the end. But, but come on, cut it out with the gloomy face. Can't you see? Me, sis, and I'm sure Iris, too. We owe you for everything you've done for us, Nick. Maya. How? How can you be so bright and chipper after all that's happened? You were brutally attacked. You even saw your mother murdered. Couch! F Francisca! Still as softy as always, Phoenix Wright. Excellent work, Wright. Huh? Mr. Edgeworth? When did you get back? Oh, that's right. I guess no one filled her in on that. Edworth and Francisca have actually been helping me. Helping you? If these two hadn't been here on the first day of the trial... The defense wouldn't have gotten anywhere. Wow, but where were you, Nick? I heard he fell into a river and caught a nasty cold which forced him to sleep all day. Yes, he laid in bed shivering from his fever with Iris's hood pulled over his head. Oh, ouch. Talk about embarrassing, Nick. You definitely need more training. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. And you too, um, Francisca. I don't suppose... <laughs> I don't suppose there's room for me in this group hug, is there? Oh, Larry! What's with the, uh, longer-than-usual face? I realized something when I was reborn. I realized that Larry was never of use to anyone. Not even once. But that's not true. Right, Nick? What? You're asking me? Well, Nick, what is it true? I've got a place in this world, right? Huh? Oh, um... Yeah, of course. I knew it. Everyone would be better off if I were gone for good. <laughs> No, 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 um, I, oh yeah, those portraits you painted, they were really good. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? What? M me Why are you making that face, huh, Edgy? Oh, well, um, yes, indeed. I certainly can't say that they lack resemblance. Do you really mean it? What about you, Franny? Franzi, did I draw you well, too? Yeah! My beauty can not possibly be captured by a mere crayon. Nevertheless, I recognize the effort you put into it, and that's worth something. <laughs> <laughs> so that you'll do it, like you promised. You're gonna model for my next picture book, Francis, with the- ah! Don't get carried away. <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, how about that? I guess painting portraits is the only thing I'm good at. The painting of Pearl was pretty darn good, too, if you ask me. Huh? Now that you mention it, I haven't seen her around. Pearls, where could she have gone? Normally she would have made a beeline for Maya. Oh, I'll go look for her. Be right back. Hey, Pearly! Right. You seem to be uncharacteristically puzzled. I suspect you're wondering how Maya can be so cheerful despite all that's happened. Uh, yeah. To be honest, I can't understand it either. Franziska. That's right, she lost her father fairly recently as well. I think I understand how she feels. Maya is such a wiser person than she appears, and I think she realizes something. Now is exactly the time when she needs to be as strong as she can. But what do you mean by now is exactly the time? Maya wasn't the only one that was badly wounded by this incident. In fact, there was someone that was hurt far more deeply than she. I believe it's for that person that Maya's trying her best not to cry. Someone who is hurt more deeply than Maya? Edgeworth, I think I'm starting to understand too. Ow! Oh! Then tell me, Phoenix, who is Maya Fair being strong for? Pearly, of course. The only person that could possibly be more important than Maya herself. Pearl Fay. Poor kid, after all, the reason that she worked so hard to follow the instructions was because she loved and believed in her mother, Morgan. It's for the good of the fake clan. I'm sure she believed in every last word. She thought she was doing it for Maya. That's why she was so happy. It 
shows how deeply devoted she is to Maya. But it's a cruel irony that it was her exuberance that led to this tragedy. Maya Fey's mother was killed, and Maya herself was put into the deepest peril imaginable. And that's exactly why Maya's putting on a brave face. She's doing it for Pearl's sake. Until she can see her smile again. Oh, hey, so this is where you all are. Well, looks like you've got quite a bunch of- Ouch! What was that for, sir? Sorry about that, Scrappy. My whip just seems to have a mind of its own. What's- What's up, Detective Gumshoe? Oh, you know, this and that. Anyway, congrats on your win! Let's go out tonight, pal. That is on me! My salary's just sort of kinda gone down by a teeny weeny bit, but that's alright! I made a reservations at First Class French Restaurant tonight! Ah! Pretty good work, Scrappy. That whip is your reward. Um, Detective Gumshoe? You said First Class French Restaurant. You don't mean... Trebian! Where else? I knew it. We are doomed. Come on, let's go, everyone! Can't keep Maggie waiting, pal! Hey! Hey, you! Crybaby! You're invited, too! Oh, but forget about me. Pro and I will be at the loser Shack eating potatoes. You know, life's taking an awfully long time to get back. He's still out looking for pearls. Oh, Maya, what's wrong? Nick, what do I do? Pearly, I can't find her anywhere. Huh? I'll bet she just went back home. That's all. I thought so too, so I called the village, but no one's heard back from her. This has never happened before. As I figured, she's been badly hurt by this incident. She feels responsible for the tragedy that has befallen you, Maya. But none of this was her fault. What? What should I do? Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, what is it, pal? Could you guys go on ahead? But, but what about you? Mind I will... We'll join you guys once we find pearls. Nick! Don't worry about us, Detective Gumshoe. It may be a little late, but we'll definitely be there. We have a lot of celebrating to do tonight, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Yeah, but you're the... Ah! Very well, Phoenix Wright. We'll go on ahead. Don't keep us waiting, Wright. We won't. But, but where should we look? Where could Pearly have gone? Let's go, Maya. There's only one place I can think of that Pearls might have gone to. How's a Kura Temple? For Pearls, I bet this is a very important place. After all, it's where this whole incident started. What's this? You're all back again so soon? Sister Bikini? I thought we'd be eating mashed potatoes alone tonight. So she's here? Pearly's here? She's in the training hall. Why don't you hurry along and go see her? O okay Okay, they cleaned up the portrait. Pearly's not here. Ah! Maya, the hanging scroll! Ah! Someone cleaned it off. It's gotta be Pearls. Ah! Mystic Maya! P Pearly! Why... Why did you just leave like that? Mystic Maya... <laughs> Mystic Maya! I swore... I swore that I would never trouble the two of you ever again! It's all my fault Mystic Maya's mother's dead! That's why you... That's why you came here? It's the least I could do to pray for your happiness. You don't have to do that, Pearly. It wasn't your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. Of course, I'm sad that my mother is gone. But how do I say this? I, I'm i still happy. You don't have to lie just to make me feel better. While you try to comfort a blibbering child, remember to stay hydrated. No, really. It's true. The only reason I'm still here at all is thanks to everyone who was there for me. My sis, my mother, Mr. Armando, Nick, and you. If even one of you weren't there, I'm sure I wouldn't still be alive right now. That's why I have to be strong for all the people that were there for me when I needed them. 
That's all I can really do. But, Mystic Maya... I'm impressed. You truly are the daughter of Mystic Misty. Sister Bikini! Your mother, Mystic Misty, was a strong woman indeed. I want to tell you what she said to me that night. After dishonoring the good name of Kirin, I don't have the right to face my daughter. But still, Maya's always in my thoughts. It's true, she'll always be with me until the day I die. Your spirit was with her. That's why your mother was so strong. Even at the end, I'm sure she had no regrets. She'll always be with me until the day I die, huh? There's a rule or something all masters are uh, to follow, isn't there? To never take the charm off until the day you die. Th that's Master's talisman! The thing that Misty kept by her heart and would never take off. It wasn't the container that was important, rather, it was the contents. Th that's The photo? Ah! M mother It's only natural for living creatures to fight to protect their own lives. But what makes us human is that we fight for others. But who do you fight for? How hard, how hard must you fight? That's the true measure of what human life is worth. We defense attorneys are warriors who are constantly challenged by that question. Oh, that's adorable. Me and Maya broke the same pot like Pearl did. Even when the battle is over and the bonds that connect us are severed, we always return, time and time again. Mia, Maya, Pearl's Mr. Armando, and Maya's mother too. I learned that from all of them. That's just grand. Well, shall we get going? Everyone's waiting. Uh. This is a day to remember. A day when a lot of things are finally put to rest. I think we should celebrate what we've overcome today. B but I still can't... Oh, go on, sweetie. You can come back for training anytime. Um, okay. All right. I'm going to make a brand new start, too. Sister Bikini, I'll be back for more training, I promise. I know, and I won't go easy on you just because you're the future master. I'll make sure to prepare reservations for three for when you come back. <laughs> All right, we're going to have a great feast today, Pearly. You know why? Because training is a battle of endurance. Okay, Mystic Maya. I, I'll eat lots and lots of food tonight. Um, you know, there's one thing I don't get and probably don't want to, but... What is it, Nick? Reservations for training is fine and all, but why for three? Come on, what do you think? You're one of us, Nick. Next time, you can train right alongside us. Huh? I'll be waiting for you. Sister Bikini will take special care of you. Huh? Huh? It'll be great, Nick. We're gonna do the special course naturally. Huh? <laughs> it's a great idea. After all, Mr. Nick, you'd do anything for Mystic Maya, wouldn't you? Even walk on hot coals, right? <laughs> we'll have a nice big meal before we come next time. Right, Nick? You know, I was wondering if I can say just one little thing. Sure. Of course you can. Oh, I love this part. I can't wait to hear it. I'm getting goosebumps, too. Well, then. Here goes nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes! That was fantastic. That was fantastic. I really have to work extra hard now. Master of Curing and the office manager of Wright & Co. Office, and I have to be a good big sister to Pearly and Nick, too. Well, as long as I'm not locked up or captured or something like that. This was fantastic. I loved this. I love this. Sure, there was that glitch at one point. But this is fantastic. So it's true. 
Mr. Nick really is mystic by his knight in shining armor. He went through with the special course all the way to the end. Actually, I heard there's a legendary extra special ultra course here too. I think I'll surprise the two of them by making them a secret reservation. How do you even do that? But that's uh, impressive that Phoenix actually went through and managed to do it. Good on you, Phoenix. You dog. Maggie bought me a brand new coat and a present, pal. I feel ten years younger. I'll never take it off. Yes, but somehow you just don't seem the same. I guess a dirty, shabby old overcoat is just more detective-like, sir. Don't worry about it. In the name of love, a man will soil himself silly. And that, that booth is still restricted by <laughs> caution tape. Oh, hey, you! Mr. Wright, I am once again in your debt. Thanks to you, the Treasure of Curing exhibit was a great success. I even got to see Miss Von Karma, who I hadn't seen for almost a year. She taught me how to use a whip and said that I must show you what I've learned. <laughs> of course she did. I love this world. I love these characters. I love this gameplay. This was fantastic. The music, everything, the art. Oh, it's this guy. Desi and I started a company called Master Mask Consulting. We are dedicated to stopping the evil plans of all criminals in the city. Our motto is, cut it out, please! Pretty cute. Well, we also s plan to sell criminals as a kind of... I missed that. I wonder if that's okay. Sometimes I think maybe we're the worst criminals. <laughs> I love flashing back to all these characters. Again, I love this game, though. Sure, there were some cases that were kind of wonky, but still. Oh, hey, you. I wanted to show my appreciation to Mr. Wright for exterminating Don Tigre. So I lent him $500,000 in a tea set, a special thick tea, when I mixed with my own two hands. I bet he's drinking it now when thorough compromise. <laughs> This is great. I love this. The atmosphere that they built up to to that ending is just fantastic. I'm just holding in the way. A ring pink crabby clown nose waste of flesh. At least, that's what I thought. But my grandkids had a birthday present for me the other day. Talk about embarrassing 69-year-old and I cried like a baby with a dirty diaper. Sure, there was weird cases, some weird characters. It just... I liked a lot of this. As usual, we have an abundance of work to do. We've hired a new programmer to replace Glenn Elg. I do hope everyone will get along. His name is... Adam... Uh, Adam Maida. As soon as I heard his name, I knew our brain circuits would align perfectly. I don't even know if I know that guy. He was on so quick. My, my, my. More reporters. Since the murder, we've made so much money, I hardly know what to do. I think the magazines like us because I provide such a nice visual. Especially in spring. I can hardly wait for Iris to come back. <laughs> I hope Iris got a light sentence. Like, honestly, it's sad because I doubt she comes back in future games. But I could, I could see myself shipping Iris and Phoenix. I think it would be sweet. You've turned into such a respectable man, Feeny. It was so sweet of you and everyone else to come and visit me here the other day. Of course, I was happy that you constantly had your eyes on me, but... I felt kind of bad when the little one slapped you so hard you got a nosebleed. <laughs> of course Pearl would get annoyed at that. Objection! <laughs> Objection! Phoenix Wright, Ben Groman Judd. A legendary voice soundbite. Miles Edgeworth, Sion King. Objection! All the people that got to shout it. <laughs> Objection. Mia Fey, Christina Cantano. Even if it's just a few soundbites. Good for them. Goodo, James C. Wilson. He throws his cup. Francisca Van Kama, Janet. I have no idea how to say that because I'm a Philistine. Well, hey, Payne! Winston Payne, David Chrislip. I love the song that's playing. Oh, hey, it's the windbag! 
What's this? I'm back from a long and tiring vacation and no one is here to greet me. I guess while I was gone, my little whippersnapper buddy quit and now I've got no one. And what kind of lonely crisis security room is this supposed to be anyway? What with all the flashy lights and switches, I feel like some sort of space alien. And now what I'm going to do with all these macadamia nuts I brought along, if I bring poor Eddie Bull, I, would, I really can't accept he's afraid of something just as painful. Ah, uh, oh, when I uh, can't even die. Ah! She went too fast again, goddammit. But yeah, I, this trilogy is super good. I finally found something I love to do. Franzi's whippity whip trip is gonna turn the art world on its head. I should have realized it sooner. Self centered, lazy, antisocial. I'm an artist! A really good portrait artist. I'm not a loser at all! How dare you? How dare you mock me so? Oh, that's sweet. That is fantastic. Oh, and there's more. Also fantastic. Was that made by Larry? I would love that. So is that it? Bridge to turnabout, and a lawyer only cries once it's all over achievements attained. And... That is the Ace Attorney Trilogy, and the end of our Ace Attorney journey. I don't even know how to sum up my thoughts for the entire franchise. Well, franchise, the entire trilogy. It was fantastic. I think the first one is probably the best. Ah, oh, but that's the problem. Then, ah, the, oh, the final one. Rise from the Ashes. I like... I, I, I forget some of the cases. They've all kind of blended together because I took such a long break between things, but I love these games. I know some people like dislike some of the cases, but I don't think I found a case that I absolutely hated. I don't think. There might have just been ones that I didn't like as much as others and kind of forgotten them. But, like, overall, I really liked the experience. I liked the characters. I liked the art. I liked the music. I liked the drama. I liked the stories. I liked the character interactions. But I gotta say, <laughs> the mere fact that they brought in Maya's mother just to kill her in the final case of the trilogy. Bold move. Bold move. But I do like that they brought back Edgeworth and Franziska in the end. And that they're kind of friendly. And like, the through line of this, like, the final game. The through line of the final one, I think it's called Trials and Tribulations. Was so good. Granted... I think there was, like, five cases in this game, and three of them are connected. <laughs> so. But still, it was really good. Godot was a cool prosecutor. That final case was a mind twister in so many different ways. With so many twists, it was so good. And as a capstone to the trilogy... I have to say that had to be in probably the best way to end the trilogy. And I do enjoy that it ended with him saying objection and yet he still went and joined them on the super deluxe treatment. I love Phoenix Wright in the Ace Attorney games. I love it. It's fantastic. The characters are so good. The writing is so good. And it leads it to interesting mysteries and scenarios. Some of them are kind of clunky, but a lot of them are very fun. Again, I don't think I ran into a case that I hated, but I did really like all that. I love that. And I just I don't have much to say because I just loved it. I liked the exploring, I liked 
the comments from your little helpers. I liked the growth of the characters as we got to know them. That's just amazing. I love it. Just utterly great. All the prosecutors across the games were great. And like, and again, I love how the third game had like a main arc revolving around Mia, Phoenix's like kind of life before he became a lawyer, as well as even wrapping up Maya's family bit. It is super nice. It is super nice. I do find it kind of funny, in a way, that the finale of the trilogy kind of just recreated Rise from the Ashes to a degree. I will say, Rise to the Ash Rise from the Ashes is a funky little thing. I know a lot of people dislike it, but I liked it a lot. I do think that as a final boss, I forget his name, but the guy that you take down in Rise from the Ashes was a better final boss than Godot. He had more presence, more terror, and it was an interesting way to take him down ultimately. But Godot, he was cool. But yeah, this this was really good. This was really, really good. It took me fucking seven hours to do this. Jesus fucking Christ. I did not mean to spend seven hours on this. I thought it would only take like four hours. I off I was off by three. Jesus Christ. So I'm gonna speed this up because again, there's hardly anything to complain about except for the like two things that aren't patched here, like kind of glitched things that we ran into this case. Which is weird. I don't remember running into glitches anywhere else in this game. Weird. Granted, I guess it's the final case of the final game in this trilogy collection, so maybe it got the, le the least playtesting. But, yeah, Ace Attorney Trilogy, utterly fantastic. Phoenix Wright, great games, great world, great, like, gameplay, characters, music, and story. I love it all. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, everything that I do can be found in my link tree, linktr.ee slash neoniceywings. A direct link to my link tree can be found in pretty much any place you expect a link to be, descriptions, bios, and link places. For specifics, if you want more from me, I have an edited content YouTube channel, I, uh, Neon Icy Wings. I'm trying to make stuff for it. Brain is beating me down some. I need to get back to writing the script so I can get to the video editing here. Yeah. But story writing has occupied my soul lately. If you want streaming, I stream to Twitch at twitch.tv slash neoniceywings or the YouTube channel Neon Icy Games. And if you want to catch up on all the things that I've played in the past or streams that you may have missed, you can watch those too on the Neon Icy Games YouTube channel. As for streaming, I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And next time, we're going to be streaming more Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Explorers of Sky. On this next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. For other things, I do a lot of drawing. So if you want to see art that I post, all the links to the various social medias can be found in my link tree. Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Newgrounds. So many different places. And if you want to read stories that I'm writing... Links to my writing sources can be found there as well. And if you want to be ever so slightly kind, you can throw me a dollar -y do through my Patreon, which I treat as a tipping jar until I can maybe find things to make worthwhile bonuses. But yes, thank you very much for joining me on this 32-part series of Ace Attorney Trilogy. I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye. Bye.